the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Veterans Day Thursday, November 11th, 2021, and we can't thank you enough for watching this stupid show. Yeah! A lot of sports talk to be had today. Obviously, there's a lot going on around the NFL, including a game tonight in which Lamar Jackson, the most electrifying player in the game today, travels down to his hometown to take on the Dolphins. And we all assume, I'm not sure I haven't gotten everybody's ideas yet, but we all assume that Lamar Jackson's going to be doing a lot of dancing tonight in the end zone. Long weekend, potentially down there at home. A lot of people in the stands, a lot of people in the crowd. Dolphins probably Probably could have signed him at some point or drafted him. They didn't. Let's go ahead and become a superstar yet again for the 20th or 30th time in your career on Thursday Night Football in your hometown with your people in the state. Hell yeah! Now with that type of thought and conviction in the decision of tonight's match would normally be good for this particular office. Yeah, absolutely. But today is the first Thursday Night Football Thursday of this particular season where we do not have a risk-free same-game parlay that we'll be pushing uh, to thousands. Hey, thousands of people in an attempt to take millions and millions of dollars from Fandle. This is the first one that I'm probably going to enjoy. Yeah. This is probably the first Thursday Night Football game of the season where I'll be able to sit back, relax, and watch an incredible ball game because although the Dolphins are involved and that team definitely uh, stinks. The groan was from a man named Gumpy in the back who is a Dolphins fan who knows that the Dolphins uh, stink. They don't deserve that because their fan base is a loyal and a passionate Mm. one, but it seems like the organization is always set up to stink because of the way they operate and do things down there. They might be cursed. Who knows? Their fan base is very, very passionate, but it is a Dolphins game, so most of the time you would think to yourself, this game is going to stink. But you got to remember that Lamar Jackson is must-watch television. Lamar Jackson and that Baltimore Ravens squad in the AFC North that is very, very challenging and difficult are going to put on a show for all of us, and I can't wait to enjoy it. Tonight will be a good game, and there's a lot of records being either set or tied for how many games are being won in the final two minutes this season. There's a lot of ties through week nine of teams that have either been down in the fourth quarter that have come back and win, or teams that have been down double digits and have come back to win, and it's because of the way the game is being played in an incredibly aggressive style let alone Harbaugh, who loves Lamar. And then you got Jacoby Brissett coming in and playing a little football for the Dolphins. Let's have a Thursday night. And without the same game parlay, we'll be able to enjoy it. And I can't wait for it. This is the first Thursday where I won't have potential high blood pressure. Sure. Mm. It's the first Thursday of this particular season where I won't feel sick to my stomach when we inevitably lose by some bullshit yet again and all of a sudden I have to take ricochet shots from every super informed better around the internet about my parlay not hitting or parlay not hitting the parlay that we agreed to terms against FanDuel has to be this many legs has to be above this can't go below this has to be this has to do all that we had a set of circumstances and we did not win one time And every time we lost, not only did I take shit, but also there was money out of the pockets of not only us who bet a lot of money on the but everybody else. So I am happy that tonight there is no chance of me feeling like the worst human on earth, and I'm going to enjoy this game tonight. Yeah, very smart. And on the flip side of that, you know, it's one of those things where if it does go how we think it might go and the Ravens are, I don't know, up 40 to nothing at the end of the third quarter, you can get a couple extra hours of sleep. You don't have to stay up for that whole fourth quarter hoping that, you know, Michael Pittman Mm. has one more catch for seven years yards you can just say ah fuck it i'm gonna go to bed go to bed 
Yeah. Lamar yeah. Jackson did his thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. At, at Ty Schmidt, you're right. At Boston Connor, you're right. At Tone Diggs, you're right. You Happy Veterans Day mm -hmm. to Happy all, Veterans of the, Day. all of the women and men out there that signed a line that said, hey, if all hell breaks loose, I'll fucking go. I appreciate you so much. You don't have to be pro-war to be pro-warrior. I hope everybody remembers that. You can accept uh, that the fact is that the amount of courage and the amount of, like, Dignity, everything that is needed to just sign that line to go ahead and commit yourself to protect this beautiful land for whatever the reasoning is. You don't have to be for or against whatever the reason is. I'm not saying that. There's a lot of things I think at this point we can all say, why the hell did this happen? But the people that are doing that, that walk amongst us, now that have signed up and done that in the past, they deserve a hat tip. And happy Veterans Day. Um, you're the fucking best. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, troops. Thank, Thank you, veterans. But I think troops is indicative of only one particular branch, or maybe two. It's not all of them. So. Thank you, troops and, and, and airmen and everything. Yeah. Space you know, force, everybody. Yeah. We appreciate everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, yeah. Thank you. Not everybody, just the people that signed yeah. the line. Yes. Right. The vets in the service. Thank you, vets. Thank you, vets. <laughs> Thank you, vets. <laughs> We're idiots. I assume the vets appreciate that. Yeah. I, I think we have a pretty. Uh, strong following amongst the military, uh, those who in the past and the present, we take great honor in the fact that we get to be the dancing monkeys on the screen for you, a little mental vacation. We appreciate what you did, what you have done, and what you'll do in the future. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Vince. Thank All right, you. back to the sports. Hell yeah. On this beautiful Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. We have breaking news. Whoa. Cam Newton has signed with the Panthers. Wow. The wow. Ian Rappaport, who will join us in one hour from now. Big time reunion. The Panthers are signing former franchise quarterback Cam Newton after meeting with Carolina Brass today. Thanks to the Sam Darnold injury, Cam is back with the Panthers. Okay, so Sam Darnold expected to be out four to six weeks or something like yep. that. Yeah. He has a uh, fractured or... Incomplete shoulder fracture yeah. or something mm. like that. And it's the way, the word that was used was wild uh, scapula. Oh, there it is. He is a fractured scapula. And that's obviously near the humerus. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's other things that are near the scapula that you just... Collarbone. You hope <laughs> never, ever get in there. And there's a labrum that's dancing around oh, with the yeah. scapula. Hanging on. And they were doing a little bit too much dirty dancing. That's right. Almost fractured the scapula in there. Who put that tweet out? Uh, which one? The scapula one? Yeah. Rapshie. Of course. Tony. So it's scapula or just the common term, shoulder blade. This fucking guy. Rap sheet. We'll this ask guy. him about it one hour from yeah. now. Why what he has to be ass. such a That's what I'm talking about. A scapula is a shoulder blade? It says the scapula or shoulder blade is a large triangular shaped bone that lies in the upper back. I can't wait to drop that on SmackDown. Oh, <laughs> scapula. Drop them on his yeah. scapula. <laughs> Both scapulas <laughs> flat on the back. <laughs> Anyways. Not a laughing situation. No, 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 no. We hope your shoulder blades are okay. Yeah, T's and P's. But I think this is potentially an opportunity for the Panthers to be like, hey, Sam, we appreciate you, but we're going to go ahead and move on. We don't know if PJ is going to be the answer, who is allegedly stepping in for him now and did step in for him in the past. But we're also going to bring back Cam Newton, who I, I'm trying to think back and rack my brain whenever this uh, rumor potentially started last night or maybe this morning. Cam and Matt Rule were never around each other, right? No, no never. It was just the owner that let Ron Rivera go, right, yep. in the, early in the season. Right. Like, yeah. Hey, just want to let you know, you're not going to be our guy for the future. You can go ahead and just enjoy the rest of the season and uh, start looking at your potential jobs. I appreciate your service. Ron Rivera said he appreciated it. Mm -hmm. I think the ownership said they appreciated it. I don't know how it was with Tepper and Cam on the way out. Was it dicey in there? I, I don't know, but I do remember Rule. I think, if I remember correctly, Rule having to at, answer oh, yeah. questions like, yes. is Cam going to be at your At training camp, right? It was yeah. happening at training camp. Mm -hmm. It was early. When he signed. Like, as soon as he signed, like, hey, is Cam going to be your quarterback? They yeah. released him very late. Well, whatever the case, they yeah. seem to be over it. They yeah, seem to be yeah. over it. Uh, you would hope that there would probably be a conversation, like, hey, the way that went, maybe this is how you didn't like it, maybe this is how we didn't like it. It's great to have you back in the building. We have no idea what long-term looks like, okay? We, we traded for Teddy Bridgewater last year. We, we paid him out of the Saints organization. We paid him the, a big-time deal. I, Brought I, Joe Brady in, the offense coordinator. Teddy Bridgewater didn't have Christian McCaffrey. See ya. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Can't do it. You can't win us the Super Bowl now or next year. Get the fuck out. See ya. And that's what you can do when you have the wealthiest owner in the NFL. He wants to make things happen right 
now. So Cam, you come in and help us out. We'd be very grateful for it, but we have no idea what long-term is. You get, hey, Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey in the backfield yeah. now? Yeah. They're gonna have good. to Joe Brady's gonna have to change up the offense. I assume you got Robbie Anderson still there making plays. Who told Sam Darnold, tighten the fuck up, dude. <laughs> right. He's about fed up with it as well. Cam going to Carolina is awesome. I hope he gets to play. I have no idea how it's gonna go. I hope he's in great shape. I assume he is because he is just a physical freak. He's out from the uh the COVID situation. Yeah, right? he is. Yeah. I think he got vaccinated. He is now he, vaccinated. He and now he's on the Carolina Panthers. Follow up uh, at Rap Sheet says Cam Newton had a good meeting with owner David Tepper, GM Scott Fitter. Because mm -hmm. you can be fit, you can be fitter, mm -hmm. or you can even be fitterer. fitterer. That's right. And Vice President of Football Operations, Stephen Drummond, Steve. he had previously met with Ke uh, Coach Rule, an honest conversation that needed to happen. They cleared the air and we'll move forward. Okay, so there literally just talked yeah. about it. You're welcome for the tweet rap report. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm happy that takes place. That's pretty big news. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he already has chemistry with DJ Moore, who's their number one. He was still the quarterback there when he came into the league, obviously. Christian, like you said, McCaffrey, Christian. yeah. So, I mean, that could easily be a little uh, run for the Panthers. And this is, this is big time revenge run, right? Yeah. To, to prove the haters wrong. Even within the Panthers organization. That's yeah. right. It is new offense, though, right? Yeah. He never, he's never run this no. offense. No. Yeah, Joe Brady's going to have to change it, though. I think it's a much different offense if Cam Newton's yeah. there as opposed to Sam Darnold. But P.J. can move, so I guess he's got... Hey, Sam's been scooting this yeah. year. Sam had a couple yeah, rushing touches. Sam also has been scooting right to that old... Oh, is that Adam Gase, Sam Darnold? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah he has, remember, he was... The, the last game I saw, I think he was running backwards... And then he did a one of these. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was quadruple coverage. Uh huh. And it was a guaranteed interception. Oh, yeah. He mm -hmm. threw a pick six last week, couple in the red zone. It was, it was yep. very electric. I wonder why some guys, like Sam Darnold makes these incredible plays. Mm -hmm. the, the protection of the ball, I think, by fans and maybe some media people, not all media people, okay, please, but some media people, the thought of the ability of somebody takes precedence of over how they actually are in the game. Like Sam Darnold, all the people that came out and were like, he's going to be awesome out from underneath there. Then he had some plays where he looked awesome, and it was like, yeah, maybe Sam Darnold is going to be a guy. And all of a sudden, you start thinking, oh, this guy's ability is that he can be a guy. And then all of a sudden, he just gets back into the thing of like, oh, I don't give a fuck about this football. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Why is that happening? What is it? Is that coaching? Is that just... Is that football IQ? Is that instinct? What do you think it is? How trying come there to do are too much? Yeah, is it like the pressure of people saying that? Yeah, but you trying know? to do isn't everybody trying to do everything they possibly can do? Carson more than most. Yeah, and then how come they don't take into account that doing the best they could possibly do is keeping the ball correct in possession of your team? I, I wonder why that is. I've never played quarterback. I mean, couple plays. Hell yeah. Couple, couple plays. good plays. Couple. 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 Completion. Biggest turkey bowl of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. How you doing? Eric Swope, college basketball player at the U, makes great reception. You can catch footballs. Mm -hmm. Then in Jerry World, I'd go ahead and let that thing fucking mm -hmm. go. Die. Rip it and rip it. Yeah. But I felt like when I was rolling out, and me acting like I remember any of that play while it was happening, <laughs> is such a absolutely ignorant comment. But I think if you watch the film, I actually do look to see if there's like a defender around because I could still punt it at this point. I could still punt the ball. And whenever I saw Swope was up, I'm like, oh, here we go. We're God. going there. And that guy came pretty quickly, right? But in the NFL, I mean, if you got that much room, the guy's over. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that, that's, how, that's, the uh -huh. that's the type of quarterback I am. Right. That's the type of quarterback I am. But how come some guys just can't get past the fact that I am going to roll the dice so hard here, so hard, and I'm just going to put the entire franchise, organization, city, team into one roll of the dice. I, some guys I feel like can get better at it maybe, but Sam Darnold resorting back to that, is that just who he is? He's a guy that's just going to turn the ball over and be reckless? And then you think about Carson Wentz. It's like, He's gotten paid $100 million on that by the way he has played. Will he ever say, like, I, I don't need to play like that? Why are some people in that position, why are they, like, so adamant about not turning the ball over? And then why are some people just like, oh, I'm going to make every single play I can make? And why is it the people that are adamant about not turning the ball over are always the successful ones? And then the ones that aren't, it's like there's just glimpses of greatness in it. Why isn't every quarterback doing that at that level? I wonder if it has something to do with, like, you know, you mentioned, like, the arm talent and how mm -hmm. good of an arm he has. And he's still kind of young. So, like, guys who have great arms like that later in their career still know, like, hey, like, yeah, I 
like I could get it there, but like this, I'm not going to complete this ball. And I feel like when you have a really good arm and you're running around constantly, some of these younger guys, like they still think like the, the, in their heads, like there's no way they're going to throw a pick. Like I have a fucking cannon. I know I can put it on this guy. I've done it before. And it's just like, they never ex- expect to throw an interception. I think like you mentioned it, like after a while, like either, either you learn from that or you're done and you don't play anymore because you, you can't get Sam over is going to be done. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. He turns the ball over way too much. Like, Jameis getting another shot with the Saints is a big fucking deal. Yeah. The only reason why he got another shot with the Saints is because he led the NFL in touchdown passes or whatever. But him leading the NFL in interceptions, too, he got a $1 million yeah. contract offer. It's like teams and franchises value the ball so much more than I think everybody else does. The Sam Darnold situation is the fact that he's completely reckless. And I think that's why the game manager uh, thing being like a knock on people is such bullshit. Like, I, I think that is such bullshit because managing the game is literally what you, you have to do as a quarterback. And if you do the check down and the dink and dump or maybe just the throw away because it's the right move for the game, aren't you managing the game in that fashion? And aren't you keeping your team in it as, a, as opposed to putting yourself in a bad position? It's just like Sam Darnold, that feels like that's his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, like, could always be. And for Jameis, like, he had a whole year as a backup. It's not as if he went to the Saints and immediately was playing. Like, he had to learn the whole entire thing. But with Darnold, is it like he's so programmed to, hey, I have to make all these plays like he did in New – or like he tried to do in New York. He and tried to. I, they didn't win. He tried to at USC, I guess, too. They didn't win. Like, I, I don't, don't think they were great when he was at USC. So I, is this, like – is this just he has an incredible workout when he goes to a workout or a practice because he's making every – because he can inc- sling it all the way around? Yeah. Is that why you think people just continue to be like, oh, this guy could be the guy, this guy could be the guy, this guy could be the guy, even though everybody that knows football, like D-Buck came out. And mm-hmm. Darius Butler, by the way, he's the host of the Man of Man podcast. When I was on a team with him, he was – his football IQ was just next level. And he, he talks about how that was his advantage. He was able to play corner, safety, nickel. I think he even played linebacker for like nine years, drafted by the Patriots in there. You know, like he, he has this incredibly high football IQ. Yeah. And I think that is why he had so much success. And that's why whenever he talks about football, I listen. Him doing the film breakdown of Sam Darnold and being like, this guy stinks. Hey, yeah. And that was, that was heavy words for me. When, when D-Butt said, hey, this guy stinks, knowing that there's going to be people that potentially come after him. But then he started talking about it. He was like, they would show the same defense to him in the third quarter as they showed him in the first quarter, and he was still making the same bad decision that he made in the first quarter. And a part of being the NFL quarterback is seeing something and being like, okay, next time they show this, I'm gonna do this. Mm. Or anytime, I, that's why you see Aaron and Patrick, I guess he said he hasn't been able to do this, or and maybe he's not able to do it anymore because they're doing different things. But that's why uh, quarterbacks are trying to figure out what fucking coverage it is. Because did we see this earlier in the game? Have I seen this earlier before? Which route now on this offensive Set that we're running right now is going to be wide open like that's a part of being the quarterback and also knowing potentially what's coming and acknowledging before the snap even this might be a tough play to get anything it seems like they have us right now and then that's the play that you potentially know like all right this might not work for us with where it's set up i'm gonna throw this away or i'm gonna go down like these are all things that nfl quarterbacks have mm-hmm. to do and it feels like and i didn't watch the film d but did mm-hmm. but this is something he said and when he said it it resonated with me i'm like well if Darius Butler's saying he should have been able to predict what this defense is going to do and wasn't able to do it, that's like a next level breakdown as opposed to, oh, he throws it into defenses. d was like, no, he's seeing the same similar defenses and making the same mistakes. That is not something you can do as an NFL quarterback. And it probably, you know, is part of it too. Same deal this year with McCaffrey. He goes out, so he needs to kind of do a little bit more on his own. And he had been playing well up to that part, so, a point of the season, so he probably had more confidence thinking like, he could, but it, like you said, like at this point, I think you just you just know who the guy is. Like teams can't trust him because he turns it over way too much. Like he might have those splash plays and like They're holy awesome. shit, hit this mm-hmm. guy's arms incredible. Awesome. Very few guys can make this throw. But when you're throwing three, four picks a game, like no one's ever gonna <laughs> trust you, nor should they. Yeah, it's just it's also interesting. And what will Cam do? Will Cam be what he was in New England, or will Cam be what we have once seen him? Will it be a mixture of both? I saw Cam play down in Carolina, and he was the maestro to the band <laughs> yeah. and the band was all of the queen city of charlotte mm-hmm. monday night football rain i've talked about it numerous times 
He literally would dive for a first down. They would play the Superman song. He would stand up, do his thing. The whole place would go crazy, go back in the huddle. Then there would almost be like a music sound ready to go. And he would just start running and the place would go crazy. And he's on the sideline basically like, here we go. When he was rolling down in Carolina, that was a different, different thing. It was awesome to watch. I think we won. I had a I had a good punt. It's in a highlight down there. And I got a bad punt that they didn't put in. <laughs> oh. It was windy and rainy. I think we won. But it was amazing watching Cam in Carolina. Hopefully he'll be able to do that again. Yeah, and they're still in the hunt. Like, they're 4-5. and five. I think Atlanta's 4-5. and five, And they're the seven seed or 4-4 four and because four they had a bye already. So, that'd be awesome if Cam goes down low redemption and takes Carolina to the playoffs. Well, that'd be unbelievable. got the box down there still. I mean, oh, yeah. And the Falcons. What are the Falcons? Yeah. 500 with Artie Smith. Artie Smith. Artie Smith Got the is boys coming. Buzzing. Get rid of Julio. <laughs> yeah. Get our best weapon out of here. Ridley's been out. We're going to draft yeah. a tight end in the top five for the first time since like 1960-something. Mm-hmm. He gets going. Artie Smith got the boys buzzing. Yeah. yeah. And Young Way Koo, the Course. kicker, stone cold assassin. Yeah. That's yep. right. That dude doesn't even feel it, I don't think. No. He just hits game winners. He's very square to the uh, po- goalposts. When he lines up? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple guys that have. There's a couple new lineups I'm seeing. A Christian, somebody has a Cristiano Ronaldo lineup. Oh, love oh. that! They stand like square to the ball. Hmm. I'm fascinated by all this thing because there's been numerous times whenever I was kicking that I've like, because you just tinker with something. It's like uh, in golf, if you change like a little bit, it feels like a completely different yeah. swing. And it's you're trying to make your brain think too that you just fix something. So there's been a couple times where I've like kind of messed with you know, my stance or whatever. When I saw the dude lined up like fucking Christiana to it, I was like, this is awesome. Why didn't I do that? A weapon. That would have been amazing to think about. There's, there's guys that are real tight, like Prater is pretty tight, and he just goes straight down like he's hitting a goddamn kickoff, and then the ball goes inside yes. out. And it, why'd that happen? He says, ah, it just started happening. Yeah. <laughs> he plays it every – I can't not see it now. He plays it every single time. No, he says he doesn't play it. Well, it happens every time. It just time. ends up happening, yeah, yeah which is crazy because I wonder it like – if he has a short one that is potentially on the left hash, because his ball literally is a, is a left-handed curve ball. Yeah. That thing just goes, and then it ends up straight or whatever. But there might be a moment where he's too early. But then you got Tucker, who goes a little bit wider, and he's coming in like with a full. There's just so many different ways to attack it, so many different ways. Well, and how hard is it to change your swing once you kind of already have it down, especially in kicking? So for me, I always change my shit. Like, I changed it um, – I don't want to say like weekly, but almost like I, I I'd say quarterly through the season, well, I would change something. I would change something that I was doing. I'd either lower the drop because my leg was getting slower. It was almost the same adjustments every single year, but it was like a game for me to like, okay, how do I mentally make myself feel like I corrected the problem that was potentially happening right there? So it was always like a little tinker almost the entire time. There was even games, like warm ups and games. I, for whatever reason, what I would be doing on Wednesday, Thursday, when I, the ball just wasn't going on yeah. Sunday. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. We have to redo this entire thing here real quick. And then I go into the game with so much confidence because I just worked on something 25 minutes ago. And then you watch the film and it's like, I guess there's a little difference there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's a constant battle of what makes you feel like you're doing it. Prater, I don't think he changes anything. But from talking to Prater and with how much smelling salts he sniffs, yeah. I, he I don't know how much. kicks I, it as hard as he can yeah. every single time. And I talked to uh, Boswell. We went back to Pittsburgh, and uh, we ran into Boz at the uh, Cactus. Tequila Cowboy. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, tequila Steel ca- Cactus, also a great bar. Oh, Steel Cactus? That. Pretty good time. It's down there near uh, Jerome Bettis' Grill. Down there, ah. down there near, near Jerome Bettis' Grill. I ran into him there. And we had a great conversation, you know. We're each a couple beers deep, you know. We're getting that whole thing. And I asked him, I'm like, how do you hit the ball so fucking pure every time? Because that end-over-end rotation is like just a pure shot. And when you're talking about a ball moving and somebody having to catch it and put it down in 1.3 seconds and the sweet spot only being like that big, it's like... To just hit a pure ball every time is absurd. That's why Justin Tucker is so fucking good. That ball is just going straight as an arrow every time. I don't know how he does it. I asked Boswell, and Boswell said, fuck, man, I don't know. I just swing, <laughs> I just swing as hard as I can. And I was like, I fucking love this guy. I, I love this guy that that's his actual thought because I was not like that at all. I was like, oh, I think I got to maybe plan a little deeper this time. Boz was like, fuck, I don't know. Just swing, dude. <laughs> And Tucker's kind of the same way, I think. Yeah. So that's maybe where I went wrong in that. Which time. it's 
you knowing you, you seem like you'd be a fuck it, let's just swing guy. No, ultimately, that is where I get to. Yeah. But I have to get to the point where I can just fuck it, let it swing. So like, okay, I'm going to lower my drop. And then once I lower my drop, all right, then I can yeah, just yeah. fucking go. Yeah. But in a much smaller sense, going back to this turnover conversation where the quarterback just has to adjust his mindset in games. And we've heard Peyton talk about it on Monday Night Manning, which is back. I had to change my punting style completely. I used to be a bomber. So much fun. Fucking let me just bomb balls away. And then I became a guy that was just looking for fair catches, strictly fair catches. It's nowhere near as fun. It was a game changer for me. I became a much better punter at that time because we gave up next to no yards because our gunners, it was just me and the gunners basically going after it, trying to get a fair catch. Everybody inside just go and protect, which I think is what Coach Mo is trying to do with uh, Bo Herquez yeah. right now up in Green Bay. Might get a little bit difficult as the NFC North gets a little bit chilly up there in Lambeau because you do have to have pretty favorable conditions to try to hit a 4-6 to 5-0 ball every single time so you can get a fair catch. But that takes a lot of the guessing out of it. But for the punter, it takes a lot of like, like, hey, I could drop this thing low and I, if I got a little thing, I could hit this ball 70 yards right now. Mm -hmm. Now, that 70 yards could get shoved right back in my face because the people we have covering just got signed to the team on Friday. They don't have a clue how they're doing. They're being basically told like, hey, you just block let Pat and the Gunners take care of the rest. And I'm, it's a much different situation than what the quarterbacks are going through. So I can see how that decision to be like, okay, so I'm no longer just a fucking home run derby guy. Right. Yeah. Like I have to adjust a little bit. But I just seen that as being like a professional. Like, hey, this is what's going to make the team better, which in turn is probably going to make your life better. We, we don't have the capability to do what you and maybe some other guys are able to do with how we have our roster currently put together. Even though we had some dogs on special teams, I think I could have just hit some balls. But nonetheless, that is an interesting thing that has to happen in sports to evolve. Will Sam Darnold ever be able to do that? Like, will Sam Darnold ever be able to be like, all right, I'm just going to be a boring quarterback here and I'll make the play when I have to? Will Carson Wentz continue to be able to do yeah. that? Because he has been for the last couple of weeks. He hasn't almost thrown 10 picks in a game yeah. for like three weeks or whatever. Yeah. Well, and like you said about the being professional, like, don't you think, like, that's why. That's why almost I think that's just how these guys are because there's no way that after one of these games like Matt Rule and Joe Barry aren't telling Darnold like, hey, you can't fucking throw this. You know, and you, you do that multiple times throughout a season. And if a guy still is going out and making the same mistakes over and over, like there's a good chance that's just who he is. Hey, congrats to the Panthers, by the way. We just spent 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Here we go. We're going to be in a real situation if Cam does well, too. Well, I don't think you have to worry about that. that. You don't Tony, think Cam's going to do well? What do you mean? He hasn't done well in five years. Whoa! Tony. He had a broken foot, a car crash, a shoulder, COVID! Yes, a break. And, and Max, great, but he lost out to a rookie quarterback in camp this year. Well, different offense, you know? It's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was a Don, He won't lose love to Darnold. He's a great player for a long time, but hasn't been also for a long time. And that's a valid, valid point, and I'd assume that Cam hears that. Uh-huh. Cam yep. knows that. I think he's even talked about it in an Iconic Saga production right. on YouTube, which is one of my favorite. Just production company. They yeah. make good shit. Oh, yeah. He makes, Cecil. He makes great shit yeah. down there. I think he's even addressed it like, I can't go out like this. Like, a lot of people are yeah. talking about it. Because remember all the way back to even when Cam was in the Juco? Oh, yeah. Rapping in front of the entire... Cam is always dominated. Oh, yeah. Got the juice. So imagine the, the taste in his mouth about how the last couple of years have gone. And now I said this last year as well, when he went to New England. Yeah. In seven touchdowns or something. Yeah. Eight, excuse, excuse Do you me. think <laughs> ten picks? Do you think touchdowns. he's anticipating going <laughs> in there being the time. starter? No, nah, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Are they? Are you? They're not signing him as a backup. Yeah. Kim He's gotta be playing, but also You know how loud that place would get PJ Walker, awesome. We love PJ Walker. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. love him. Met PJ Walker when he was a Colt. Yeah. Um Best XFL quarterback of all time. I agree. Now, Jordan Tayamu. Yeah. yeah well, Cardale and, Jones, too. I mean, I mean there was... But we talking he, XFL 1 or 2. There's Tommy Maddox. No, yeah. hey, what listen, Tommy Heineke? fucking Maddox. We ain't talking about <laughs> XFL about 1. Heineke's uh, our guy. Anyways, PJ is... We are fans of PJ. Yes. But if PJ does anything first quarter, second quarter, that isn't good, and you have Cam Newton standing on the sidelines in Carolina, in the same stadium that I got to witness the Cam Newton thing, 
that's going to get live. Yeah. Rule knows that. Mm -hmm. That's why you had to have the hard conversation. Like, I think they're planning for Cam Newton when he learns the offense, Joe Brady's offense, to be the guy. I don't think it's going to be this weekend. I don't okay. think he'll probably be in a hoodie, maybe, I think, this weekend. So probably like two weeks to learn the offense, week and a half? I don't know. I don't know. He said uh, how long it take him to learn the New England one, which everybody says is like calculus in this entire mm -hmm. Yeah, he came in like a month before the season, and he started week one. But I mean, So this is probably assume with Joe Brady – and Carolina in the circumstance they're in, this will be a much quicker turnaround. Well, but if they got them in pads this weekend, yeah, they're, they're going to be cheering for After them. this week, they have the Cardinals this weekend, and then it gets significantly easier. They have the football team, the Dolphins, the Falcons the next three Yeah, weeks. so okay. you have them start next week, yep. obviously. Now, granted, it is Thursday. And we're Ron, acting as if Cam could against start Against Ron this. Rivera next weekend. Oh, oh revenge game. Awesome. Oh, need it. Go. Who's quarterback over in Washington still? Heineke. Heineke. He's still. Is it Heineke? Oh, yeah. Fitz might be back soon, though. Oh, no. Nah, he's riding them slots. <laughs> His he time. likes to go down a fast one. Uh huh. <laughs> Multiple times. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. The Washington football team, and I don't want to move from one team that's probably not going to be in the playoffs to another, but <laughs> the Washington football team, that whole story 10 years from now is going to be yeah. insane. Comedy. If, oh. if Fitz comes out and just tells his side of it. And well, not just that. I mean, think about everything. Oh, yeah. That just potential story that was on local sports talk radio. Right. Mm -hmm. Which who knows if any of that is – anytime we get a caller that says their name is Joe, their name might be Mike. Uh -huh. That's right. And they say they're in Cleveland. You, they might be in fucking San Antonio. They got stories, You too. literally know nothing because you're not really checking anything. But the Fitz water slide situation <laughs> yeah. is one that will be investigated, I assume, at some point. But if he comes back, how's Heineke doing? Were they on a bye week? Is that why we know they're nothing on a about bye, it? Yeah. They have not been doing great. Yeah. yeah. Two and, I believe two and Fitz six. will be starting if he comes back. They are the back. worst team ATS in the NFL. Yeah. Against Chiefs, got to be. Chiefs are second worst. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say, I lost a lot of money on well, that. The, <laughs> the only reason the football team is worse is because they played one less game. So Put far. the standings back up there. So the AFC North, the Ra man, I think the Ravens dance through Miami tonight. I honestly believe that. Him saying that you got to put on a show, too, when you go back to, like, South Florida, where he's and from. And it's Thursday night football. Yeah. Like, I understand that maybe Monday night football has lost a little bit of its luster since the way back in the day when it was on ABC and it was an entire thing. But everybody knows that you're the only game in town. You're the only yeah. game anybody is watching. Lamar knows that. That Ravens team knows that. Mm -hmm. And he's back home. Oh, Close. And, and a lot of people potentially, you know, have to battle against the humidity down there in Miami. Because remember, there's a lot of cold weather teams that yep. travel down to Miami, and that's a real thing. A lot of people think that's potentially why the Patriots have struggled late in the season down in Miami, because it is two vastly different environments and climates that you're breathing in and training in and everything like that. Lamar, South Florida boy. Yeah, that's right. Used to it. He literally grew up Loves in it. Mm -hmm. And he is there. And where's Hollywood Brown from? I'd assume... Similar. I would assume as well. Same there. area. And the AFC North is so close. They know that. Yeah. They win every game. This is going to be a – I see. I kind of wish almost we – Is I, it potential is it thunders, time? Potential thunderstorms tonight, so. Oh, on the oh, ground. Oh, he's going to rush. Oh, oh my. guy's going to have the studs on. Take, oh, take, oh, take no. the jersey down from the rafters. Well, maybe. and the thing about Jacoby is Jacoby is a precision passer. That's right. Uh, he's a great leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He can scoot. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got some wiggle. Better than Phil Rivers. Right. Absolutely. But he is not a scoot, scoot quarterback. No. If the weather's going to be terrible, you'd have to think that the run game would be the game, and that is what the Baltimore Ravens are. Mm -hmm. Plus, you, oh, my God, why is this the week we don't have the risk-free yeah. same game parlay? Lev Bell's coming You know why? Alive. You know why? Because of how good I feel about the game tonight. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for me not to enjoy it. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. You'll be so mad. That risk-free same-game parlay is the most stressful part of my life. <laughs> it's terrible. I don't doubt Especially it. Especially with how close. There's, there's been, what, nine? We've been one away from it was, six? It was the most stressful moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I just... I'm like, I need to get rid of that. As the season goes on here, we got a long season. we got 17 yeah, games. Exactly. Potentially 18. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, we Soon. were at the game last week. The Colts kicked ass. We had the best seats in the house, and we were... Defeated, after fucking that. miserable, walking so out of the crush. <laughs> miserable. We we Other literally. Other fans are walking I, I felt up like to you. I just played. Yeah, and yeah. Just, <laughs> I did. I was on the Jets. I felt like I played and got my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the people walking up to me though. Yeah. Oh, like the coach oh, just won. Yeah. As well. yeah. Coach oh, just won, and I saw the faces of people. Oh, yeah. 
that were at the game that rode and they're like, we were so close, man. I'm like, we just rounds. fucking won. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how devastated I felt. You know, I always assumed that was the case. But once you actually get a put chance a, to a face see to it, it see yeah. it's like, All right, I can't be a part of this anymore. Yeah. This guy should have been happy that he just saw the Colts win and instead he's out here grieving alongside me. Uh-huh. And I should be happy too. We just experienced the game in maybe the coolest fashion of all time. Michael Cole. Yeah, we just beat the shit out of Michael Cole's Jets. Yeah. yeah. Think about any other plus 1,000 bet if you put it out and it hit. You know what I mean? Like, if you picked a game that was plus 1,000, like, give me a break, dude. A 20-point underdog is what? Plus 400 money line? Yeah. Like, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. But it's still stressful. Oh, yeah. Very I still want to hit it every yeah, single time. No question. Oh, yeah. And I bet you'll hit all your same game parlays tonight, too. It feels like that always happens. Yeah. I'll, I'll tweet them out after they hit. Jets yeah. to beat the Bills this weekend is plus 460. So double that. Oh, so you're saying that maybe the judgment yeah, that I was like, be, be, real, be 20, realistic. A 25 point dog. Like to if, win you, the game. if you hit a plus 500. Hey, this is the yeah. Hammer Don yeah. Cowboys yeah. right yeah. now, That's by right. the way. Saddling the yeah. horse. Yeah. Saying, mm-hmm. Hey, you, you, you don't be scared to get back in that box, is what you guys are saying. Well, if there's basically. anyone who knows how to defend a bet. That loses? Yeah. It may be if it's because <laughs> you guys were at the game and you saw that defeat in those poor Saps eyes, but nothing to me was worse than the Tom Brady no. kneel down. That was no. the real soul. Cr- I felt like anything after that was was gravy. That fucking kneel down. And then on the last one, going back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. yeah. The no Jamar Chase touchdown. Uh, uh, against the Jags. Uh, that one stunk. That was also heartbreaking. It had such a good run. But these Thursday night games have become games, even if the marquee isn't as uh, beautiful as you would expect. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited for it. All right. Let's move along here. We just talked about the Carolina Panthers and the Washington football team. <laughs> Hell yeah. And ipso facto, the Dolphins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> and great punting. Great punting. Changing punting. We learned why I probably wasn't that great of a kicker when it's all said and done. <laughs> should have just had the... Uh, should have been like, ah, just kick yeah, it. Just yeah. kick it as yeah. hard as I can. Yeah, just kick it. I hope it goes. Should. Could you imagine jogging on the field and just being like, I have no idea why this is going to work mm-hmm. or why it's not? That's kind of what it was like my uh, freshman year, or rookie year punting. I'd hit a bomb and I had no idea why. And then I hit a shank. No clue why. Speaking of hitting bombs, same. can I That's ask kind questions? of tough. That's kind of tough <laughs> to figure out what happened there. I have no <laughs> idea. Sure. Hey, do what, do, what, uh, do what you did the last time when it went good. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go do that. Good idea. And then once to like like year three, it was like, oh, I'm starting to figure this out now. And then <laughs> everything kind of changes there. Go ahead, Dix. I wanted to ask you a question um, because it's been on the internet all week. Is the is the kid kicking for San Diego State as good as the internet? He's is- unfucking believable. That dude bombs balls. I I don't know what type of ball they're using. I think it's a Nike. I'm not 100 percent sure what type of ball it is. Whatever the case, to generate enough force to launch any pigskin, no matter what the ball is. Now, the Duke is a little heavier, right? Yeah. So the Duke is a little heavier than all these college balls. So that's why you do see a drop-off sometimes in either kickers or punters going from college to the NFL because the Duke is a different... I actually like kicking the Duke more because if you have a strong leg, when you hit a, a heavier object, it'll travel further. But sometimes you can't indent the ball enough if your leg isn't strong enough, if that makes sense. It's like a fastball coming in faster. If you have good strength, that's the one you want. Everybody else in that league. But yeah, Ariza for San Diego yeah. State. Yeah, I saw him hit a ball from his own 12 for a touchback the other night. Damn. And I think it, it was against Hawaii, I believe. And that... The cameraman or woman had no clue it was coming. Because <laughs> yeah. I would like to see like the trajectory on that thing, where it's going. But if you can just hit 90-yard balls all the time, I think everybody would just take a touchback every single time. Not going to be as easy, I think, in the NFL. Might be a little bit different yeah. with a rush that could potentially come. But he's a Sunday guy, for sure. He is a fucking weapon, too. Oh, he kicks field goals, too. I yeah. love him. Yeah. Athlete. Athlete tackles people, too. I fucking love this dude. I'm you ever not- see a guy pop a pigskin with his foot? <laughs> All right. All right. So, I like that guy. Yeah. Good player. <laughs> By the way, I like that guy. All right? I like Jamie. Mm-hmm. What is he? The uh, Scottish Sco- Hammer? Sco- Scottish Psycho- Hammer. Hammer. No, no. He's a Scottish no. Hammer. Come on. Have a little respect. Remember dude? when he dropped that ball and then thought he was going to take it 80 yards to the house? <laughs> that was awesome. Dude, give him a break. He stove both his thumbs on the catch. <laughs> Listen, when you drop a snap, it is a nightmare. Okay? You have full panic. And you have to think about it for the next, like, probably four weeks every yeah. single time. I don't want to catch it. 
but there was a story, and it might be true. I have no idea. I have kicked a soccer ball 124 miles an hour. I have knocked soccer goals off up on their end from hitting a crossbar with a soccer ball. I'm not saying I have the strongest leg in the history, but I will say I put in enough work for my leg to become the sh one of the strongest legs in history. Sebastian Janikowski murders balls. There's been massive legs all around the world for a long, long time. And I have the utmost respect for bombers. But when the report came out, that he popped four dukes by kicking it, it was hard for me to take it serious. Yeah. It was very difficult for me to take it serious. But then I saw him hit some balls, and I'm like, holy shit, this dude is a beast of a punter. Probably didn't need the story that was probably being mentioned because he went to a very small school, so he's probably just trying to get some, you know, a little bit of shine or whatever. Mm. But maybe he did pop like four or five dukes in one session. I've never seen it. Not my dukes. No way. I would, I would love to see me at one of those camps if a guy just blew out four or five fucking balls. I would have lost my goddamn mind. <laughs> yeah, lifetime contract. Dude, don't come to Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you get an odd, please go anywhere else. There was a couple, like Marquette, him and Thomas and a couple other people got into like a long ball, long punting contest. Yeah. And that was at the point of my career where I was hitting high. I wasn't going long. And it was very early in the contest where I was like, oh, I can't keep up with these dudes anymore. What I think Marquette hit one like 95 yards maybe Jesus. or something like that. There was obviously tailwind yeah. behind, yeah. Mm -hmm. but you're not going to do a home run derby into the wind. If you, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? You're not going to do that. And Thomas hit one that was just like this low liner. They go there. It feels like that Ariza guy is hitting those every day of mm -hmm. his life. And I'm just like, God, ah, good for him, dude. And maybe Jamie did pop those balls, but I'm just saying I've seen a lot of people bomb balls that – and the Duke has survived. It's it's kind of built for that out there. You think that Ariza guy could do all three at the on Sundays he's or not, no? It's so, not that accurate uh, kicking. It seems like. Yeah, uh, I, I know somebody pretty similar that was uh, <laughs> maybe a pretty big leg. Uh huh. Because Ariza tackles people too. It seems like he's a very good athlete. I couldn't. I, I could not punt anywhere near the level that he was in college, and I don't think I could do what he's doing at any point of my career actually with the way he is just turning balls and making them go so far. But it has always been said that it'd be very difficult to do all three. And I was somebody who wanted to try to do all three. Yeah. There's only been, I think, a few people that have had the ability. A guy for the Atlanta Falcons tried it years and years and years ago. And I think he went like two for 10 on field goals or something and he was a very good Damn. punter. So I don't want to say he potentially ruined it for everybody, yeah. but I think he proved how hard it is to be elite at three very different that kicking off is much different than kicking field goals and punting is much different than both of those things so to be able to specialize at an nfl level and handle the mental capacity and the amount of reps it would take yeah. to continue to work for a 17 might be 18 game season plus the playoffs and preseason a lot of people don't think it'd be possible for the leg to handle it but this dude i don't think anybody thought it was possible to hit 70 yard punts every single week this guy's able to do it that's crazy. That really is crazy. But it, like, like you said, like you, your career would if you would have anyone who would actually do that and do all three, like you wouldn't be able to play very long, would you? No, no. You are sacrificing. Yeah, longevity. Right. You are yeah. sacrificing long, which is what everybody says, by the way. Yeah. But there's only a few kickers and punters that get the type of longevity that everybody's saying you're sacrificing. True. You know. Yeah. Like I played eight years. And for some kickers, that's no time at all. And some punters, that's no time at all. But for a large majority, eight is like a hell of a eternity. That is yeah, a long yeah. run. But I'm nowhere near what some guys are. Like, for instance, I started kicking off for Vinatieri. So I started doing the kickoffs for the Colts. So that took like one, you mm -hmm. know, explosive rep off of his leg so mm -hmm. he could go longer. But that wasn't until like year 12 of his career or whatever. Yeah. I have no idea how he was able to kick off and kick field goals for tw that long and then also continue to do it. Because at some point, your body... Yeah, your knees. Is right. your body. Like, I wonder mm -hmm. how that kid's leg feels now just doing it in college. So college, it was dope, man. I had no fun. <laughs> I did. Didn't matter. <laughs> Tiny pictures. Bingo. I mean, I was. <laughs> college, man. It was college. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I guess the leg, would be, the leg would be sore oh, yeah. or whatever. You know, some days it was like, all right, you're going to have to fucking figure it out. Yeah. Dude. Wake up. Because we got to go kick 50 field goals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we got to go hit 15 kickoffs. And then we got to go hit. 40 rollout punts, and all of them are full go every time. Mm -hmm. Rich Rod's yelling at you the entire time. Yeah, and there was one time I tweaked something in my quad, and I didn't want to miss practice, but the trainers had me miss practice. Yeah. So they put me in a red jersey. Oh. Okay. 
So this is like the first time I missed anything. It was during training camp. It might've been either my junior or senior year. And Rich Rod goes, I don't know what's up with Mac. He looked like goddamn Christmas tree out there. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back next week or something like that. I'm like, I didn't decide, excuse me. I did not decide to miss. It was probably the right move though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> should have hydrated more in college too. That was something I probably should Yeah, sure. Yeah. Water's important. Yeah. Somebody tweeted me uh, the other day. You and me chugged a pitcher against each other on a random Wednesday night at Penny Pitchers. And he said, I've been a fan ever since. <laughs> and that reminded me, I did not focus on football like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is a 100% a mistake. But I do appreciate that guy remembering that. Because he wasn't the first, he wasn't the last. <laughs> There's a lot of people that went down. And the one night where I, it all potentially came back in, that was when the pitcher chug was retired. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Hell Good of a run. run. Hell of a run. Penny fucking pitchers. What do you want me to do? Yeah, have to. Absurd. Hey, you got punt, field goal, and kickoff tomorrow at the beginning of practice and a workout at 6.30 a.m., and you're supposed to go to classes after that. <laughs> All right, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. We're back in four minutes. Dumbest life of all time continues and rolls on. Happy Veterans Day to all the women and men who served out there. We appreciate the hell out of you. You don't have to be pro-war to be pro-warrior. Remember that. Let's have a hell of a day. Uh, rest in peace to the risk-free same game parlay Thursday Night Football Thursday. Yep. Now we have a good one. We'll take phone calls on the other side. 5 Energy phone line one 4 McAfee. Can't wait to chat with you. See you then. Oh, I didn't, oh, know, I didn't know they were friends. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, no. Uh -oh. Is that long? Is that a Most wedding? Look awesome. awesome. Is that long hair? Right hair? Right Is he a little Jerry curl? Are he you has like a top knot. Bro, how about the loose fucking bow tie, too? Hell yeah. That means they're best friends. Russ was it ever tied, you think? No. Yes. What are you talking about? Of course it was. You think that was actually tied? Yeah, Look come on. I think that he showed up that way. No. no. This actually worries me quite a bit. I didn't know about this. Video. Oh, Wild shit. card's still open. Oh, they now. go see each other after games. He That's might as well have handed them the goat OBJ clip. Right? Well, if they, if you want to pull these up, there's one of him talking to everybody under the sun. No. In New England. Not no. everyone. Not everyone. Oh, yeah. Not Mac not Jones. Talk. What not about Mac? Mac Jones. Oh. Oh. Can you knock it off? Oh. Oh. We get it. They're oh. best pals. Oh. Oh. going to see you. It's down. To oh my god! <laughs> That's a real hug. Look at that happiness on I'm the green. Let's go! Sorry, Ty, you it's lose. Down to two teams. Dude, his heart is three sizes too small, but look at the grin on the Grinch that is Bill Belichick <laughs> hugging Odell Beckham Jr. Are you kidding me? Oh, you lose, well, Ty! Too. You lose! Odell, maybe put two and two together here, pal. Don't be a fucking bozo. Make the right choice, okay? Let's Come go. to Green Bay. You're oh! 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 Look at those two. I don't know. Helmets are on. They look like they're kind <laughs> yeah, of pissed. Like they're they're down. Down. They don't look very happy. Zoom yeah. in on Aaron's eyes and is face. Is that a fight? Looks like he's looking past Oh, him. he is looking past yeah. him. No. Shut up, oh, bitch. look how happy he is. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Wait till 2021. The comb over in the back is holding a photo <laughs> of two people happy to see each other. Can we get the comb over's photo, too, to see what Odell Beckham's face is? Alternate angle. Need Wait. the alternate angle. Need the alternate angle. Okay, a lot of talk. Okay. Oh, I can't, oh, can't see anything. Oh, yes. Let's talk about it. Let's be about it. It's fun. A lot of sound. Oh! Big time events! Big time events, dude! Big time stuff! They what? look like your friends right there. Why does Aaron look so we mad? We got him! Holy shit. Look at that. Aaron looks like he's like, yeah, dude, I'm gonna look Aaron, cool. I mean, that's what Russ was doing. Who's so over? mad over Odell's left shoulder that Is that burn? I think it's burning burn back there. That bug. And Aaron, back, 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 in my it way. Is and Aaron, Aaron Donald. I can't do it anymore. I'm done waiting. Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Some, it, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yep. He's like, "Put the baby down." And they said no. And he said, "Ah!" And they said, "No, I'm taking your granddaughter." He said, "Ah!" 
And they said, I'm taking it. He goes, you asked for it. Skechers up, <laughs> Skechers down. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs. <laughs> yep. And the baby <laughs> yeah. caught the baby, caught the granddaughter, after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm-hmm. passed out. It was like one of those. Boom! And they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs. At yeah. first. You know how like that, how people would surf almost down the stairs? He did that and caught his granddaughter like this. And then he picked up the ball and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect. Mm-hmm. Called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here. Hour one of this Happy Veterans Day, Thursday, November 11th, 2021. Wrapping up here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, we're going to go to the phones, I believe. Can't wait to hear how this goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do the people think? What do you think they're going to say? What are, you gonna do? are they going to talk about Cam Newton's numbers being released on what he's getting paid by the Carolina Panthers? Because that information has been made public. The Panthers are giving quarterback Cam Newton a one-year deal worth up to $10 million for the rest of the year. It includes $4.5 million fully guaranteed and $1.5 million roster bonus. So let's just do quick math. We're in the middle of the season. He would get a $9 million fully guaranteed sign bonus a 1.5 or a three million dollar roster bonus and then now he's making a 20 million dollar contract basically with 10 million dollars for the rest of the season hey let's go cam Newton. Time. more money than he made in two years doing yeah and by the way more money way more money than anybody had offered him ever yeah he was on the streets for 86 days or 86 mm-hmm. nights yeah. is that what it was uh-huh. when bill belichick finally said all right we'll do it come to town we need you Good for Cam, yeah, dude. Yeah, happy Cam. Cam. Let's go. Him and Tepper have a photo on the Carolina Panther social media of them standing next to each other. Cam dressed exquisitely. Mm-hmm. Always. Not always. There's some outfits. Well, he There's was- some outfits. L- listen, I have a lot of respect for the way Cam Newton looks in his fashion and dress. This one is a fire. Fire. Fire Cam Newton. There are a couple there where I thought he maybe got a little aggressive. Sure. Yeah. But he doesn't care what I think. He doesn't care what no. I think. I respect him that he cares about how he looks when he goes into public. I respect and appreciate his love for fashion. This is a great one. There have been misses in my eyes. And I'm no fashion judge. I've seen some shows where they do the fashion. I am no fashion judge. But this one is a banger certified homecoming reunion with the Panther costume outfit. Yeah, very surprising there's not a hole in the top of his hat because that's been his move recently. And then he sticks the hair out the top of the hat. Which is... A great move. If I had that amount yeah. of flow and hair, yeah, I would right. want to showcase it as well. It's, it's kind of like a visor, but a, a um, like a classy visor. Yeah. yeah. Like a cowboy Classy visor. visor. Yeah, classy visor. Yeah. Some people in here can't wear visors anymore because if they're out in public, they'll get uh, sunburned. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, oh, true. yeah, that's right. What once was maybe a vi- like a... Uh, uh, an overhang yeah. yep. mm-hmm. cover is now just kind of falling apart. They make the fake hair ones now, though. Oh, do they? Right on top there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, those that's cool. Nice. Yeah, those are nice. Are you talking about Brett Mike? No. No, no, no. no, 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 no there no, are no. visors with wigs on top. Oh, yeah, with the crazy hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look like Scotty Too Hotty. Yes. <laughs> exactly, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Scotty too hotty hitting a worm on somebody oh, in 2021. Oh, look at <laughs> What a time. The boys been watching some old school WWF clips. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Been good. Good. Easy to forget. That wasn't that long ago. No. <laughs> that wasn't. The no. Rock promos. Oh. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> yeah. if President Dwayne Johnson ever said that Tom. in real life? That's why wrestling, you can get away with doing whatever, because it's all fake. Yep. Which is pretty much what life is, if you really think about it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Shit's real. Shit is real. real. AJ Hawk's on the other side. That's real. That's very real. have potentially introduced people to the people of Pittsburgh and I think a lot of people have potentially taken liking to more things out of Pittsburgh because of it and for that incredibly honored 
to be a part of. With that being said, when a video hits the internet like one did yesterday, uh -huh. and a Yinzer is showing off what a Yinzer is like at home, behind closed doors, when being caught on a candid camera, a lot of people immediately tweet us and go, oh, we thought you were lying, Donner, about what Pittsburgh's like. It's like, no, no, Yinzers are electric factory. Uh, Yinzers are hilarious. Yinzers are passionate. And this one particular Yinzer <laughs> took the world by storm yesterday. Go ahead and run this thing. A direct staff to nod. That's my call. Spread them on to a direct staff to nod. Nausea. Copper, copper fit knee braces. Works hard. They're going to run it right up the middle for zero yards. That's what they're going to do. Zero. Why do they bring in the fullbacks? Yeah, they don't need that. They need blocking. He's going to pass. Oh, he's not. What's he back here he's going to pass. No, he's not. He hands it off to that guy with no momentum. That's why. That's why. He did it. He did, he did a slant. Touchdown. Go! Oh, you better pick him up and put him down, motherfucker! <laughs> Slow motherfucker! <laughs> so mad. <laughs> why did he pick him up and put him down? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, he's a receiver. That's a touchdown. Stop! <laughs> That's bullshit, Dad. <laughs> Look at where the guy comes to catch him. How old is this guy? Who knows? 50? He could be 70, could be 30. See, that's what you do with the slant all the time. It's always <laughs> there. there. <laughs> all right, so this guy obviously captivated the internet. <laughs> Uh, epitome of Yinzer at E Yinzer is the Twitter account. And a lot of people immediately asked us, do you know who this guy is? And I think a lot of people are potentially saying that in jest. We do. <laughs> yeah. That guy's from Plum. Yeah, we, we, we have seen those videos before they went on the internet. He is a beauty. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any, you, you had to have heard. There's some massive names, politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. There, are you just, cause you're like a, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not gonna hold a grudge everybody? And do you know that you're probably never gonna win an MVP again? That's probably never gonna happen, right? I think that's, that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Legit though, like that. There's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you? How do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Because you're talking about everybody on Earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't. That's incredible mental toughness. If that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi identity in yourself, and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others, mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that i that i heard and so i'm human i mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh look i shared an opinion that is polarizing i get it and I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways, but so many people um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control and there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't, and, and, and hate you for things you said, or might not even understand what you said or know what you said. It might just, you know, a headline and that's fine. Um, I, I believe that people are entitled to their opinion. And even if it's an opinion that's unfavorable of me, but I'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward. And I'm excited about uh, getting back on the field as soon as possible. Hey, do you know uh, if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all? Like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? 
I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. Hope they show that on, on, on the it. network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show, hour two on this happy Veterans Day Thursday, November 11th, 2021. We'll begin right now. Yeah. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Shout out to you for watching at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Joining at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at Tone Diggs, the COVID cowboy and host of the show called Hammer Don, which is a gambling podcast that goes live 15 minutes after this show ends at youtube.com forward slash Hammer Don, and a man who has hammered Don on a successful gambling record for the last seven months. Nobody understands it alongside at Bubba Gumpino, myself, the boys in the back joining us in Ohio. All the way over there. Uh-huh. All the way over there. He's deep in the woods of Ohio, too. Yeah. <laughs> I got a chance to go to this man's house because he had a cult event to raise money for a good um, charity. Yep. To get there, you have to drive all the way into the woods. You find Wexler's house. Okay. You turn left. You go deeper into the woods, and you'll find 10,000 acres with a house that's bigger than you've ever seen in your entire life. And living inside of that is a beautiful family whose dad is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, who's also a Super Bowl champion, a college football national champion. And somehow, some way, that man that lives in the biggest house ever created, the nicest house ever created on 45,000 acres, yep. is also a Ryder Cup champion. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that Ohio man himself, A.J. Hawk. Yeah! I wish I did have some woods. You know that. You, you know I do not live out in the woods. It would be uh -huh. nice to have some land like you do. No, you're deep out there, though. Yeah. I remember thinking to myself, there ain't going to be no phone service out here. It makes a lot of sense why his internet connection is piss poor. Yeah. I don't know if that's how it works. There's plenty of houses around me and plenty of internet that's run to everywhere around this area. Oh, uh -huh. except for you, though, huh? Is that always your complaint? How does everybody else have a chance? I don't want to talk about Hey, I don't want I'm not I'm trying not to drink, jinx myself. I know it's. A, I don't think it's a real thing, but I, I haven't had many issues in the last, uh, okay. what, month or two. Have you seen what we've been through, dude? Our entire oh, system crashed, Tuesday. the power outage. I mean, we've been through it a lot. Maybe oh, they yeah. got off of your back and hopped over to here, and mm -hmm. I don't necessarily love that, but it is great to have you, AJ Hawk. Uh, we thought the big news of the day was going to be OBJ Watch, but then it came out. He might take some time. This is his first time being a free agent. This is his first time getting recruited by players, coaches, front office, star fans is what Ooh. I'm hearing. Star fans of teams are calling OBJ and saying, hey, you come on over to Kansas City Chiefs. Paul Rudd's like, I'll put you in a movie. Come Whoa. on. Hey, man. I'll put you in a movie. Jason Sudeikis, who's a Kansas City Chiefs fan, is like, hey, you want to be in Ted Lasso? We'll put you on a team next year. Put you in there. Ooh. Stone Street's like, hey, you know, hey. Come on over, you and I, we can high five on NFL Network 10 a.m. on Sundays together. Yeah, be sweet. These are things that are happening. This is OBJ's first time getting to experience this. It is being reported by Josina Anderson that he wants to take his time and enjoy it when we all assumed that he would want to get into a place so he could play this Sunday. Allegedly, there's a lot more that goes into it, and I can respect and appreciate that, but I 
thought, just like a lot of people, that, okay, this thing would be tied up quickly. Revenge tour for Odell Beckham Jr. Let's make a team better right now. Let's learn as much as we can about the offense going forward. Let's get inundated with a team so we can go on a run. That doesn't seem to be the case, though. AJ and I, I respect it, by the way. When the world wants you to do one thing and expects you to do one thing and you do the other, I got respect for it. I actually do. I have respect for the fact that, yeah, it seems like he's taking his time because this is a giant decision on what like his next path in the NFL is going to be. So, yeah, and a lot of it depends on who's throwing you the ball and the team around you if you are a receiver. So what about – but I would imagine Matt Damon and, and Affleck have been on the phones hard, right, trying to bring him over to the Patriots? Well, Matt Damon's no longer – Kid Rock in Nashville to the Titans, I'm sure, as No, well. Kid Rock's Kid a Lions, Lions, Lions fan. fan. Kid Rock's a Lions, Lions fan. Lions fan. Bill Burr Lions. called OBJ, so I think we have a much better chance now. Could you imagine if Bill Burr Bill actually – <laughs> Imagine he starts – That'd be awesome. <laughs> chuckling yeah. to Odell Beckham Jr. That would be amazing, and if that is happening, maybe – you know, who's famous Green Bay Packers Talking fan? Talking Wheezy's already been in touch with him. Oh. So is Anthony Davis. Green and yellow, green and yeah. yellow. Yeah. Oh, my. AD, that's a good get, too. Yeah, but you forgot about X Factor calling from the payphone outside the gas station. True. Well, X Factor, let's hope that his life is much better than it was. In a He's a Raiders fan now, too. Oh, he, he went over to the Raiders? Oh, that turncoat, son of a bitch. Well, that's kind of what all the Chiefs fans are saying. Right. I'm shocked to hear that. Yeah, Flopping X, like a, fish. a lot of the Chiefs fans are saying X Factor is more a fan of X Factor than he was of the Chiefs, actually. Wow. That's what Chiefs fans are saying. Chiefs fans are saying he's only using the Chiefs to be a fan of X Factor. Whoa. So then whenever he turn coded to the Raiders, I think that, that was a big day for Chiefs fandom saying we knew it all along. I'm not saying that's the case, and we will not have X Factor on the show to ask him, but that is what is happening. I'll tell you that's the case. I, I think we could tell from his slow walk holding his ribs for the local news station that this is more about X Factor than it is the Chiefs. Well, X Factor said, listen, I've turned it around the last four years. I haven't touched the cocaine. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> People him. saying I'm on meth. No, no. Colombian Bam Bam was my drug of choice four mm-hmm. years ago. I've been clean out here, and Hell his yeah. ribs were brutalized oh, yeah. <laughs> by Red Extreme. You know that one punch? How, there's going to be two punch, two thuds. Me hitting you and you hitting the floor. Oh. And in this particular case, X Factor didn't hit the floor. He hit the stairs and those yeah. stairs hit back and fractured every rib he had. That's right. The push. X Factor that X Factor had in that particular day is Although he wasn't on the booze or the bam bam, he was potentially on something else that made him not even realize that was the case until later when he was told to put some scrubs on and go on into that hospital so we can put, uh, you know, file a real lawsuit. In I'm here. also hearing that there's some video out there of X Factor slugging Mickey's grenades in the bathroom and then coming down and spinning this whole sob story. Oh, uh, duels? Hey, yeah, no, 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 no. no. Oh. Mickey's malt liquor, not yeah. not O'Doul's, not really? NA stuff. So, I mean, just something to. I don't know what Mickey's is. He told us he was sober, right? So he's got to be sober. Yeah. What, are, what, are, what are Mickey's grenades? What, he wouldn't lie. What age should I have been drinking this? 17? No. I was Mickey's drinking malt liquor? No. I was drinking Red Bull and beer. Do you know what a Mickey's is? Is it like is it like you get it in 40s, like malt liquor? Uh, King Cobra. No, they're grenades, they're dude. Grenades. They're little grenades. No, nah, dude, I did Mad Dog. I don't know. <laughs> yep. You could also get it in 40. Good. I've seen those, I feel like. Are they green? It, yes, oh, they yes, are. I yeah. have house these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, They yeah. taste like dog piss. Yeah, I've not been in a lot of uh, gatherings that had these. Not expensive at all, right? No, no. Yeah, yeah. I've been in a couple gatherings that have had these, but these always seem to be the last ones left. Yeah. yeah. You oh, buy yeah. them right now, five bucks for a six-pack. There that's you go. That's a good deal. deal. That's a good that's deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> and, and we're not saying that's a, that's a bad deal or anything. You do what you got to do or whatever the case 12 is. 12-ounce bottles. But he said he hadn't drank uh, booze or coke in four years. Yeah. yeah. He said that, and then the people are saying, are you sure? Because I saw him fucking sitting in a stall drinking Mickey's <laughs> grenades before he came out, what? smelling like booze. He also got in a car accident a couple days With after that. Pigs. Yeah, his rolled guinea off pigs, an overpass. His guinea pigs did survive, but imagine the guinea pig will survive. survive. I mean, I would imagine Pete is going to come take them, right? No, Whoa, right. X Factor says he's a good like dad. child protective services. Pete they is fighting a bigger yeah, war, AJ. Them. Don't you worry. Well, okay, what? God, okay. You're what did he say? Pete is going to be tied up for a bit. All right, here. okay. There's a lot of conversations potentially happening around, <laughs> you know, man's best friend not being treated as such. But I think what X Factor was potentially doing is he was pouring those Mickey's into the cheese head that he had painted red. Okay. And then he was doing cheese. Bonks. Ooh. That's how they caught him. And, and that's why sitting in the stall by himself, though, hiding? Yeah, and it smelled like booze because those things are just big sponges, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And the Mickeys were just going all the way through it. That's potentially what happened. But anyways, nonetheless, 
I don't know if X Factor is going to be the one that puts uh, the Chiefs over the hump for the Odell Beckham Jr. sweepstakes, yeah. but star fans are reaching out, and Odell Beckham Jr.'s enjoying it. I wonder if anybody's reaching out to OBS. You want to really win? Go to OBS. That'd be smart. That's not a bad idea. Who are they going to have in Seattle reach out to? Them? Well, Russ is already Russ, in DM, of course, but the but the big stars, uh, Macklemore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Macklemore. Like Sean Kemp, maybe Hasselbeck, Nirvana, Hasselbeck. Chris Pratt. That whole Nirvana. genre of music, yeah. That Brunch. whole genre of music. Brunch. Okay. Yep. The fish throwers. Oh. Oh, they're great. they're on TV every single time. There's yep. a chance for TV to be imagine on. Him, it's, yeah. Imagine Odell doing a deal, catching it one handed, the giant fish. Oh. Man, imagine him housing a walleye over his head. Oh. Wham! Give me that fish, dude. Yeah, they're probably pitching all those things. Okay. I wasn't sure. Mac Moore's like, get you on a feature. Yeah. Maybe make a song for him. Yeah, I don't do, I don't work with Ryan Lewis, who made all the incredible beats that I happen to uh, be a part of, but maybe you'd be this whole thing. It'd be great. Yeah, they broke up. What's no that? No way. Yeah, years That's ago. That's a bummer. What? Yeah, a bummer. yeah, it was years ago, I think. Did they win the album together? The yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. Got? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phew. But I think he wanted to make beats for other people, I think. Yeah, all right. It was an amicable split. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. okay. I think Macklemore kind of disappeared from the music scene for a while. Yeah, yeah. he did. Where he, is he now? He's, he's still, back with Is he vengeance back? Vengeance yeah, he, he has this new song. It's a banger. Yeah, and he's making videos for Odell Beckham Jr. to come to Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. Song? He's a content creator for the Seahawks. Yeah. Potentially. They need it. Who else? Who else is in the Seattle area, though? That first album, it was good. Oh, it was so good. Mm -hmm. Wait, isn't Bill Gates' house near Seattle? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's probably a pool party for uh, Xanadu. It's called Xanadu or whatever. His whole house, property. Him and Paul Allen, they're buddies. Coach JB just sent a text. I can't wait to hear this. Yeah, I got that. To me and you. (laughs) How's he doing? Kenny G's from Seattle. Uh, uh, I was just told by Coach JB, straight out of the streets of Compton, uh-huh. alongside AJ Hawk. Uh, he called us two white motherfuckers. Mickey's Bogmouth are the shit, straight ghetto, fabulous beer of choice my entire yep. life. Love you, Coach. <laughs> How does Pat not recognize the ghetto beer of choice, bro? Is what Coach JB just texted me. I bought, I've seen him at the bottom. Of, I've seen him at the bottom of coolers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have seen them being left around, but I'm, it's hard. Hey, you could use them for to play Edward Forty Hands, bro. If there's a yeah. fucking High Life or a Mad Dog oh. or anything like that, I'm going straight for it, JB. The High Life, nothing. Like I bought it. a I bought a case with like uh, what was that three years ago for a mm-hmm. uh, Mayweather or not Mayweather? Yeah, it was Mayweather and McGregor. And I drank uh, about a quarter of one, and then the rest of them sat in our fridge for eight months. Oh, like Mike Tomlin did. Well, they do. Con. Don't yeah. they sponsor either the UFC or a lot of they boxing? Used it's to. on the ring. They used to. That's what. Yeah. That's what. They got me. Mickey's malt liquor. I mean, it was every night it was awesome. <laughs> JB, I apologize for that. And you know what? Maybe let's move on from that, JB. Yeah, hey. thick whiskey. Yeah, yeah thick whiskey. Yeah, that's all. Huh. You can't drink that every night either. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you can. Yeah, you can. All right, I the mean, the new res- red label. Just responsibly. Like, no, you just can't a little do bit, the right? red label. No, 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 no. Just two fingers. Two, two fingers, fingers a night is healthy. Yeah. Joining us now is a man who I assume has never heard of a Mickey's and will probably not try slapdick whiskey ever, although he should. Yeah. Should. Man who potentially has the inside track on all the situations <laughs> happening in the NFL right now. The host of the weekly wrap up with Rap Sheet and Friends. Ladies and gentlemen from NFL.com and NFL Network, Ian Rappaport. Yeah! What's going on, dude? You like Mad Dogs or 40, 40s, or what did you do? <laughs> I used to uh, I used to drink a lot of Old English back in the day. Oh, oh you old dog. School. Old school. Yep. You, uh, now, I don't know how old uh, you are, but were you a Natty yeah. Light? Were you Natty Light era? Uh, when Natty Light was in its heyday, when we could pick up like 30 racks, I would, I would drink some. I've never been that particular about what I drink. I will drink old. Kind of whatever. See, that's um, the whitest thing said yeah. <laughs> yeah. on this Jeez, show right, today, sure. JB. I think that is it. Well, tonight we're yeah. gonna get fucked up. I mean, that you are the depiction of that, and I respect it. Me too. Uh, by the way, me too. Yeah. Uh, I would also say that on some nights, a lot of nights, I will have a little bit of bourbon uh, before bed, like a nice little oh. nightcap. Just How many pour fingers? in the glass. Salty dog. Uh, usually two. Just. You know, oh, no ice, okay. just pour in the glass, Tie a couple back of nice the sips, head right to bed. Yep. Whose fingers? Your fingers? Mangold's fingers? Urban's fingers? <laughs> Whose two fingers? <laughs> uh, you know, a, a nice healthy pour for a healthy man. 
Yeah, That's booze. exactly what you booze. are. Uh, yeah, I mean, geez. I didn't know you were a, <laughs> a drunk. Oh, you. Booze bag. All the inside information you have with the stresses of always having to be on your phone, I could see how maybe a nice nightcap with some bourbon could help you out. God, I, see, I, this man gets me. I do not. <laughs> done it, but I can see how that situation could unfold. Uh, we are always thankful for you joining us. Obviously, we assume the big news would be OBJ and how that's going. We will get to that. We will definitely get to that because there's been a lot of reports. Now it sounds like he's going to be taking his time. But let's talk about what's happening right now. With you, you broke with the salary and everything. Cam Newton going back to Carolina. He's the starter, what, starting next week? I'd assume he's the starter starting next week. And then are, is this a potential long-term player? They both know this is just for this year. Uh, all right, right, let's. we'll start with when he's going to play. So it's Thursday now. They practiced already. He'll be able, because he's unvaccinated, he's able to practice right, or because he's vaccinated, excuse me. Yeah, he's vaccinated, he'll almost mess that up. Yeah. Geez. He'll be able to practice right away. Um, so he'll probably be able to play next week. They're giving him a lot of money. It's $10 million, not like $10 million prorated, like actual $10 million, $4.5 million guaranteed. That is starter money. He is going to be the starter uh, probably next week. And the fact that this is happening is unbelievable because it didn't end great. He was very unhappy, took to his social media accounts and was frustrated that the team said they requested, you know, they gave him permission to seek a trade when he didn't want to seek a trade. He wanted to remain in Carolina. Um, and everyone today, I mean, the owner, the GM, uh, everyone got together today and kind of mended fences, put the past behind them and are moving forward with the franchise guy that they discarded. I mean, I don't know what it's going to become, but he, he's going to be the starter for the rest of the season, I would say. And you said there was an uncomfortable conversation. We thought that literally as we heard the news, because we're trying to think back, Ron Rivera in Tepper had a good exit. That was a good exit. It was early. Yeah. It was allegedly understood like, hey, we, we uh, Ron Rivera appreciated them being up front with him. And I think Tepper said, hey, we're moving on. You're not going to be the future. You can get out now. Yeah. And that was, but then we remember the camp situation with training camp happening and answering questions, cutting them late, and then the 86 days. So I... Who do you think knew that that was going to have to take place? Do you think it was Tepper directly that was like, we are going to have to handle this, uh, you know, face-to-face? -face, or was that Cam saying, if you guys want me, and they reach out to him? Like, who do you think uh, offered up first, do you think, there? Well, I, I would say from the Panthers organization, they knew it didn't end well with Cam. I mean, how could you not? And they have some, you know, there's some, and this has sort of been pointed out on social media today. Stephen Drummond, who's an executive with the Carolina Panthers, was the, basically head PR slash communications guy, had a very close relationship with Cam. He certainly understood the dynamics and how frustrated Cam was and the necessariness of this conversation. Tepper knew it. Um, it was, this was never going it, it was, this was never going to be like, you call the agent, Hey, is Cam interested? Okay. We'll give him 10 million bucks. Let's sign. This was always going to be a, let's get past everything we went through and then see if we can all get on the same page. You know, Credit to them for doing it because I'm sure these conversations were not easy. And knowing Cam Newton, I'm sure he was extremely honest to them. So they probably had to listen to some of it. Um, and they all came together and now he's their quarterback. It really is honestly incredible. Quickly? Is this quick, you think? Uh, I would say next week he's probably. No, no, no. Play. This whole situation. Bring Cam in. Bring Cam in, have the conversation. He's now the starter. Here you go. Here's the money. How quickly do you think that entire thing took place? Is this a couple uh, weeks in the making, a couple days, a couple hours? No, no, no. A Cu couple days because yeah, we found Donald's out. Because Donald's Right. Dar yeah, Donald's going IR. So we found out Tuesday Donald that Donald's injury was <laughs> severe enough. Well, that was the interesting shoulder thing play. is like he has a crack in his shoulder. So though Donald, oh, we watched. Hey, fuck off for that, by the way. We all had to Google what the hell that was. Way to go. We get it. You wear uh, ties on TV. I was texting Garofo and Pelissero the injury when I heard, heard it happen, and I typed spatula first, and then they're making jokes, and I didn't understand because it looks they look words look very similar. I'm just glad I didn't tweet spatula when I no, tweeted yeah, it. Yeah, okay, we are too. Um, His shoulder would have been fine. Huh? Shoulder would have been fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, this. So I found out yesterday. I kind of heard whispers. Shouldn't say found. Out. I heard whispers yesterday of them setting up a cam meeting. I just couldn't. I couldn't get it, and it was very quiet. So basically yesterday morning they started the planning. Today they have the meeting. This afternoon they signed. I mean, that is really, really quick for like a fence-mending dramatic turn in a relationship. And that's why the $10 million probably. Go ahead, AJ. 
Yeah, you know, are you surprised at how much they paid him for what is essentially half of a season? And did he have any other? Was there any offers like, what kind of leverage did Cam have from anyone else? His leverage was not playing, and his leverage was that he was going to not be the quarterback for them. Like, you know, the market is what the market is. So the market for Cam was like, you have to pay him enough to get him to join your organization because you need him as the quarterback. So that was his leverage. Like, finally, he waited, 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 and he found a team that needed him more than he needed them, and they are paying him very, very real money. Yeah, and $10 million is potentially because of the conversation that they had where he kind of fucked me. You know, you guys kept me around for too long. You let Ron Rivera go early. You kept me around so long, kind of dragged me along, cut me when teams were already being made. You kind of screwed me out of things. Tapper, we realize that. We're sorry. We're trying to make changes. We're trying to do this whole thing we didn't know. Here's an extra $10 million, uh, and can you please come back? And not only just come back, the entire city of Charlotte is excited about this. I was very lucky to play against Cam Newton in a game in Carolina on primetime when he was rolling. That place, he was the maestro of the entire city. If they have any success and get going again, it is going to be alive down there. And that's what Tepper wants, oh, yeah. I think, as the new owner. They now have He's Back on the stadium jumbotron that downtown. Oh, cool. Yeah, so Damn. it's like they are... I mean, this city is ready for Cam to come back. I think everybody's happy they mended fences. Now, let's go to Odell Beckham Jr. Allegedly, there was four teams he was going in on, then five, then a mystery team, six. Then Josina Anderson says this is the first time in free agency. He's enjoying the process. This is a massive decision. Coaches, players, front office, star fans are reaching out to him to recruit him. Where are we in the Odell Beckham Jr. watching in as of this moment right now on November 11th? We are uh, in a holding pattern. We are taking a little break uh, because yesterday, so I kind of thought yesterday he would sign. There was interest. In, I think he has at least five offers. It's not all great offers. Some offers like the Packers are the minimum, but offers. I thought he would sign yesterday. When he doesn't sign yesterday, then it's like, okay, well, he's not playing this week anyway. Why would you sign before Sunday? Like, what if one of those teams, God forbid, you never wish an injury, but one of those teams has an injury and they say we have to have odell so we are now going to pay him more than we wanted mm. because we just have to have him he he should wait like this actually may if you're not going to sign wednesday then you might as well sign next monday and give teams the opportunity to have something happen um i don't know where he goes i know that the teams as of right now the teams basically made offers and that was it there's not it's not like one upsmanship. It's not like we'll increase this offer. We'll give you this. It's basically just made offers. He considers. Now he's in a holding pattern, and we'll see what happens probably after the game. Okay, I'm excited to see where it goes. Do you think he's leaning anywhere? And quarterback is the only thing that matters. Um, it's tough because I would of course say yes, except the Saints are still in the mix, and they have Trevor Simeon. And with all due respect to Trevor Simeon, oh, he's not. Like he's not Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Although I actually thought he played well last week. But anyway, um, no, he is Mahomes. considering the Saints and they have Simeon. Rogers, what the fuck is this guy? What it's is Mac, your deal? Mac Jones. Not Mac yeah, Jones. What? Yeah. I mean, Mac <laughs> Jones is a guy. Mac Bill Jones. Belichick. Is Bill Belichick actually in this? Is this actually happening, all these reports we're hearing, that Bill Belichick wants Odell Beckham Jr. on his team? Yes, that is true. Now, uh, I wouldn't say. Oh, uh, no. Bill can recruit. I, I, I Bill ain't say, throwing him the fucking football. That's no, not true. Is he going to change the offense for the guy? Why would he not just go to Green Bay have Aaron throw him the ball, get the ball, it all works out for How much does money matter too to him, boring. Ian? You said the Packers offered minimum. Like, what's the range that he's getting offered, do you think? Uh, it's it's not a lot. I mean, it's it's in, it's basically from minimum to, like, you know, he can earn more, like, $4 million or maybe, I don't know, maybe, say 4 maybe $5 million, but it's not it's not hard money. Like, Cam Newton got $4.5 million fully guaranteed. He is getting that money no matter what. It's not like that. For Odell, he's getting four point two five million, right, from the Browns, regardless. Yeah, he yeah he's got that already. And now, I remember he gave up three million just to be free. So I feel like more important for him is to get in an offense he likes, get in a team he likes, you know, be successful, go to the playoffs maybe, which would be nice, but have a place where he can play the next two or three years. Like I think he oh, wants a home okay. more oh. than like. Okay. Catch lightning in a bottle, mm. make the playoffs. That's what it feels like. Oh, that's a big news there, by the way. Thank you for that. Go ahead, AJ. I'm sorry, buddy. No, I think it 
Ian brings up a great point. Yeah, there's no reason for him to sign before Sunday. Like mm -hmm. Sunday night, Monday morning, that's when they'll probably get something done, right? Because he his price tag could go way up if um, one of these teams really needs him. A multi-year deal, though. I didn't know that was the case. I don't think no. anybody. I don't no, no, think no, it, no, no. It wouldn't be a multi-year deal. It would be he's. It would be a one-year deal now. But then let's say like, let's say he signs in New Orleans or so, I don't know. Let's or let's say the Chiefs. They're a better example. Let's say he signs with the Chiefs because I think they're a real possibility. He signs it one year. He kills it for the rest of the, you know, kills it for the rest of the year. He wants some. that's a place he would want to stay there, and then he would re up for two or three more years after that. Okay, I got it. Go ahead, Tom. Ian, any chance uh, Nick Ch Chubb ends up playing for the Browns on Sunday? Just I like would say not a very good chance. Okay, because now he could be cleared theoretically. Like he could be cleared Saturday. He could be cleared Sunday. The timing potentially could work out. I don't know that there's a case. Like I've tried to look at it, but it's tough to figure out all the things. But I don't know that there's a case where a player is tested positive, let's say, on Tuesday and then played Sunday because they don't work out. You know, a lot of times you don't feel great after COVID. So, like, to play – like, Chandler Jones – remember when Chandler Jones missed a game for Arizona and then was eligible to come back the next game and didn't play because he hadn't worked out and that would have just put him in a bad situation. I think that's probably more likely for Chubb. So I doubt that we see him on Sunday. Rap sheet yesterday, the Packers activated Bakhtiari. What are the odds that he plays on Sunday? Have you heard anything about that? And then what about some of these other guys like Zadarius Smith and Jair Alexander, who they sought the, uh, out of practice yesterday? Like when, when can we expect them maybe to come back? Uh, all right, we'll start with Bakhtiari. He was activated yesterday, but that was more procedural because that's like when his window would have closed. So basically they activated him, and they, he still may not end up playing this week. I think there's a chance but like next week i think he will definitely play this week there's a little bit of a chance you just you just want to make sh you know that's your guy like he's one of the best in football you, he better be fully healthy and, and not at risk when he plays jair alexander i don't get the sense he's going to play soon but it sounds like non-surgical option is probably more likely now like he's been getting better in rehab so i think there's a chance you'll see him before the end of the season which would be Good. I mean, that would be helpful. And then, oh, Zadarius Smith, he had surgery. My guess is you see him late December and then for the playoffs. Uh, rap sheet, Benny Albright said that there's a chance <laughs> that there will be an 18-game season with also 36 teams. I believe it's Toronto, London, San Antonio, and St. what's Louis. Louis. St. St. Louis, thank you. Uh, oh, St. Louis. What yeah. are the odds that that's happening here, huh? Hey, and also, also, thank you for the alley Allow me to oop. Didn't I say this to you immediately upon the 17-game season yes. being okayed? I said, okay, when are we doing 18? And he, well, it doesn't seem like we are anywhere near. <laughs> that is not, sure not potentially <laughs> Definitely not not having. <laughs> that is, this was obviously a dog fight to get 17. Is that get, what I sound like? No, no, not no, no. I'm not an impressionist, but you get what I'm saying. That is basically what you said. And now here we are staring down an 18-game regular season because the inevitability of it upon the 17th game and then a $110 billion deal happening, and then the potential for, if you add another bye week and another game, two more weeks onto that, that's oh another God. potential $30 billion being added to deals. This is inevitable, isn't it? And Tom Brady's not happy. Uh -uh. I'd assume oh, a no. lot of players aren't going to be happy, but we are staring down this inevitability, and if they were to expand, would it be four teams? That seems like a lot. That seems like a big-time jump. I haven't heard anything about expansion. Now, the thought of me possibly going to all sorts of extra weird places that I've never been to see games would be great. That's one of the fun things about covering college football is every year you got to go to new cool stadiums. Um, I don't see it happening anytime soon. And I don't, you know, could they get to 18 games eventually? Possibly. There's so much money out there and people like money. So that would make sense. What? I just, I will stick. Uh, it's true. I will stick to what I said before, which is I don't see it happening anytime soon. I think the player association will fight it until the money gets so overwhelming that everyone has no choice but to say, "All right, just give me all the money." You're doubling down. Yeah. If Stick it to what I said. If it comes out that you're misleading me, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. Dude. That's bullshit. Especially because you're yeah. you're doubling down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any That's other, how serious I am. Any other stories we should know about, or any other news you're about to break in this uh, particular Thursday? Um, I would say nothing. I'm about to break the. The Odell thing we talked about, the Arizona Cardinals situation is interesting because they're obviously a great team. 
no practice for Kyler, no practice for DeAndre Hopkins. Rondell Moore didn't practice. Like, that's a really, really good team so. going into a precarious situation. You know, like, I just... How about Tampa? How about Tampa? A, B, Gronk, and then allegedly Godwin, potentially? What's that all about? I thought coming out of a bye week, they'd be healthier. It sounds yeah. like that's not the case. I heard I heard Godwin is okay, not a major injury. But I will say, I did not like the Gronk injury has taken longer, and then the A, B injury has taken longer. Um, it sounds like Gronk's probably down at least this week, and it sounds like AB's. I mean, he's still in a boot, so he's down a little bit too. You know, this is a team. Uh, let's just be real. Like the only thing that matters for the Bucks is the playoffs. Like they're going to get there. Should just get healthy by there. But this is not uh, unexpectedly not great health situation for some of their skill guys. Okay, and last question here: um, Kyle Long, All Pro and Pro Bowl offensive guard in the NFL's history, was retired, then came out of retirement, traveled to the Raiders, which his family has a deep history with. He gets out of that building, thankfully in his eyes probably at this point with how everything has gone, and he ends up in the Kansas City Chiefs building. He gets signed. We're all excited as massive Kyle Long fans. He gets injured. Allegedly, he is back at practice today. After he got injured, we said to you, when is Kyle Long coming back? And you said, so I guess this means Kyle Long's going to make the team? <laughs> you remember you said that? You remember? I do. He did make yep. the team. He's Kyle fucking Long, Ian Rappaport. And now he's practicing again. What does that mean for the Chiefs who potentially could use maybe a little bit of a shakeup or a spark in that offense to get going again? Is he the guy? I love Kyle Long. Oh, I have sure. always been a big Kyle Long fan. Um, we shared a great bro hug when we ran into each other at a Super Bowl party one year. Um, that was a memorable moment, a special moment that I will not forget. Um, it ain't ever say, happening again. I'll tell you that. I don't no, think it's ever it happening is. again. He nah. still loves, no, I, it definitely will. When we see each other, I will guarantee there will be a bro hug. Um, I will guarantee it. After you Even said, in the age of COVID. Well, don't be irresponsible. Don't, don't. Don't, don't be irresponsible. Yeah. But... I think Kyle Long knows that you said Kyle Long should go play in the XFL. Yeah. yeah. You know what you said? Yeah, I remember you Lies. said that. Huh? Lies. Is he going to play, uh, though? Is he back? Is he going to start for them, you think? What do you uh, think it's going to be timetable-wise? Usually, uh, and I don't know specifically his situation, but usually guys return to practice, wait a week, and then end up playing the next week. So hopefully he'll end up playing next week. You're right, though. I mean, he, the offensive line's been okay. Um Certainly, they could use one of the greatest guards to ever play oh, in the now, NFL. Now, so, yeah, yeah. Well said. Um, I would say that's a you know would be a big time upgrade for the Chiefs if he gets healthy. Enough. And Clyde edwards alaire as well. Uh, he could play the, I, I, that. I need to. We got to see how he is in practice this week. I would say he has at least a chance to play this week. All right, we appreciate you. I know you're probably a pretty busy man because tonight's big matchup, Lamar Jackson travels back home to South Florida to take on the beaten Don Dolphins team. Which Maybe Jac- Jacoby Brissett? Maybe Tua? We'll see. Is it? I thought it was definitely Jacoby. It's not definitely? Uh, I would say maybe, but two is going to work out pregame and see functionally just like how well he could. I would say more likely Jacoby, but we'll see how Tua works out. Quick question. Tua was too injured to start last week, but he wasn't injured enough to not have to go in. If all hell breaks loose, what does that even mean? Uh, he couldn't make all the throws. He could make some throws with pain. So, And they also didn't have another quarterback on the roster. Um, so... He could have been the backup and dinked and dunked, but like wasn't the best option as a starter because he couldn't make all the throws. So they don't think Tua at 60% or 70% is better than Jacoby Brissett, which is yet another indication that they're not in on Tua Tonga-Valoa. Yeah. That's a shame, Dolphins. Get it right, but not tonight. Lamar Jackson's about to run wild in South Florida. We can't thank you enough, Ian. You're the absolute best every single week. All right, thanks, guys. Always kind of, I guess, fun. Yeah, always fun. Well, Jeez. Oh, Don't be an asshole. Yeah. Oh, my God. Come on. Go get a Mickey's, Ian. You deserve it. Yeah, go get yourself a Mickey's before you get on TV. Are you going on TV right now? Uh, I will be going on TV in 25 minutes. Okay, so what, what do you I got to do? do is just straighten it up. 
your sleeves back up, back oh, down. Yeah, oh, yeah, because you roll up your sleeves when you come on the internet. Undo the tie a little bit. Let me kick back, relax with the boys here, <laughs> say some dumb stuff, but also some very good stuff. And then, boom, back on TV. Let me tighten up and do my notes. Yeah, and then I got a little makeup thing here. I just kind of freshen oh, up. Oh, look at you. Dude, you're you know, Dean Kane, bro. Shit. This guy's <laughs> Dean Kane. Yep. Wow. <laughs> freshen it up. Why is he Dean Kane? Huh? I love Why is he Dean Kane? It's not. Don't you remember that? The, I know he's Superman. Superman. He does Hallmark show. movies yeah. and Fox News. But. <laughs> That's the name of Superman, right? Superman goes into the phone yeah. booth. Yeah. yeah. And then he changes and boom, on the other Clark side. Kent. Clark Kent. That's Clark Kent, but yeah, Bingo. Superman. It's Dean Kane. Dean Kane. Kane. Got it. Yeah, Dean Ripley's Kane. believe it or not, Bingo. it is yeah. not Dean Kane. I never guessed that. You get it. You go in the phone booth, you turn on TV. Ian Rapport's a completely different man. We appreciate you. Host of the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends, us being the friends, him being Rap Sheet, Ian Rapport. Thank yeah. you. He comes on here and says some really good stuff. Yeah, he yeah. does. And then sometimes he comes on here and says stuff. He goes, hey, what, are you, what, what are you doing? What's that about? He said Kyle Long's going to make the team, I guess. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, that was, that was a bit alarming when he said that. Yeah, I, I almost couldn't talk to him again. Usually guys, like, didn't Kyle Long take like five free agent visits? Uh, yeah, and I think everybody... Usually when you do that, you're not like a guy that's not going to make the squad. And the only sign that we had of Kyle Long coming back was when he told us... Yeah, I kind of started hating football. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I kind of fell out of love with it. I, I felt jaded. I didn't like the whole process, which in turn, you know, probably cuts back the amount of effort you're putting in, which leads to potential injuries and maybe not your best play. And then he leaves the game for a bit. I think he kind of isolates, get away. He starts learning how to play golf. And then I think he starts watching the game again. He's like, oh, there is parts that I love and miss about this. Gets himself in a better shape he's ever been in. And boom, like a bone break or something mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, he's like. I think everybody was like, uh, Hey, Kyle, if you're back to enjoying football again, we would like you on our team. Not Ian Rapport, though. He's like, hey, maybe go back down to USFL. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, see that no, no chance. What are you even talking about? They there? do have some good uh, rookies playing online, but, I mean, OBJ possibly going to one place and staying there for two to three years And now. it sounded like yeah. he was really pushing Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. he really was. Big time. Yeah. Chiefs have, have it an does, example. Though. That's okay. interesting what Ian said. I guess I, I should have thought of that before, but why would he sign until he watches all the games Sunday and you see if a team is really in need? Then he's going to watch how they play. You know, let me watch the film of this team. Oh, Patrick Mahomes is missing guys by 15 yards all of a sudden. Maybe I can be the guy to change things. I can change ah. yep. You had me over here thinking about what we could potentially do. And then he'll watch the Packers game, and he's like, seems like that guy coming with no practice, fresh out of COVID, and a potential all-out assault of his entire life for the last five. He doesn't seem to fucking miss any throws. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe that would be fun. And then he sees Bill Belichick and Mac Jones, and he's like... Imagine if they had a weapon they could throw to, opening up there for Hunter Henry and the run game and everything going on inside. That's what he's doing this weekend. Yeah. Well, it would be awesome. He better be. I assume he's filming that. Oh, has to I be. assume he'll be filming that. And we'll see the content of that at some point. Go ahead, Tone. Also, if he it wants to go beyond this year and he looks at it, though, the Packers have the least amount of cap room going into next year and the year after that. How do you guys do that all the time? And, he doesn't and know, you don't know where Devontae and Aaron are going to be. Yeah. Are gonna be. Well, that's what I said. If this is if that really is how he feels and this is like a multi-year thing potentially, then there's no chance he's going to the Packers. In the past, and Ian said, though, they're only offering league minimum right now on top of what he's getting from Cleveland. Yeah, and yeah. then there was mixed reports, right? Because Chuck Pagano yesterday said, this ain't about money. He's already getting paid. He's mm -hmm. already getting that whole it thing. can be, though. It well, that's be. what everybody afterwards said, that the narrative, and I think it was a direct response to Chuck saying that on this show, maybe, or, or other people were potentially saying it and expecting him just to take any deal, like us, because he's getting 4.25. But I think we completely misunderstood the entire situation. That's what I'm finding out here. I thought he was going to get... You know, release and then potentially picked up. We waited. And then it becomes free agent. All he's going to do, we waited. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's a pretty big decision here yeah. in mm -hmm. your entire life. He's not just a rental now, too, because that's what we were kind of thinking. And, and, and can't have what happened in Cleveland or New York happen nope. Yeah, no chance. Can't can't have it again. Won't do it. Just like that's why New Orleans is still in play, I feel like. Even if this year, like if it is a multi-year thing and he hopes to stay around, I'm sure he's like, well, hey, next year the quarterback situation should be more settled than it is now. Yeah, Drew Brees will understand he doesn't like football yeah. or TV football and Can't he'll come back. back and play. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a break. Pats, it's a lose-lose, though. I don't think – I think they're kind of out now because they lose to the Browns. Oh, I'm not going to that team. They just lost to the team that I hate. They beat the Browns. I'm not going to that team. They don't need me. Don't be self-handicapping right now. I'm not self-handicapping. That's what you're doing. If I was self-handicapping, I'd say, well, you know, all of our free agents are signed for the next two to three years. We don't have any money for Odell, even though the salary cap's fake and it's going up next year anyways.
that is one particular avenue of self handicapping that you, you could do. Yeah. Another one would be, well, if he is judging this weekend, we got no shot because it's a lose lose with the way they do it. That would be another way that you yeah. just did. The self handicapping highway is a long one and wide one. Yeah, it's the autobahn. Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. No speed limit. Uh huh. A lot of lanes. As fast as you want. No roundabouts. Nope. Hey, I, I didn't know it was your birthday today. Happy birthday, dude. Happy birthday. Oh, no, it's is not it? my birthday. Oh. Different guy on the internet. Oh. oh Tight. Jeez. Oh, I got to know this. I love when people do this. Nah, <laughs> Incoming. Nah. Come on. <laughs> Tony. Wait an hour and 20, at least. <laughs> you know, when I was young, I thought it was weird that my birthday was the same as Veterans Day sometimes. <laughs> but this year feels different. Like, that's going to be a thing, probably. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's that. Not this person. Not whoever this person. I'm just saying in general. Like how people want to tell people that, hey, it's my birthday. No one said anything to me yet. My birthday is on Christmas, so they always joke around that I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always joke around and say, you're getting fucked out of birthday gifts. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Big time. Oh, Diggs, I already just saw him pop up. Wait till you see the video. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I thought we were waiting now. Oh, Tony. Yeah, I thought we were waiting until the end of the I show. I thought you so told I, him not to look at it. No, no, I clearly looked at the Kobe Cowboy and said, take the saddle off the horse. Yeah. Do not run that thing over to Ohio right now. Put Tony in the penalty box. All right, take it out of the group text. <laughs> We're back in four minutes. That's the new thing. You send something what? into the group text that have a little have a little respect for the group text. Listen, Goodbye. what, I, what I just did isn't the most egregious thing that happened in this office today. What do you mean? What was? Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> What was? Mm. This water's got taste like it's got a hint of something in it. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> Company card was used to make some purchases that nobody knew what was. And then all of a sudden, an entire package showed up directly titled what the <laughs> delivery was. <laughs> and it had a name on it. But now the person with the name on the package said, I'm being set up right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a massive setup. Company card, because CFO fills on the back end. So anything that goes in or goes out of the company, you know, he gets an alert. As do I. I don't look at all of them. He does. He looks at all of them. A big one popped up, and we thought somebody potentially stole our card. Like, pretty excited, actually, to kind of do the whole thing. Yeah. Ask all these questions. Nobody knows what either of the things that were purchased oh, yeah. Nobody has a clue who it is. And then this is like a day, day-long investigation almost within the office. It's kind of a thing. And then this morning, right before we come in the studio, <laughs> the thing the water's coming. just show up. A big, like, hundreds of dollars worth of them show up at the office. And then we're, now we're waiting on the other thing to show up. And they have one person's name on them. And it's like, do we blame that person? I, I will I, say this. I am the person's name's on there. Yes, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to out yeah. Zito. I, wanna... I don't like water. I drink it once a month. You do, that is true. This, you have said that many times. The hell is this? I yeah. buy one. Oh, you had to get a hint of Wait, bacon. Somebody yeah. buys one. Yeah. You know, that shit is flavored <laughs> water, dude. Yeah. Oh, listen, oh, Mitt. Oh, 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 flavored oh, water. I yeah, I'll drink water. a Gatorade if hey, I have to. Mitt was getting accused, I yeah. think, by a lot because he might have been. Wait, someone bought a pallet of, pla of flavored water? What yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot uh, of water. Mitt actually buried Bruce yeah. when Bruce wasn't here. Bruce always buying stupid shit all the time. Pointing the finger right at Mitt's pointing a lot of fingers, by the way. That's just so were you? Just know that our I was office. Trying to figure it out. Just know that our yeah. So so were they. Yeah. But just want to know that our office has the same dumb shit that happens in it. Probably is everywhere else. This particular one just has a company card in a uh, a seeing eye dog back in Plumboro, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Sniff something. Uh, what, what the hell is going Does on? Does everybody here? have access to that card? Uh, well, kind of because there was something that happened in the office. A gift was potentially given from the office. Hell yeah. To everybody. Oh, yeah. So in doing so. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Oh, you guys have earned it. You have earned it. But with that being said, we'll never do it again. Because <laughs> the, the way to get that to be done, I mean, numbers had to get out there. And then that means somebody may potentially uh, cross streams when they made a purchase for something else and it ended up being here. It's dangerous. It's, it's a dangerous. big purchase, by the way. That's big. Yeah, it was big. It, it yeah. was alarmingly big large. Big water, not cheap. <laughs> All right, we're back in four minutes. <laughs> we'll like figure it out water. during the break. We'll let you guys know what happens on the other side. It took us 24 hours to figure out the first step, but I think evidence is about to start rolling in literally into the office yeah. Yeah. with names on them, <laughs> even though that person feels like they've been set up. We'll see you in four minutes with some phone calls on a 5 hour energy phone line. one 4 McAfee. We'll actually go to it this time.
Last hour said we're going to. Cam Newton news came. Yeah. We had to do that. We'll actually go on the other side of this break. Wrap up hour two. Hour three sees Sham Sharania. Ooh. More conversation and hopefully breaking news on what Odell Beckham Jr. is doing. Probably not, though. See you then. Let me get the, the Kornacki map out. <laughs> Don't you worry about that, though, because the people... I mean, here, even, we can even do this. This particular shade here, a lot of this one, right here on this side, it's going to separate. Boop, let's move it over here. They're coming out. That son of a bitch! <laughs> right, selfish prick asshole! And then this side here, okay, and not all, not all, but either side, not here. They're on this side. This guy, he's a hero! <laughs> this guy's our hero! This is the MVP of the NFL, telling the NFL, ah, Fuck you and telling society and everybody, I ain't doing it because I have an allergy to two out of the three. The third I'm not comfortable with. I just hold, hey, this guy's our guy. This guy's our guy. But it's more complicated than that because there are some in both sides that are also against what the most of the party is. So then you got this, you got conflicting wars <laughs> going on. Okay? That's what you have. You have some people that are on the left side. Well, so do I do the TV or mine? I don't know. I don't think it matters uh, in yeah. this case. All right, <laughs> uh, you do the uh, you do the left side, and you think to yourself, "Oh, it's left versus right." But then, if you're a human in our society and you actually pay attention at all or have friends all across the spectrum, that is not the case. This is a torn, split thing. And Aaron Rodgers was the guy here that everybody came out to, and I'm so thankful. He came on and talked, but I don't know if it's going to change anybody. Yeah, yeah. This uh -uh. is still going down, and he's right here. He is right fucking here, and both of them. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Pow, pow, pow. We're back. With every answer he gave, it was like that, I guess, on the internet as I was scrolling through the last eight minutes. AJ. Welcome back to the Pat Max. Oh, Unreal. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Foxy's added some new tools to the arsenal. Hell yeah. <laughs> A couple transitions. Some new shots to the bag. Wow. I assume we've had access to these for a long time. I've known about them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Why not today? I guess. I mean, you just found out about them, so let's go. Can we hit one more of those? Yeah, here we or... go. We'll go to the boys. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Hey, Foxy! Hey, Foxy! Hey, Foxy! <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Those are awesome. Awesome! Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, one more. Hit one more. Yeah, Do we have yeah, one? Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Ah! Yeah, new one. Whoa! Whoa! That one doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, no. Fox, is there no, a dissolve no. one? See, this is where pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Oh, we got yeah, too right. greedy. That's right. We had a good right. run on three or four transitions. We tried to reach into five or six, and mm -hmm. we just didn't have them in the pack. <laughs> Bucket ran dry. Pack. Keep working over there. Yeah, the well ran dry. That is a 100% case. Yeah. Some more water. Yeah, we need to call them in maybe next week. We'll find some new ones in there. But we appreciate you for joining us. It is this show, by the way, that we'll be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The show that you just watched right there. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. That's a lot of my name. I am the guy that is in the things I just said. Oh, yeah. The man next to me on my left, your right on the screen, is Ohio Stu J.J. Hawk. Klein. Why are you so mean to A.J. Hawk? I'm A.J., why do you think he is so mean to you, you think? Is it because it's your birthday? Uh, unfortunately, it's not my birthday today. My birthday is January 6th. I will be sure to let you know. 
Oh, oh January wow. 6th, something oh, else happened wow. on that day. You're very full of shit. shit. You are You're so shit. full of shit. Oh, well, you well. are such a toxic human. You're you so are full of shit. You are the you biggest sack of shit of all right, time. Listen, are you done? Let me tell you when you guys when, are you guys it's done. It's your fucking problem. What dude? is your deal? You think I'm joking. Do you think my birthday is not January 6th? It actually you think is I made birthday. that as a joke? I would never joke about yes. this. Uh, happy yeah. birthday. We missed a few. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. But I mean, I guess I I don't know. You you guys legit thought I just made it up. Like, like that's not my birthday. Well, you do have a trend of just mentioning things that are incredibly toxic yeah. and just dropping them and then dropping them out. It'd be fantastic if you just picked a random date and just said it. Right. Just so happened to be that particular one. Remember, remember? No. The 5th of the November. 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 Because whenever I said uh, November 11th, I thought to myself, like, oh, that reminds me of the uh, V for Vendetta yeah. for right. November, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's something, though, in real life, the 5th of November. Yeah, something yeah. happened. It's actually my brother's birthday. It's Mikey what? Dig's birthday. And it turns Happy out my birthday mom's birthday is actually January 6th, so it's, it's all uh, a couple What's things. going my on? God. Hey. Happy Wait, who's, who else is January 6th? My mom. It's his mom. Happy Diane. birthday, Mrs. Diggs. Hey, 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 hey happy birthday, Diggs. Diane. Happy birthday. Get the uniform ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's Coach Diggs to Diane whenever he found out he was in, uh, w invited to a scramble golf tournament. Yep. Hey, we need a fourth. You in? Turns right to Diggs' mom. Diane, get the uniform ready. <laughs> this is out of the bar. There's nothing she could have done at that moment. No. It was just, hey, tomorrow we need the high and tights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, we need the polo as clean as possible. We need the gabagoo tonight <laughs> to be so damn great. And I will make sure that the hair looks fantastic, the pipes are chiseled, and when I swing that driver, they're going to hear the <laughs> gabagoo from every single tee box. That's what that one meant. Yep. The Diggs family is legendary. Oh, Just yeah. would like to let everybody know that, that uniform was sick too. Sick. Oh yeah. Coors Light, I think he was. Yeah, yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was Coors yeah. Light uniform he had on. Bike shorts still rocking. Thought he was Pat Mahomes playing in fucking Tahoe. Dude. <laughs> I believe I'm an owner of that shirt right now. Oh, you stole his uniform? No, we asked him for the pub wall. <laughs> oh, he signed it. Oh, you yeah. put it up in the rafters. Yeah. 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 Oh, I have yeah. it in a box right now. Well, With his name on it. <laughs> Hanging in the rafters, coach. <laughs> yep. Hanging in the rafters. He always puts on a good performance on that. Course. What does he coach? Everything. Awesome. Life, dude. Life, dude, yeah. yeah. But was he like your guys' coach growing up? Is that why he you was, call him coach? He was never mine. Uh, he coached the Little League football after I was already through it. Didn't even have a kid on the team. Just decided he wanted to Did coach. Did he not want to coach you? Probably. Nah, yeah, he probably cared too much. Yeah. You know? It is hard. Sometimes you're a lot harder on your own kids, or usually that's the one. How's your family? Well, it digs. <laughs> yeah. Tony. Tony yeah. can't. <laughs> Kind of can't fucking catch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with it as a parent as opposed to a coach, two different things, you know? Like right now, you're coaching every one of your kids in every single sport, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm coaching a decent amount right now. You, you feel like you're really fine in your stride as a coach? Good whistle? No. I wish. I wish I was fine in my stride. I'm, I'm swimming at every practice, and we, don't have, we haven't had any games yet in basketball, but I'm, yeah, we're getting there. Luckily, the girls that I'm coaching are good right now. Are you, a, are you a hey, hey, hey? Hi. Or you whistle? Or you? Uh, what is your demeanor? I actually do have. A, I did bring a whistle because you, you know how loud a basketball gym can get trying oh, yeah. to get ten girls' attention. So, yeah, I'm not really. Uh, I'm not a really yeller. I'm trying to. Yeah, we're you trying to figure 40? things out. What's that? You got a Fox Forty? I do have a Fox Forty. That's, That's the best nice whistle, whistle on the market. It's a good whistle. <laughs> Hey, Bob, yeah. hey, Zito, why don't you get us one for the office? <laughs> <laughs> right now, buy it. Your name being on that out it's there. It's just damning, damning evidence. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. I How tell you everything water? I buy. There's, it's $300 worth of water. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of water. Oh, my it's God. It's not water we'll drink either. Like, Wait, it's water flavored, is, too? That's yeah, gross. Yeah, exactly. That's what the thing is. Zito is an impeccable, <laughs> impeccable member of this office's entire operation. Oh, yes. yeah. Huge part of it. Integral. Huge. So this could potentially have been a mistake by Zito or others, you know, in this entire thing. But Zito's name being on it doesn't necessarily mean it was him, though, because of how much he is involved with. But it does feel like it probably, we got to check for another bag potentially showing up, too, yeah. in the purchase. I could see Zito getting set up on this. Me, though. too. I really could. Me, like too. Big wet butt set up? Potentially. I mean, yeah, you I guys are a bunch of fucking <laughs> assholes, too. So <laughs> that that guys, is true. That is true. No. No, I mean, hey, we're not not billing the company that for was. hundreds of dollars of terrible water and putting it under Zito's name would <laughs> be a move that Yins would. AJ might have done this actually. Yeah. Oh, I don't 
don't have access to that card you're talking about. It would have been something much better than flavored water. Yeah, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's uh, someone who's been here four plus years would have done either. Oh, Tony's pointing his fingers. Yeah. Whoa! And wow. we know who it's at. This is a big frame job. You you that's not a Uzi. You've no. been here. Oh. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> that was Mitt. You just heard there in the back. Or <laughs> sounds like it was him. We are not going to get to the phones. That's shit. <laughs> Tony might be accusing Gertie. Billy's as well. dad? No, no, no. We have 10 seconds. I mean, we just wasted seven minutes on this. We'll get to the bottom of it, though, by the time hour three starts. That's right. Yeah. See you in six. All right, so we'll stay on YouTube calls. Stay on YouTube Thanks, calls. Calls. Hell yeah. Are we going to get down to who Diggs is accusing, though? Or? He's, he's accusing men, I think. Maybe Bruce. I, I thought it was one of those dirty. Two. It was one of those. Oh, dirty. But is this like a joke? Oh, like, is this a practical shit. joke? I don't know. It's a sixteen hundred dollar purchase. I, mean, I don't think it's much of a practical it's joke. It's kind of stealing from the company, but yeah. the yeah. purse is it's not a rinky dink purse. Either. It's a good purse. Never heard of this particular purse designer. Wait, a purse came with it too. Uh, well, I, we the have, when the smoking gun arrives, which will be <laughs> the, sure, sure. Really, we the purse or whatever, yeah. that is potentially the thing that kind of gives it all away. Yeah, but it's okay, by the way. Why didn't someone just admit it? Happy Christmas. Yeah, whoever got it. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Admit it. Someone admit it now. <laughs> <laughs> Zito, I mean, it's right across there. Zito's name is literally plastered on all yeah. these. How do they spell the last name? Because there's two ways. Well, how, would you, have spelled, how would you have spelled it? It just matters. Just two letters. I mean, what is Zito's I name? Go, I would go first P-U. off. Okay, so you already saw the boxes. I have said. not seen the boxes. <laughs> See, now we know you've seen the boxes. Though. I haven't seen them. You okay. were out there fucking... You were with us whenever we... <laughs> no, they said it, my name was on it, but I never saw it. Oh, God. So P-E is the way it is spelled on all those things. Yeah, so, so I go P-U. Let's go to the phones. Let's like go to... cat. You... Per as. You purposely misspell your name? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why you can't believe, you can't it. believe it. Damn it. Damn it. It. Damn it. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was during Facebook when you changed your name, and they yeah. said if you uh, change your name back, they will like delete your account. So I, I, well, I had a typo when I wrote my name down. So well, Heinz, it. so it's like a tweet. You had to, you couldn't go back. To the um, typo. <laughs> the meta. Could you imagine like Zito not getting the points Uh-oh, on the please. ACT or SAT for spelling your name? Like you remember how they oh, made yeah. it? Like, oh, yeah. thirty points. You spell your name right. This is what you get. That was strictly for people like I did Z. forget to put my name. Yeah. On my Bruce ACT. said it was spelled P U. Oh, the oh, oh, no. That's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that is damning. Uh-oh. For the people that say I saw it, though. Nah, you're right. I, th- you I thought you yeah. saw it. Wow. Why'd you order so much, Z? You could have <laughs> just got one box. <laughs> and what happened? I would say right now, AJ, I hate water. I literally hate it. Well, this dude isn't water. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> never drinks water. It's not water, though. It's flavored. That's why I think it's Zito. Once I heard it was flavored, I'm like, oh my God. I don't even drink sense. flavored water. I, dr- I drink Gatorade. It's not just some flavored water, by the way. It is a lot of flavored <laughs> He uh-huh. was very accusatory this morning. He no. pointed. He said, all right, guys, just fess up now. It uh, won't be that big of a deal. He if you just let us know who did Phil. it. Uh, yeah. I've seen no, this on me. I've seen this on Dateline. Yeah? I've seen this on Dateline before. And what side? Bad. Always guilty. Oh, shit. Always guilty. Leading the charge for the search parties. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just misunderstandings. We'll get to the bottom. I can't wait to see the bag. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Now, whoever did it, by the way, is now potentially forcing me to buy a bag because my wife learned of a new bag maker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate whoever that is. Taking like, it on the shins Yeah, twice. now <laughs> I am. <laughs> now I'm going to get do we know how expensive the bag was? Uh, pretty pricey. Uh, you tell us. Uh, another is... wrinkle to this was there was another charge a week ago for fourteen hundred that Phil Jesus. accused us for making, and Phil found out that that was his mistake. Oh! oh. 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 Another oh. layer. Oh. Oh. And if anybody knows Zito's real name, it's Phil. Yeah, there's a lot coming and going. Get Phil on the horn right now. This is what happens when you give a group like us too much money, though. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Phil just ran a marathon, right? He's probably pretty thirsty. Ten Maybe. miler. Ten miler. That's not a marathon. It was probably sponsored by this water Hint company. Water. It, was just... it was not. I saw him run that thing, though. And, uh, you know, he's doing all this because the Pittsburgh Marathon beat him. Like, actually beat yeah. him. Mm-hmm. There was 99.9999999% of the people that started the Pittsburgh Marathon Ended the day getting this medal that said, congrats, you completed the Pittsburgh Marathon. There's people that walked a large majority of it. There's people that jogged it. And then there's people that ran it. 
Phil started that marathon, never finished it. Oh. Carted out into a hospital. Yeah. So now it's time for CFO Phil to go ahead and get that. But he ran his 10 miler, which was supposed to be a test going forward. And he obviously couldn't just cruise control. He found himself like sprinting through the entire Phil thing. Phil just uh, texted, uh, that's BS. So I, I don't know if that's uh, for the So running. Bailey's not getting paid this month, probably. <laughs> oh. Bailey just publicly took a shot at CFO yeah. Phil. Uh oh, Bill. Oh, no. Good luck, Bill. Big Good run. Mistake. That's a tough guy to take a shot at. Yeah, that's like, a tough, tough shot. Well, um, business wise, but also just in real life, he will hold that. Mm -hmm. That will be something that will remain yeah. forever. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> who ordered the bag, though? <laughs> <laughs> that's the word. That's what would worry me. Like, who? Who is it for? Who are they gifting it to? Well, maybe it's not a gift. To you know, we'll figure it out. Let's take a phone call here. We got about forty seconds. Is it a satchel? <laughs> Zeke. <laughs> I like, guess it a bag that Z's going to carry? You should stop talking. Because <laughs> what if a satchel does show up? Yeah. Then. And it'll be like, ah, oh, it smelled the same way. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not actually water, but it is water. He's meeting with a nutritionist tomorrow who's probably going to say you need more I water. I am meeting with a nutritionist. And if it's a satchel. I have a feeling nutritionist would not say flavored water is the option. Uh, it'll be better than a uh, Big Mac and two cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fries. I and told you my body. In the 10 a.m. hour. <laughs> in the 10 a.m. hour today, Nick had a quarter pounder of McChicken, two 10-piece nuggets, and a... Uh, frozen Coke in the 10 a.m. hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Zito sit right next to him, Big Mac, two cheeseburgers, full <laughs> thing of fries, and a satchel of cookies. 10 a.m. hour. Ty. Nutritionist hears flavored water. She's gonna be the Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back. Welcome back to that show. We are in the middle of a downpour in Indianapolis, Indiana, in quite a sticky situation. Hour three begins now on this particular yeah. program at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. It is coming down over here in Indianapolis. I do fear that the sun has said goodbye for at least six or seven months oh, over here in Indiana. I don't know what it's like over there in Ohio for AJ Hawk, but I will say our building is currently swimming in it. AJ, oh. can you hear the downfall waterfall happening on our ceiling right above our head right now? Yeah, I could hear it a little bit earlier. So has it been raining for a while? Yes. I think so, yeah. I During that, what, 34-second break, I took the ear things out, and I'm like, holy shit, yeah. is there a flood on our ceiling? The good thing about our studio is the roof actually has the piping to drain the water off of the roof. It goes through the studio. Yeah. Yeah, looking at it right it now. It is right here. It's kind of tight, but boy, when that thing gets a roll, it's like a crick in our in our ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. And we will forge ahead. You can see this, the the uh, the tin roof too uh, that's on the top that's rattling off. Yeah, I'm excited to get to the new office, new studio. What? The hint that is loud. What? The hint water is not making its way through though. Yeah, the no hint way. water will not see its way to the igloo. Yeah, I, it's water. called hint water. I, yeah, I just got a text from my wife actually said, "Oh, that flavored water. If it's called hint, I actually like that stuff." Oh, okay. Oh, oh, look, Zeke's doing something go. nice. Yeah. So now, but we're not going to take it. By the way, whoever purchased that needs to take that to whoever purchased that because yeah. we've already made one mistake. Let's not make two. But it sounds like I'm also putting in an order for hint water. <laughs> yeah. huh. So whoever, whoever did this, thank you yeah. to everybody. What the you hell? Because we just learned of a new bag company and a new water company now. And hey, anything for my beautiful bride. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Let's move to some sports talk here, shall we? Uh, we'll have Sham Sharania joining us in about five minutes. We'll ask him, hey, what's going on in the NBA? The uh, Jokic brothers fighting the Morris brothers, potentially. What's going on with Benjamin Simmons, who he's been on top of since the beginning of this entire thing? The Celtics allegedly got a deal offered, then back. Uh, I heard Stephen A. say this morning the Golden State Warriors are definitely going to win the ship this morning. Wow. I didn't know that with the way the Brooklyn Nets are, are constructed and the Lakers with LeBron coaching. And there's a whole new style of play happening in this year, AJ. International rules have been adopted to basketball, so there's no more ticky-tack, get them to jump, force a foul, shoot 33 uh, free throws a night. It's a whole new state of basketball. Can't wait to talk to Shams about it. We'll do that shortly. There is football news for us to actually talk about. 
David Bakhtiari, allegedly all the way back. AJ, you're friends with Takatari. You're friends with Carl Takatari. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Has this been something that they've known it was going to be this week? Are they playing it slow and, and everything like that because Aaron wasn't in last week? What are your thoughts on Bakhtiari getting back? This is a massive ordeal. This is one of the highest paid left tackles in all of NFL because this is one of the best left tackles in all of NFL for an offense that has been going whenever Aaron's in there. I mean, I don't know like what his status may be. He's been practicing for, what, two weeks now? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably two weeks. They need him, but I don't feel like they feel like they're in any rush. Like, if they don't feel 100% about where his knee is at and what he's doing, I don't know why they would rush him back. I don't I'm know. I'm sure he wants to be back bad, but I don't know when that is. If it's this week, next week, the week after, who cares? Do no. we have a microphone on the roof right now? <laughs> that uh, thing's is that one so, on? Yeah. Uh, is that one on over there? It's muted. It does sound. My is that all God, coming from your God. mic? Uh, I don't know if it's from mine. I don't know who's it. I think it's all of them in here. It is so loud. Tilt, tilt it up. See if it gets louder when you tilt that thing straight up. Well, when I stop talking, <laughs> you know what I mean? it's going to get louder. But Bakhtiari coming back is great for Aaron Rodgers in the Green Bay Packers, who I think are out of the Hotel Beckham Jr. sweepstakes. <laughs> Might be. Uh -huh. I, I mean, think that's what it sounds like. It, it does kind of sound like it. And I feel like Schultz led me astray once again because I thought that Odell wanted to go to the Packers. It was his number one destination. Turns out that was horseshit if he was looking to stay there for a couple of years. So I, I really don't know what to think. That might have been his initial feeling. He initially might have wanted to make the decision, let's go to Green Bay. And then maybe he had another thought or people around him had a conversation were like, hey, this is your first time ever being a free agent. This is the first time you'll ever get to just choose where you want to go, what you want to do. Let's slow down. Let's not just make the uh, initial gut response to go to Green Bay. Let's think this whole thing uh, through. And now there's five offers, Ian Rappaport said, out to Odell Beckham Jr. We have no idea where he's going to go. Allegedly, he would like to be able to stick around for the long haul, even though he expects the deal to be for the rest of the season. But there wasn't a single time when Rappaport said, like, let's say Packers, for instance. He said for Chiefs, for instance. He said that Bill Belichick is very much in on this yep. thing. The Seahawks, I didn't hear much chatter out of that. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. But it feels like the Packers are somehow out when we thought the Packers were somehow all the way in. Well, yeah. I mean, if it if he really does want to potentially be there for longer than this year, like there's no way the Packers are going to do that. They still have to figure out what they're going to do with Devontae. Like in no world do they bring Odell in and, and you know, like guarantee that he's going to be there longer than this year. I mean, if they – but because financially that will just never work. All right, let's continue to move on here. Who knows what's going to happen with OBJ. Probably won't know a decision until Monday we're hearing now because he's going to watch all the games on Sunday and see what's the best fit for him. And for that we say, hey, good on you. Good yeah. on you. Yeah. Hey, good on you. Yeah. Good, good on you. Hey, good work OBS getting OBJ into this situation and position and good work for OBJ sitting back and realizing that there's a much bigger picture. This is a life changing decision it should be treated as such let's go ahead and you know maybe play 16 games this year yeah you know what i mean i it just sit out a week it's all good because the 17 game season is now being talked about because tom brady on his let's go podcast with jim gray and larry fitzgerald on sirius xm yep this does not get as much t a play as i would have thought next no, to none not at all well can you get it anywhere other than sirius like do they put it out on itunes or anything they release uh, Zito just told me they do release a podcast, yes, and I think his mic was actually open when he said that into my ear, uh, so you actually heard him, and that is what I get in my ear, by the way. It is awesome. I actually didn't hear him. Oh, okay. Well, oh. everybody else kind of did. It might have been just the uh, studio in here. Great work. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but they do release it as a podcast as well. I think he had a State of the Union almost, where he brought in a bunch of people from the press to ask, a town hall, he called it, I guess, uh, uh, an entire... Q&A sesh with everybody about everything. He said a lot of good things throughout the season thus far on this Let's Go podcast. Not getting as much play as I had expected. I'm going to be honest. Whenever I heard he was doing this, I was very excited because I thought it would be like big-time news breakers. Yeah. He, listening to the greatest of all time, chit-chat about the league while playing in the league has been fantastic, but not as much ripple effects in the sports media world as I had expected, to be honest. But this is a big one because Tom Brady's speaking about something that AJ, myself, and many other players have talked about. Not the first paragraph, not the second one, the last one. We'll get through the uh, first two as well. I think it's pointless. I thought it was a terrible decision. 
So I don't like the fact that we're playing a 17th game at all. I think 16 is plenty. You're eight games into the year and you're not halfway through. So that's kind of a little frustration aspect. Whatever. We'll play it. It's there. A lot of guys probably miss games over the course of the season anyway. So they probably don't play all 16. Most guys. But if you're fortunate to be able to make it through a season and then you got to play the 17th game, I think there are a lot of things that I would adjust to the offseason, uh, the regular season schedule. A lot of people know my feelings on some of these topics. I've been pretty vocal about NFL issues over the last couple years and some of the things that are done that I don't necessarily think are in the best interest of the game. Remember, he came out talking about the rule changes for the defensive side of the ball. It's making the game worse. The number changes. Now he's openly speaking about the 17-game season. Then he would go on to take an even bigger shot and say our union hasn't proven that it's strong enough to withstand the pressure from NFL owners. I would love to see a stronger union so that we can negotiate something that's more fair and what's really right for the owners, for the coaches, and the players. All three groups need different things. If you're going to ask more, then you better provide more. That hasn't been the way negotiations have gone. And Tom Brady is echoing the sentiments of basically any person that played in the NFL longer than five years. Basically. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. He speaks for, like, all vets, really. Yeah, everybody. Me, you, any other human, basically, that's been around the NFL and seen things and been like, how has this happened? But then, obviously, Tom Brady, if he speaks about it, or AJ, who got $60 million when he signed his name as the yep, fifth yep. overall pick, or if anybody else speaks about it, it's like, well, you, you can't relate to everybody else in the NFL, the bottom half of the roster. And it's like, I understand that there are vastly different lives in the NFL between the starting quarterback and the stars and everybody else. I have the utmost respect and appreciation for everybody else. But also, the league is run by the names of the people that are around longer. They probably know the NFL much better than everybody else. They know what succeeds, what doesn't succeed, what should happen, what shouldn't happen. And all of a sudden in the media, that gets downplayed because, oh, you're going against the bottom half of the roster and around and around we go with 50.1% percent approval on something and 49.9 percent against it and i think what tom brady's trying to say is that if our union was like the basketball union where all the big time players were actually at the table it would maybe be a little bit different and hopefully we'll get to the point of that but in the current case that is not the situation at all it's so much bullshit it's so much work it's a bunch of politicking that ends up doing nothing bad deals are made you really don't utilize any of your leverage and it's a waste of time that's why you never ever see the top end players really in the NFL Players Association representing for the NFLPA. They were, they're representing too many players too and not to defend the NFLPA but basketball their union they don't have nearly as many players in the league True. that they're trying to speak for they're trying to represent we know basketball is run by the stars that's who runs the whole league who carries all the ratings everything and there's what 10 of those people so I think our next guest will have a great outlook on this problem. Well, but those 10 people are all involved in the business yeah. with the NBA. That's what I'm saying. It's They can all get together like, hey, we can actually make some change. Us. Like the NFL, I feel like it, it feels a lot tougher to actually make change. I think there is about five to ten guys that could potentially, though. you got to sit out. you got to threaten to sit. you got to threaten to actually miss games, not miss an offseason. you got to threaten to miss games. I don't even think that's the case. I mean, you could utilize that as leverage, but I think if the power players of the NFL go to the NFL – and say, hey, let's figure this out. Like Tom Brady's a businessman, right? We all know he's a businessman. Yep. We all know Aaron's a businessman. Patrick Mahomes is a businessman. All these people that are our top end stars are all business people. And whenever they say, if you're going to ask for more, well, you better give more. That is how negotiations should go. Like, hey, you guys want this game? This is what we need then. I think it means a lot more coming from the players as opposed to people that are representing them. And I'm only saying that because I have potentially started taking over all my own negotiations as opposed to other people speaking. And things seem to go a lot differently when when it comes directly from the horse's mouth, whether it's a misunderstanding coming from one thing, whenever you're playing a game of telephone, or like, hey, this is why we want it, this is why we want it. But that is a massive conversation that's going to have to shape a lot of different things, especially if 18 games are around the corners. Speaking to your point, though, about the basketball players, joining us now is a man who has his ear to the ground in all things happening in the NBA. He's an insider for the stadium and the athletic. The last time he came on this show, he broke the news that there wasn't a cell phone in his pocket. No, no. Mm -mm. Joining us now with what I assume will be an incredibly fresh fade and facial hair setup with a silver triangle behind him with two different camera angles. Ladies and gentlemen, senior NBA insider, Sham Sharon. Yeah! Yeah! Hey! 
Hey. Appreciate you guys as always. And Pat, I got to hire you as my agent. You said you were doing your stuff one to one. I might have to take the same strategy, actually. So no, hey. I don't know if my rep is listening, but I might have to take, a, <laughs> to take your advice on that. Hey, it seems like you're doing well, but it is, it changes a lot of things. It honestly has. In my life, it has changed a lot of things because something that I'm maybe like, well, what the fuck is that? I'm actually hearing exactly why, as opposed to through somebody that might deliver it in a different tone or tense or something like that. That's an entire conversation for another day, but let's talk about the basketball players. And if you do represent yourself, I think you'll do well. You're one of the most consistent people I've ever seen. Your hair looks the exact same. Your beard looks the exact same. The backdrop looks the exact same. And you're always on top of it. That is a good business person. I would mm -hmm. assume they know what they're going to get. No question, 100%. I got to stay on top of it. This is what I do, so I'm here. What, what, what do we, what do we, what do we want to talk about today, Pat? Okay. Let me know. All right. So the big news, obviously, what's going on with Ben Simmons, the Sixers, and the Celtics potential trade. You broke that news. Can't wait to hear about it. But I want to know: Are the Morris brothers fighting the Jokic brothers, and how is that going to pan out? Jokic, reigning MVP, in the middle of some real drama right now, getting suspended a game, over a hundred thousand dollar fine. Jimmy Butler's getting a thirty thousand dollar fine. Morris is getting a fifty thousand dollar fine. This is a big deal. All of a sudden, the NBA is becoming WWE. What do you think? Is this going to cooler heads prevail, or is it going to be an actual lead to something? Pat, th this will blow over. I mean, that's how these altercations work in the NBA, unless these guys really want to duke it out. You know, the interesting part is that I want to see if the NBA, if there was a way for them to suspend Nikola Jokic for the next time the Heat and Denver Nuggets play. I think that would probably be the fair approach. I spoke to someone in Denver yesterday, a, a Nuggets official, and he told me that he recommended to the league to let Nikola Jokic sit the next time these two teams play because, Pat, that is when we will see whether cooler heads prevail. I would like I can't wait to watch that game the next time these two teams play because Nikola Jokic, you know his brothers are going to be there. I'm told his brothers bought tickets to the game in Miami here in a few weeks. Denver Heat, they bought tickets. They want to be there, and if there's going to be any action, it's going to be there. The league could have found a way to to get out of that if they had suspended Nikola Jokic for that game. Obviously, that, that isn't how the league handles these issues. But, yeah, I'm waiting to see when these two teams play in a few weeks. That is when we will know if this issue is resolved or not. Awesome. The Jokic brothers are all tatted. Oh, yeah. And the Morris brothers said, we're about it, about it, too. That could be awesome. I, I'm surprised Triller or Showtime isn't trying to get yeah. in on it. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, they, they probably will soon with Frank Gore fighting. But, Shams, mm. uh, I got two, two quick questions. How many players are the Lakers going to have in street clothes taking up prime real estate on their bench <laughs> moving forward? And is Golden State going to win it all? Man, so for, to answer your first question, yeah, they're super beat up right now. I, I do think LeBron James will be back sooner than later. I reported last week he's going to miss at least one to two weeks. So the optimistic part of it is he might be back next week, right? So that is the optimistic part. But, yeah, they have Taylor Horton Tucker, Trevor Reza, the rookie Austin Reed. A lot of, a lot of Lakers fans think he's the next – uh, Alex Caruso. So he's out now in the lineup. So they're super banged up, super beat up. Rajon Rondo's out. They've got a lot of injuries that they got to deal with. So that's what makes it tough to really judge this team. But I would expect Taylor Horton Tucker's making progress. Ariza's making progress. So they should be getting some of these guys back in the lineup. But right now they are the walking wounded. It's tough to judge this team. And as for Clay Thompson, some good news. Sources tell me he is expected to get cleared for full practice in the next few weeks. And so once that happens, that starts the process for him to possibly return. You know, I've heard anywhere from that Christmas Day range to January 1st, New Year's. So if they can get him back in the lineup, what are they, 9-1? and one? Usually you have Gary Payton, the second, dunking everything in sight. This team is looking legit. Andre Gudala, I think, has even made mention, even Draymond Green has made mention that this team reminds them of that 2015 team oh. where they came out of nowhere and they ended up being a championship caliber team. I do think this team has signs. With Stephen Curry, to me, being one of the MVP leaders, along with Jimmy Butler and Kevin Durant and, it, and some other guys. Yeah, and Steph's back, right, to just being this guy, where it's just falling, oh, yeah. where the hoop's He's just an him. assassin right now. He's just an assassin right now. He's making everything. I mean, these 40, 50-point games are coming so easy. And it's, you know, it's interesting. When Kevin Durant left that team, I think there was a lot of question about Stephen Curry and how great he really is, right? I think there was some criticism that year he breaks, I believe, his wrist. He misses basically the entire season. And there were questions and doubts about whether Stephen Curry was that dude. Well, I think he's proven this, these last few years he is that dude. Holy moly's a hit, too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Banger. You know what I mean? Chef Curry's always cooking on the court and off the court. Uh, last question for me before we get it to the boys who know a lot more about the NBA than I do. And thank you for keeping us informed. Uh, they're changing the style of play. 
right? So international rules are much more uh, similar to the rules now than what it was last year or the years before when James Harden, you know, made a living and a killing off of a pump fake jump go in, make the shot, I'll get 20 free throws a game, I'll be able to control and create my own foul, and that's what basketball became, and you know, there was people taking shots at Space Jam earlier today saying that's why LeBron ain't playing, by the way, it's because the rules are now international rules, which I think will help Bron Bron, but is this what the game is going to be going forward, and what is the the reaction to it? I think as fans, everybody loves it. I, I assume it's not that well received in the locker rooms, though. Pat, the fans love it, I think. The audience loves it. The, even people in the league office love it. You know, when you're on these competition committee calls, there's something called the competition committee of the NBA. And that's the group that pushes for these rule changes, to push for this, these rule changes on non-basketball moves, to push for the under two minutes timeout. Pat, if you're watching NBA hoops nowadays, they don't even review plays usually at the end of games anymore. Like, there used to be 30, 45-minute stoppages at the end of games because they're just constantly going to review and so i think you add all those factors and i think the league believes this is clean but when you talk to players and i've spoken to some nba owners too and they believe that the nba is trying to revert this game back to the 1990s style and so that will take a lot of adjusting that will take a lot of guys being comfortable with that approach where physicality is now being in the players and some of these owners minds it's being touted as a as an approach Again, the league says, and, and on their competition committee call, they claim that there's no evidence to prove that. There's not, like, that isn't part of the intent, but that is what players and owners do feel, that the game is becoming more and more physical. But when you look at a guy like James Harden, I do have to note, Pat, people around him believe that it's more his physical condition, him having to get in shape. He hasn't played five-on-five five all summer. Anyone that knows James Harden he's, knows that he gets in shape in the offseason oh, playing five-on-five. Yeah. Five. He wasn't <laughs> able to play five-on-five five this this past offseason. Now he's able to finally get some of that five-on-five five in, but it's coming in regular season play. So the hope is once he's fully integrated physically and mentally that he'll be good to go, uh, you know, despite any of these rule changes. James Harden, little baby, still over fashion week. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah. get a game in every once in a while. Go wee-wee in the streets of Paris. Maybe that would be awesome. Is this because of ratings? Is that why they changed this? Is this because of ratings? Is that why the entire rule changes? I think it was more for the fact that the game just was looking like it wasn't truly basketball. I mean, if you watch some of these calls that you know uh, James Harden, Trey Young, Luka Doncic that they were drawing, they were not real basketball plays. I mean, they're just flailing and drawing contact. And I think the league believed that they needed to get back. To, to what it was and before and get back to your basketball. basketball. <laughs> That's right. And then all of a sudden when the Olympics happen and the world watches our team not too great early, they just got out of a season. I mean, there's a lot going on. They inevitably end up winning and getting hot, in which I think we all kind of knew, even mm -hmm. though there was a couple of players that weren't invited that made no sense in whatever. But while we were watching that, watching the USA team, who are the best basketball players on earth, adjust to the international rules it just looked like a completely different game and then you saw the internet be like oh this is what it should be some people then some people hate it the nba watched that and was like yep yeah, that's what we're fucking doing from mm -hmm. now on we're gonna do it go ahead connor yeah sean pat mentioned benny simmons and the sixers calling uh the celtics is that how most of the negotiations are going and teams aren't really listening because they're asking for too much and is ben simmons eventually just gonna end up playing for the sixers this year so the first part of your question there's no there's no doubt i mean daryl morey when he goes and and wants players on other teams like Jalen Brown and Damian Lillard and Bradley Beal. Like those are the types of players that Daryl Morey and Philadelphia have prioritized to go get a guy like Ben Simmons. So yes, the 76ers did inquire, did engage. Uh, uh, the, the Celtics did engage the Sixers on Ben Simmons and have conversations, but, but those conversations weren't, you know, something that the Celtics wanted to acquiesce to. I mean, when it comes to Jalen Brown, they didn't want to move Jalen Brown for Ben Simmons. So unless Philadelphia gets more realistic. They're not going to get what they want out of this possible scenario. And as of right now, I'm told Ben Simmons is not mentally ready to play. If, even if he was traded tomorrow, I'm told he wouldn't just suit up and play. He needs to get right mentally. He's seeing, get, he's getting mental help and he's getting help uh, with, with Philadelphia doctors, with his own doctors to try to figure out a way to get back on the floor. Listen, if Philadelphia feels like he's not being accurate, they just have to call him out on it because right now, he is telling them that I'm not mentally ready to play. And you don't you don't see this ending anytime soon? And did Brad Stevens literally listen to that and just go, ah, okay, yeah, we ain't going to do that. Is that what happened? Is that how quickly that thing ended? 
Well, when it came to them, when it came to Philadelphia being hard charged on getting Jalen Brown in any scenario, yeah, I think it ended up being like we're not listening. But the call started with an engagement from Boston in trying to figure out a package. But again, there's really not a deal construct, you know, Marcus Smart, guys like that. But that's not going to fulfill what Philadelphia is looking for and what they want. And Ben Simmons, I, I don't see any resolution coming on the horizon. He is claiming he is not mentally ready to play. And at the end of the day, which is there a doctor that can say that he is mentally ready? How can someone go into someone's mind and say you're mentally ready? One. It's tough to do that. Well, listen, there's, there's a lot of docs. I mean, hold on, there's a lot, I've met a lot of docs on the internet these last few days, obviously, so somebody will be able to make it happen. But I love the fact that Brad Stevens picked it up. Hello? Jalen Brown. Can the guy shoot yet? We don't know. He's not. Oh, okay. Fuck off. <laughs> I love how you have an actual phone there, but that is an accurate. Yeah, that, that's accurate. Okay, dope. Go ahead, Diggs. Shams, uh, Pelicans have the uh, worst record in the league, and they stink. Is there a scenario where Zion just doesn't come back and play for that team this year? Because why the fuck would he? Oh, they're getting shit. Yeah, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that that's even a possibility. But look at, at the signs. He's not, you know, to my knowledge, he's not close to really taking the floor. And so if he's not really close to playing, he's, they keep pushing back the timeline. At first it was opening night, and then it was a month away, and then it was two to three month, uh, weeks away. And so now you're putting yourself in a position where it's into December. He's already missed a, about a month and a half of the season. What is the point then to bring him back if they are not anywhere close? I mean, right now they're 1-10, I believe, 1-11. That's not good enough for Zion Williamson to, to really this, be putting hey, himself this- is this Pelican's decision or Zion's team's decision? Because remember, going all the way back to his rookie year, it was the Pelicans who said, what is it? What is it? What's what going got? on? What do we got? Yeah, I, I mean, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, no, what are you looking at? No, we just saw you look at your other <laughs> camera. Anything happen? Just reading text messages. Just reading text Anything messages. Anything big? Right Anything big? Nothing big right now, but I'll let you know. Okay. I doubt it. You shouldn't, by the way. You work at two other places. You should probably break it there. We'll react to it if, uh, next week, maybe. But is this because the Pelicans wanted, or Pelicans wanted to limit Zion's minutes? And then Zion's people allegedly were potentially upset about Is this Zion's people deciding that he does, he's not ready to play yet? Is it the Pelicans? And how long does this continue to go on year after year? Is this going to just go forever until they figure it out? Yeah, I believe it's it's both doctors. It's the doctors on Zion Williamson's side. It's the doctors on the Pelican side. Because not only, I'm told, the bone isn't fully healing yet. Uh, listen, he needs to get in the proper game shape as well to be able to play. We've seen video that's come out. like they, The Pelicans have put an emphasis on him coming back in game shape, and he just is not there yet. Go ahead, Ty. Uh, Shams, I remember reading, I don't know if you reported it or if someone else did, but the Pelicans want Zion to lose 100 to 150 pounds before he suits <laughs> up. Right, right, Is there any on. truth to that <laughs> or not? Right, that was on. not my reporting. Are you sure? Did you? Are you all right. <laughs> Because, I mean, it is insane to think that that guy Came is out of nowhere. one of the most electrifying <laughs> players the internet has ever seen, basketball has ever seen. He's explosive. He's incredible. Is this the Chicago Bulls Center going into the COVID protocol? Is that what you're looking at right now? I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm, I'm actually working uh, here to get more information on this, hopefully. Here so what, soon. Do you, what do you do? You send texts with your brain? Agent, are you talking to his agent? I wish I could. <laughs> are you? Is your agent texting? Is the agent texting you or somebody in the Bulls facility texting you? How are you trying to get more information while giving us answers? Are you that talented? Hey, man, I'm trying to get more yeah, information. Yeah, oh, 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 okay. you just checked into the wrong one. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, switch to camera two. Uh, uh, you're, we're losing you on service, but we can't thank you enough for joining us. We appreciate thank the God. hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Sham Sharanya. Yes, yes, so what was that? His hand texting? I don't know. That's yeah, why I, yeah. so, I think he hits a button and it's like how he gets out so that he can tweet stuff for the league. <laughs> Hello? Like Richard Nixon. Oh, come on. Old Dick Nix. Dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did he do? Watergate. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm not a crook. I'm not a crook. I'm not a crook. Yeah, <laughs> slimy bastard. Sounds like you after an oral at water. Oh, 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 oh shit. shit. As I said, I'm not a crook, I'm not a crook, I'm not a crook. <laughs> Let's get to a break. And Shams better make sure, though, you know, your sources are agents. You got to make sure you get both sides of the story, though, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Insiders are definitely going to be judged by how they report stories, especially which side is real reported. Thing. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a crazy situation. Oh, Insane. yeah. Insane. We hope justice is always found at the end of every story. But the insider game, with the way the internet operates, 
and we are not insiders. I'll jump into waters every once in a while. Somebody sends me something and I'll do it. But that whole journalism, insider integrity thing, at this point, just like journalism, I guess, is kind of all just melting together into one. Yep. Look at Portnoy right now. He's going, is he live right now? That's what he went live at two o'clock. It's a wild world in these streets. And big shout out to Mark fucking Hamill for uh, reposting Aaron's video and just restarting my entire mentions right back into hell. Hell, oh, Jesus. He's Luke Skywalker, I guess, huh? He is the father. That's him? Yeah. Yeah. From the son. original? His, yeah, his father is, I am your father. So he's the son of the... So Harrison he was being, Ford? He's being sunned by... Yeah, James yes. Jones was his Mark father. Hamill was. Yes. Boom. He quote tweeted Aaron's interview, put it out there. Got no, hot. I know. I saw he was mad about his sweatshirt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got hot in the kitchen again, and I got buried a lot. I mean, I got buried a lot, and I'm. All right, we're back and forth. I mean, shot Mark Hamill. I didn't even know the guy existed. Okay. My first interaction with him is he does something, my life becomes terrible. Mm -hmm. But I assume he's a good guy. <laughs> I assume he's a good guy, and I do appreciate it. What will they say about 2020 and 2021 and like 2030? Hey, he just did, you know, he just did a crazy. movie with Burt Kreischer, right? Yeah, I guess he's yeah, producer. No. No. No, he's in it. Yeah, I think he's, he's in, in it. it with Burt. Oh, the machines? He plays uh, uh, Burt's dad. I let's go. That. Okay. Excited to watch. Maybe I'll learn of this man. Here Aside from just my mentions. Getting. I mean, people are saying rude things to me in that community. Yeah, they are much smarter than I am, and they knew it the entire time. I took it on the shins intellect level wise. Oh, tough, tough stuff. All right, I'll get through it. All right, we'll see you in four minutes. Uh, we'll answer some actual phone calls to wrap up this beautiful <laughs> Veterans Day, Thursday, November 11th. Hell yeah. Right. yeah. I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Shout out to Shams for joining us. Shout out to Rappaport for joining us. This Insider Thursday, Ooh. November 11th, Ooh. continues in four. We regret to inform you that in the real world, the one that we're living in right now, this is an actual news clip about what's potentially going on amongst the fans in Kansas City. As the Chiefs seem to refine their identity, it seems like the fans are crumbling into pieces. This is, once again, an actual news piece on Fox 4 in Kansas City. Well, if you spend any time around here on game day, you're likely to be aware of at least one of these men. The man known as the X Factor has been around for decades. He's the one seen in the video getting knocked down by another man who the people of Section 129 may know as Red Extreme. There's X Factor. Here it is. This man about six years ago, meeting and whooping it up with young Chiefs fans. And this is X Factor today. Oh no! What? Only recognizable oh, by no. his foam hat. What? The Broncos so colors stupid. from the hospital. They kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X Factor has been kicked out. Third person. We don't have permission to show the video of the X Factor falling after an apparent punch, but it has nearly a million views on Twitter. The X Factor explains what happened from his perspective and who is involved. He's my old apprentice. I actually. <laughs> Made him famous, um, you know, gave him the name Red Extreme. I saw him come run up the stairs at me, and he was had that look, I'm going to kill you. And so I, like, tried to grab his jersey to stop him Smart. and talk to him. And he, like the movie Friday, he deboed me one punch, <laughs> and I saw stars. And they took me to triage at Arrowhead, checked me out. I felt all right at the time, but then... I didn't know I'd broke my ribs. Oh, Red Extreme posted oh, a 17-minute like uh, video yeah. message to his Facebook page following the incident. He 17? says, a cup of water was thrown and hit my wife in the back and splashed onto me. Oh, Can't do that. He continues, That's I have never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low-life son of a expletive out <laughs> was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. This is my actual problem news. is it happened inside the stadium. And I never imagined in my life I would behave in that manner in the stadium. He also accuses the X Factor of being inebriated. It says that I'm a meth addict, what? which I, I'm a cocaine addict and alcoholic. <laughs> okay. I've been clean for four years. Okay. He much said different. I threw a water Congrats, bottle. Congrats, I, I didn't. And I flipped my car. 
a week ago Tuesday. So it's been a wild week. What? Jesus. Wait. <laughs> no. Maybe it's yeah, this makes back. me stronger. Jesus, you know, Jesus was persecuted. Of course. I'll come back fighting. Is looking to press charges at this point, but throughout the day we did try to connect directly with Red Extreme, but were turned down. However, immediately before our broadcast, we spoke by phone, and he stressed that anything that the X Factor says should be taken with a big dose of skepticism, no, and that okay. he himself actually stepped away from the super fan community because no. of his distrust and distaste of X Factor's behavior. Oh, wow. All right, Jacob Kittles. Thank you, Jacob oh, Kittles. Thank, Thank you, Jacob. You, Jacob. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on this happy Veterans Day, November 11th, 2021. Big game tonight. The Ravens, Lamar Jackson in tow, will head down to Pitbull's time. Ooh. Yeah. Rick Ross's time. What? what? The list goes on and on because so many legends have been created in Miami and in South Florida. Lamar Jackson, one of them, mm -hmm. to take on potentially Jacoby Brissett or Tua. Whoa. I guess we don't know which one's going to start in a seven and a half point spread game on Thursday Night Football. The first Thursday Night Football game that I will get to enjoy. Yeah, here we go. The first one without a risk-free same game parlay that won't have my blood pressure running high. This will be the first one I'll get to sit back, relax, and watch my own bets as opposed to 40,000, 30,000, 20,000, 10,000 people is alongside. Pumped. Your thoughts on this game? Let's go ahead and get our picks in right now, AJ, before we wrap up this show with some beautiful phone calls. Your thoughts, pal? Well, as you were talking about this game, it, it of course, I think the Ravens are going to win. I was going to originally say the Ravens will cover, but I just started, like, I wonder, like, do you, is there, is there a chance that it's one of those nights where the Dolphins actually look good, the Ravens just seem to stumble through the whole night and they don't win? No, and I can say this because nobody else's money, risk-free money, is on the line. <laughs> nah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I I'm still taking the Ravens at, to cover, too, but I just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, I got the Ravens. I'm not trying to self-handicap at all. I think the Ravens will win. Okay, me too. I got Ravens minus seven and a half. Maybe this is the week that you and I both just go undefeated. Let's go. Wow. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Coming off that... Uh, Maybe. So if we go undefeated, wild. like, okay, let's say there's just for the story, they say there's 10 games and we both go undefeated. I'm 10 and 0. What are you, 13 and 0? Well, it depends on if I'm picking, like, the. Your extra bets? Well, if I go two for, yeah. Dude, yeah listen, dude. if you go two for. <laughs> Double dip. Two for. So you can pick and choose which games you want to two for? Well, I might go three for. What if I hit the over or the under as oh. well? I go, hey, how about I know exactly how this game's going to go? I got boom, then bang, and then the over as well. I would like that to potentially count for more than just you saying, oh, I think they'll cover. I mean, that is. I think that, that's fair. That's, you know what I mean? That's what, we, yeah, that's what we've been doing the whole year. Stern, though. but fair. I mean, that's always been a. Listen. It's always been an option. It's always been there. You chose not it's to do to it. Know. It's good to it, it's good to know now. Yeah. I get accused of this a lot, by the way. Because it's not necessarily against the rules. We just never made a rule for it. Yeah. Exactly. Me and Bill Belichick, I think, get scrutinized in uh, crazy fashions Same in games. Way. It's like, did we ever rule against it? No. Okay, so we can do it then. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame. You could have done it. It was sitting right there. And then it's always like, well, I have morals. If they start coming after me, you know, that all the time. I'm like, well, I would like to win. And I did. <laughs> Gotcha. In this particular. But no, we were tied last week because you refused to admit how impressive that pick was. That I, I mean, that is it's unbelievable to me. It's almost more disrespectful what you did than what I did. Mm -hmm. Let's go to some phone calls here. We both got the Ravens. Hammer down, boys. You making a pick on this game? Yes. Whoa. Tony. Tony. Yes. We'll wait for Hammer down to see which way you're going. Gumpy. You know what I'm doing. We're Don't about to, it, to shock the goddamn world tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Zero points or seven and a half points? For the Ravens? <laughs> no, for the Dolphins. Dolphins are going to shock the world tonight. 
We won a game last week with five turnovers. You know how good you have to be to turn the ball over five <laughs> times and win? Again, especially against the Buffalo Bills. Go to the uh, – no, that wasn't the Bills. Bills were Jacksonville Jaguars. Sorry that I thought Miami was Jacksonville, though. You did say Ooh. you've been doing that. Well, I've been doing – that is so – I did Yikes. Yeah, that, you did not – plus 290? You're saying give it to me? Feed me Dolphins money line before Hammer Don even gets out here? That's the one, my friend. Oh, <laughs> wow. wow. I don't know how that's going to work out for him. Lamar Jackson flips the switch. I feel like he's going to flip the switch early because all the family and friends are there. Tua plays, though. Even more so. What was Tua's injury? Finger. My fingies hurt. Uh, I don't know if we should be getting into finger talk. Today. Well, I mean, finger talk will lead into something else. But the thought of Tua, he was healthy enough to dress. So if all hell breaks loose, we're going to put the future of our franchise in, even though he is wounded, we'll just adapt the offense. But he wasn't healthy enough to start. It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. But if he's your guy, why don't you just do an offense around what he can do? Because yeah. is, he's not – Maybe he can barely even throw, though. Maybe it's just strictly, hey, emergency backup. He can take a shotgun snap and hand it off. Maybe that's what it was. Well, then they're not going to have success anyways. Why not just put a running back back there? Or I agree. A, a wide Wild receiver cat. back there. Or wide, yeah, like anything like that. Having him dressed on the sideline is just like Jared Goff being dressed on the sideline for the Rams last year when he had to get in. And what they were actually able to do was like, oh, he can take a snap, he can hand it off, and he can throw. Why was this guy not right. starting? It makes you just ask even more questions, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. It's a confusing situation. I hope he gets in tonight. I hope he plays. Well, I, Jacoby Brissett ain't nothing to sneeze. No, at. he's no. not a ball player. But the Ravens' defense, dude. What are we even talking about? Yeah. yeah. Hasn't been great lately. Really? No. Bad pass defense, but yeah. off the Dolphins stink at passing. So. <laughs> Don't let Jalen Waddle get loose. Gaslecki with like six one handed grabs. Are you kidding me? Who's the D guy with the long hair? Van Dinkle. Oh, Van Dinkle. He's going to fly around. He's probably going to be the one spying Lamar, right? <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Well, we got that guy we drafted ahead of Najee who they were told to retire, but he's good. Who? He's got like half a sack this year. Who? Phillips. Phillips. Somebody's going to spy Lamar, and that person's going to get embarrassed on national television. Yeah. That's, that's Lamar Jackson football. Yeah. Can't wait. Let's go to the fence. Remember when he took a dump against the Browns? Oh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't poop, by the way. He was cramping. That's why he had to yeah. run that way, because he was getting cramping his calves Ooh, and his cramps. hamstrings. He's sharting all over the place. Well, I don't think it was his butt cramping. I think it was his legs cramping, but mm -hmm. it did look like he had a little poop walk. Yeah. yeah. This is my poop walk. That's what it looked like. The internet said. He said, you're crazy. I didn't poop. Wow. But he might have cleaned... He might have taken a big dump and had one of the best Wait, comebacks of yeah. all time. You never got in, uh, stomach cramps because you had to poop so bad and you were holding it in? Oh, so it was cramps in the midsection. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought he was cramping in the calves. That's why he had to do the poop waddle. Whatever the case, let's go to David in North Carolina on 5 Energy Phone Line. David, what's going on, dude? How you doing? Hey, keep, keep it moving. moving. Superman is back. Okay, you're going to get us kicked off YouTube, but I do like the fact that Carolina is pumped about Cam Newton being back. Yeah. Not as pumped as I am that there's 15 original flavors at 5RNG.com. Oh. And if you use promo code MACFI, you get 10% off your order. Wow. But they are pumped to have Cam Newton back down there. On the Jumbotron, displaying the entire city. Good for them. If he gets hot and rolling down there, look out for the Panthers coming in third or fourth in the, uh, in the NFC South. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. right. I mean, oh, he... I feel like there's a lot of pressure on Cam now to come in and, and be the savior. Like, doesn't it feel that way? I think that's what Cam probably wants, right? He loves it. No, I mean, it's amazing. He couldn't ask for a better response to him coming back to the team that drafted him, had so much success there. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to watching. Now it makes the Panthers, I think, much more intriguing to watch. I would want to watch must-see television here just yeah. to see how it goes in that whole factor. His What's promo it? video, too. Oh. Yeah. So we had somebody cover. I'm coming home. Coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. It's like about him and Tepper. Yeah. Yeah. And then he cuts off the cover with Carolina Panthers logo coming up with the music still playing. And the line from Diddy is, I'm back where I belong. And it was almost like a pretty poetic thing. Oh, yeah. That Cam Newton's also excited to be back there. And he walked out of a house in Carolina uh, that I think he owns that is somehow larger than yours, I think. In the, yeah. in the video. He walked out of a yellow house that appeared to be a mall. Uh, it, it is. It's Could all, it be the owner's house? Nope. No. 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Because it wasn't that photo? I thought that was... I mean, I'm sure. That was probably at the facility. It makes sense that Cam has a large house in Carolina. Still, though? Yes. Yeah. Carolina's yeah. beautiful. You heard. Uh, it's great. Darius. I love it there. But where is he? Where does he? Where has he been living right now? Well, well maybe he's up there on Lake Norman. And his yeah. family was down there when he was in New England. Look at that mall. Sweet. That's awesome. That is awesome. Look at a couple. What is Tigers? Oh, what, are lions. Lions. what if they're Panthers? Oh. Be Panthers. This opportunity. Got a couple jungle cats here to my left and right oh. as I walk out the house. Man, remind me that I'm the fucking king of the jungle out here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did Hell he yeah. come out of the door in the video? Uh, yeah. No. Oh, I, was, I was hoping he just ran up to a random house. Like, hey, here, we don't even tell him. Just film me walking off the steps. Oh, like little Dickie did. Is that what Shoot a music Save that money. Yeah, I'm here. I just need the house. It's about not spending money. Can I use your house? And this old lady's like, yeah, whatever you're getting is the nicest house of all Yeah, time. unbelievable. <laughs> it was amazing, yeah. <laughs> you saw me ask for the extra piece of bacon on the side because the cost of the bacon cheeseburger is worth more than the cheeseburger with the, like that whole. Yeah. What a song. And then he decided to make TV and just show his butt cheeks all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's all true. It was a, it's a good show. <laughs> if you like seeing Lil Dicky's butt cheeks. Season two, not as much butt cheeks. What's the show called? What are you talking about? Dave. It's called Dave. Dave. Oh yeah, there there's is a one whole episode. episode full butt. It's yeah, I, t I rescind all my statements. There are, are too many butt cheeks. And a lot show. of Dave butt. When I try, and I'm a big little Dicky fan. Yeah. Love Dave, but I saw too much of his ass, and I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. Seen enough asses in my time in the NFL. I don't need to be doing any more. All right, just saying. Feel like I'm in a public shower with little Dicky every fucking Tuesday yeah. night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't need to see it. Yeah. But his brain, such a good one. Yeah. He comes back to rapping full time. That'll be a good. That'll be a treat for everybody. Yeah. He should just release the songs that he makes for the show because they're. That's what like carries people through the show. Yeah, it is very much like a uh, flight of the Concords type situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where the songs in there carry the show they're, from scene to scene. Yeah, they're unbelievable. Yeah, he's got a great brain. Good brain. He's got a. Uh, was he got a financial degree? I think. Yeah, from Richmond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still mm -hmm. gets his Netflix. Uh, password from his cousin Greg. From, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Connor in Idaho. What's going on, dude? Idaho Connor. Here we go. How we doing? Keep it moving. Boise, perhaps. <laughs> no, Idaho Falls. Hey, first shout out to our veterans. God bless all those men. And hey, men. Shout, shout out, out. You, Thank you, veterans. Shout out. Now let's get to the real issue here at hand. Getting back with 208,000 plus views, 184 retweets, 3,400 plus likes. Not including the hours of sleep and daydreaming I've just spent on this over the past few hours. What is the big news, Pat? Oh, shit. Connor. Oh. I had no idea that was the case. What did I do? Well, Idaho Connor. Idaho Falls Connor. Okay. Yeah. What is the big surprise that's coming? Well, you know, to be honest, the reason why I couldn't talk about it publicly for so long is because I didn't want to give up any potential leverage in the game of the thing. But I, this morning I'm realizing we are not as close to the door finish line as I thought. <laughs> Ooh, there's a whole nother thing coming. So, I mean, definitely up to something. A couple of somethings. Maybe numerous things being up to. Mm -hmm. And some people tweeted the guesses, and I appreciate that in that video. And some might have had it a little close. A lot of people not even anywhere near. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I thought we were, huh? We did it. I'm a <laughs> fucking beast. Yeah. <laughs> what did did in that that did yeah. he? Yes. I'm a yeah. savage. I'm a. F I'm a fucking savage. That's what Diddy did in that video. Mm -hmm. I thought we had that moment already. Turns out we did not. Okay. Well, you know. But I think we did though. Yeah. Now it's kind of uh, goalposts are being moved a little. Yeah, bit. you can see it though. Final stretch. Yeah. Are we? I don't know. And they might think that I'm not. I am in. A, oh, we are in a much different set of circumstances all of a sudden. No, but you're approaching the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I think we're on the goal line. No, see, the thing is, I think there was actually an accident at the end of the tunnel that made us fucking back it up because they had to get a tow truck in there. A oh, detour. Yeah, because it felt like we were potentially on the other side. Whew, I can breathe again because I hold my breath through the entire tunnel. We Rubberneckers. Yeah, and then all... Well, not just rubber neckers. I think there was actually a big boom, boom, boom yeah. at the end of it. We were about out of it. Now we got to back it up and kind of put it in park here and see how it goes. Okay. But, you know, you can play good music in park, hang out, play yeah. some games on your phone. You can watch this show. Listen to this yeah, show. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Other shows. Other good shows. Yeah. Well. Anyways, we're back in park, although we thought we were racing. <laughs> and the person or peoples that are potentially on the other end of it are watching this right now and let them know. I see you. That's right. I see you. I see what you're doing. Can't hide now. 
you're good people. I respect you. I like you. But I thought I had it in. Uh, I thought the game was over. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, more pieces of checkers were added to the board. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I thought I, I thought we already got to the end. Royal King, and we all came back, and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute, there's a whole other thing that we got to figure out. <laughs> Here's some more checkers. We're back in the game, baby. How you doing? Playing shoots hmm. and ladders, and accidentally hit a ladder right before the. Uh, yeah. Right the now. shoot. Yeah, in the game of life. Hell yeah, shoots. So yeah. Kind of took a long way, huh? You're almost there. Yep. Yeah. It's big though. It's big. It is. Did exposing that glory hole change things? Uh, well, what you were going to do with it potentially did. Yeah. No. Yeah, I wasn't going to do anything. If you didn't try and put your penis in there, then maybe you'd be in a different spot. They did mention that yeah. this morning. They what were you that. thinking? It was actually late last night, they said. Whoa, 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 whoa. We heard what was going on potentially with old, you know, Ohio Stooges baby maker. Yeah. 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 He shows cakes yeah. to the world. He just want to dot the eye. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Despicable. Hey, yeah. And the people are walking. And then he, oh, oh, and then he ran as fast as I could die. That's what you did. There's a problem. Disgusting. Nah, that doesn't sound like me. By the way, fucking now I think about it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Disinfect yeah, that thing. Some throat coat for that person in there. Oh, <laughs> come on! Jesus. I mean, that's what that is. <laughs> oh, I see so what I'm there. You know, there's someone back there. You freak. <laughs> Where's Billy? Find Billy. <laughs> Jesus, oh, oh, oh. Bill. You are. Oh, I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, you are. What were you doing? That's, that's <laughs> diabolical. <laughs> Damn you. Let's get to the phones. That bottle you hold, you had in your hand, you said... No, you it's, a it's a disinfectant. Disinfectant. It's a disinfectant. It's a disinfectant. Dude. <laughs> That's that throat coat spray. Uh, Believe me. <laughs> what were you going to do with it? You were going to spray it in there? I'm disinfecting the shit. Yeah. The hole. Oh, they're going to disinfect the wood because you think someone's shaft's been rubbing on that? Yours. Yours. Yeah, you said this yesterday. I told you. That's not my thing. I wouldn't do that. All right. Let's get to the phones. Oh, thanks. That's not your thing. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> no, I don't judge people who do that. Yeah, let's go to hey, listen to this one. Yeah, I would judge. Don't come. Don't yeah. come in here. <laughs> not a private and business. Yeah, I'm saying. All right, let's private. go to Clay in Atlanta. What's going on, dude? Not a private business. How you doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. We need it. I just want to say thank you for taking uh, my call on my birthday. Hey! Birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Wow! Happy birthday! Hey, Jay's been giving out a lot. Thank you. You know we shared a birthday. Well. I'm a, a huge Niner fan, 49ers, and uh, I was really curious to know that um, hey! if the Niners, if the Niners keep so going the way that they're going downhill, um, will Shanahan be gone by the end of the year? What do you think about Lynch? I like Lynch personally. Um, I like the draft pick, but um, I mean the Are injuries really hurt us. They stink, though, don't they? I mean, their yeah, record is damning. Do. But whenever, but everybody, thanks for the call, by the way, and happy birthday, dude. Hope it's a good one. Um, whenever people talk about the record for the Niners and Shanahan and Lynch together, and then they remove that year that they went to the Super Bowl, it's very bad. But I think you have to remove last year, too. Because COVID injuries and they got kicked out of their stadium. Like, that is, that is a very difficult thing to win. But even with that, they have not been as successful as everybody dreamed or hoped or even hyped them up to be. And that is probably an actual problem as if it continues to go this way. Absolutely. They're not going to put up with it forever, but I still feel like he'll be back next year. They want to they be able to see what he's like with Trey Lance. Losing to the Cardinals with no Kyler Murray or DeAndre Hopkins, knowing that they're in your division for yeah, yeah. however long, at home, that is tough. With Jimmy G there playing as opposed to anybody else, George Kittle came back. I mean, that is – that's a tough scene. Go ahead. They Dave. are 0-4 money, money line and against spread at home. I don't think they like – I don't think they like fucking that stadium. Well, that's because they got kicked out. Mm -hmm. They were once. They said, "I'm putting on my Wranglers." Actually, mm -hmm. let's go to uh, let's go to Jack in South Carolina. What's going on, Jack? You go, Jack. How's it going? Uh, close. Keep it moving. Keep uh, moving. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, happy happy Veterans Day to all my fellow actually, veterans 99. out there. Happy, happy Veterans Day to you too, sir. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Hey. Uh, 
while back, you said we're forced to go to USO meetings only by our wingman's brother. We loved you when you came over. Oh, okay, that's and, great. Uh, hey, Jack, that means a lot because I did think after I left there, like, I enjoyed that. I learned a lot. We were a piece of America there. But a lot of people, not a lot of people, but numerous people are like, well, we're kind of forced to go to this. So I'm happy to hear that it is a good time, at least for somebody, because I loved it. Oh, I loved it, too, man. I got dragged to a NASCAR race. Woo! Anyway, AJ, how do you get up to play the Dolphins if you're the, the, the Baltimore Ravens? Great question, Jack. This could be, uh, is this a trap game Thursday, long weekend on the other side? Ooh. Dolphins stink. What do you think for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens from uh, Jack uh, down there? It's interesting when you bring that up. Yeah, Thursday night, you got a little mini bye weekend. You might have a few days off. So, yeah, it's definitely a trap game. But Harbaugh, you know he's a guy that doesn't let things slide. So I would imagine they're going to be all right. Remember, a trap game would, uh, would mean that people won't play well. If people don't play well, it doesn't matter if Lamar – is playing well. Yeah. You know, like, and, I, and that's no offense to anybody else on the roster, but they've gone all in on just being like, hey, we got a guy nobody else got. We're going to do this. Yeah. So if Lamar's feeling good, I think the entire Ravens feel good. Last week against the Vikings, he flipped the switch. Will he do that earlier? Who knows? We shall find out tonight. This show's ending, AJ Hawk. Any final words for the people listening on Sirius? Now, happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Happy Veterans Day to Clay and all the other vets out there. We appreciate the hell out of you. We'll see you tomorrow with Feel Good Friday. Oh, oh Foxy, you dog. Shit. It's like a hurricane. Spin. This, this music does just put me in a good mood. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, Show's <laughs> over. <laughs> in the last few days, you know, these after hour shows have just dragged on so long. Oh, waiting yeah, you, and waiting. You gonna wait for Odell to sign again today? <laughs> nope, I'm done. I'm out. I ain't doing it. It's raining hard. Hey, aren't you surprised a little bit at how much Carolina gave Cam Newton? I think it's because Cam explained his side. Tepper felt bad and was like, you're right, let's make it right. How do we make this thing right? I, I just... What I does he have to do to get the full... So 4.5 guaranteed, the rest I'm sure he has, it's like incentive. Do we know how tough those are to get? No, nah, I don't think we've... It's probably in-game bonuses and maybe some Every other... Every game he dresses, he gets a certain amount, and then, yeah. Percentage then, of snaps. I mean, it's true. If you, hey, if I play well and we're winning and I'm putting up some good stats, yeah, he should get $10 million. Yeah, and if they go on a run, which is going to be tough in the NFC South, obviously, but this past weekend proved to us that anything could happen to anybody. Buffalo Bills lost to... Jacksonville. Damn. So maybe it is. Cam Newton comes in there, reignites. you got Christian McCaffrey. Joe Brady turns the offense around. Maybe they go on a late surge here to find one of those wild card spots in the playoffs. And once you get in the dance, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Literally anything can happen. Uh, I like that their owner is this type of owner, though. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. I enjoy that. We need more of that in the NFL, I think. Like, hey, I want to go for it. I want to win every single year. I want to win right now. And if I don't think I have the people to win right now, I'm going to move on. No offense. We'll pay you your money. But I want to win right now. He has all the faith, I think, in the world in Matt Rule. And I don't think anybody has doubted that Matt Rule could be a great coach. But for whatever reason, Teddy didn't work. Now they're moving on. They're probably going to move on from Sam Darnold. Now Cam Newton's in there. What if they find magic together again? And this is what Tepper's been waiting on. And I think that conversation between Cam and Tepper probably went in a fashion where they're like, hey, we got to move quick here. Obviously, we got a season. But we also understand we fucked up in this. Let's go ahead and do this. And then this is the business. We'll give you $10 million. Let's keep it. I think that's probably what happened. I'm not 100% sure. I can see him jumping in on Watson, too, uh, in the offseason. Yep especially because they were one of the teams originally interested and then they started out great like 3-0 and and then no, this is where they are. I, I could see him moving McCaffrey. On the field, Deshaun Watson, so unbelievable. Obviously, everything off the field yeah. would have to get settled, but wouldn't it be fascinating if he used the same exact remix of I'm coming home coming home Deshaun did one of his announcements that he's going back to Carolina. Yep. That'd be crazy. Fan base over there already loves him. Yep. Maybe they try to bring in Trevor Lawrence, too, you know? Ooh, two QB set. Nice little battle. No, no, just just get Trevor out of Jacksonville and say, hey, pal, come on back to Carolina. That'd be awesome. Tiger package. I like that. Deshaun and, and Trevor in the backfield at the same time. Maybe, Maybe Jake DeLome. Oh, oh, Jake DeLome. He was good, man. He Jake was good. How? We have no idea. But Is Jake the guy that was real junk, uh, drunk and boozed up in New Orleans? No, nah, that's uh, Jake the Snake. Jake that's Plummer. Plummer. That guy was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that guy was awesome. 
Uh, you know him? You probably do, yeah. Yeah, I love Jake the Snake. Yeah. I was a huge fan then. Yeah, I got to know him. He was at the... Um... <laughs> got No, I mean, I got to know him after... <laughs> Not so much anymore. Ah, okay, okay. He was at Elite, Elite 11 with Dan Orlovsky and Aaron Rodgers. Or Schloss. Jake the Lum? Plumber. Oh, yeah. I remember he was a good time with Kyle Orton. Oh, oh Orton's a weapon. Yeah. I could okay. be wrong, though. I think you are wrong. He was in college much earlier than that. (laughs) You gave it a go, though. I mean, you fucking shot I was confusing uh, Plummer with Orton. Long hair. Yeah, Jake the Snake, his last year in college was like 97. Broncos. He's still living, though. I think, like, it is 97. He's like a professional handball player. He's he's like a hippie. Is he really? Yeah. I think he lives in Idaho or Wyoming out there somewhere. I offended some members of the handball team. Hopefully, Jake the Snake's not one of them. And if he is, Okay. But the uh, the handball community got upset with me talking about how a cast from the NFL could pick up handball in 12 months if they ate, mm-hmm. slept, and breathed mm-hmm. handball. They'd be able to pick it up, and we'd win the gold medal. Yep. International handball community laughed in my face, called me arrogant. Sure. Domestic handball community told me I have no idea what I'm talking about. And I'd like to let them know that if Lamar Jackson... Why? Patrick Mahomes. Why? Matthew Stafford. Why? Josh Allen. Why? Aaron Rodgers. Why? Fucking Herbert. Dude. Why? Learned your sport. None of you would have a position on the team. Nope. Hate to break. By the way, I'm not going to make that team either. This is not me saying this is any different for me than you. I'm just saying, you know, a handball community needs to fucking pipe down a little just bit. Just make enough. the current MVP favorites the team and – you're good to go. Let's go through that. I don't know if Tom. Yeah, Tom, Tom's coach. Yeah, just Tom and Tannehill. No, Tom's training. Tannehill's an athlete, dude. Tannehill yes. can run the Tanner roll. He, I, he, I agree. He was, he was a wide receiver. You need a lefty, you take too. Him over those From things? what I've been told, you need a lefty. Tyler would be nasty. I take him over, Stack. Tua? Whoa. Well, Tua's finger might. Oh, yeah. Hold yeah, him back. Yeah. Who's a lefty? lefty? Who's a Kellen Moore? Matt Liner. Not going. <laughs> Mike like Vick. A wide receiver Boomer Esiason. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, boom. He's great at dodgeball, so he's. And he's he's a lefty. Uh huh. Yeah. And Randy Cobb. Randall Cobb. Yeah. Jarvis Landry. I mean, Kyler, there's not a ball that Kyler can't get to, I'm, I'm sure, on the handball court. Mm-hmm. Same with Lamar. I mean, think of Lamar. All of them, really. Yeah. yeah. Bye-bye. We win. <laughs> you lose. No offense. I don't think no. Jake the Snake would take any offense. Sounds like he's the living embodiment of that. He was yeah, a starting quarterback in the NFL, and then he became a world champion handball player in his off time. And Jake the Snake does not take care of himself at all, I don't think. I think Jake the Snake's just living his best life. He he potentially on the team, too. Somebody's got to teach him. Yeah. 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 Brad Johnson. Nah, he's trick shot. Get he ain't big, got bad for Brad this. on the team. We need big, bad Brad. Imagine the doink passes. Oh. Yeah. He would throw the ball from one side off the crossbar to somebody else, like in hockey, when yeah. he dump it in off the boards. Be unbelievable. Big bad. Brad's probably he's probably touring with Dude Perfect. No, he's they're two L- different entities. He's at LSU every weekend. Dude. Oh, is he? What's he doing there? His, his kid's son. a quarterback. His boy. Lefty, tall, oh, lanky. Very oh, much, that's his son? Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. similar to Big Bad Brad, the way he plays, by the way. I've seen him get hella whirly birded a uh-huh. couple times. Uh-huh. So. Bounce right back up. Yeah, and then he goes. Who's going to coach LSU next year? <laughs> Maybe Big Bad Brad. That'd be awesome. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Get Big Bad Brad down there. 14. The Rock should be uh, recruiting Coach O to the XFL. I know he played for him, too, right? Oh. Is The Rock still doing the XFL? Because I thought the Canadian Football League went bankrupt and they were going to team up with The Rock because The Rock started in the Canadian Football League. Now he owns the XFL and they're going to become the IFL, the International Football League. Yeah. But now I'm seeing Doc Hodges play football in front of 20, 30 people up there on the weekends. Is Canadian Football League still happening? Yeah. Oh. It's still happening, yeah. Big Grey Cup. I thought they start in Next the spring, year. though. Yeah, there has been any new news, but it just says 2022 will be the beginning season. I think The Rock is still recovering from being put in a body well, that's bag. Oh, shut Diesel. up, dude. That's, that's possible. Well, by who? Vin Diesel said my little brother. Yeah. Yeah, but he was too afraid to tag him, and he was also begging Rock to be in the movie because he can't make a good it's movie without Pablo, the Rock. It's for Pablo, you buffoon. Nah, dude, yeah, it's for your fucking... Destiny. It's been a long day without you, my friend. I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. It's been a long day. Yeah. yeah. It's for that. It's for that. Diggs. Love what do you even know road. about the Fast and Furious franchise? Dude? I know oh. a lot about it. I'm going to keep my comments to myself because I like my job. <laughs> it's one of the what five pillars. Mean? That's right. It's one of the five pillars. That's right. 
Faith, family, what? football, what? his job, what? and his gambling record. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. That's what the COVID Cowboy lives by. <laughs> Couldn't knock down number four there with your actual thoughts. What, are you going to bury Vin Diesel, dude? Or you can't bury Paul Walker. Yeah. Oh, oh, my. Sounds like that's what he was going to do. Tony. You don't like Pablo's character, dude? What is your deal? I've never watched any of them. I know Paul Walker's fucking one of the best Brian, drivers. Brian O'Shea was a great character. That's not that's his name. fucking name. Jeez. Jeez. Mute his Piss mic. On the guy's Turn grave. him off. What's this guy's deal? Hey, these guys are diehard Fast and Furious fans here. I ain't never seen one of them, but this is big to do. I mean, Tony's, well, Tony's <laughs> a big Tony Tony Tony's Nine. not wrong. I mean, the <laughs> fran you. franchise basically died when the Rock None of you guys saw Fast Nine. Thing. None of you saw Fast Nine. You can't say nothing. Yeah, I saw rock. Hobbs and Shaw. Because The Rock exactly. wasn't in it. Yeah. No yeah. And why isn't there a second one of those? Because that's yeah. a big ticket draw. You want to go see The Rock. No one cares to go see Vin Diesel. <laughs> and Roman Reigns. Yeah, oh, look at the ratings for Fast Nine, dude. He wasn't in that one. Tokyo. My favorite was Tra Too Fast. Tra Too Furious. I'm too fast for you, man. Mike Winchell was the star of uh, Tokyo Drift. Yeah, was good. Bow Wow was also in it. Mm -hmm. You're talking about I, little Bow Wow? I think Vin yeah. Diesel walked Paul Walker's daughter down the aisle. He, he did. did. He did. Because it's family. Because it's family. Moment. Which is what Diggs is trying to shit pillars. on right now. No, that was a good moment. It's absurd. That is one of the five pillars. You're right, AJ. <laughs> That's why I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't say anything because two of the five pillars would have been. That's what have been dogged. And uh, probably that first one too, pal. would have been called into question. I mean, hey, Vin Diesel's in Saving Private Ryan. Like in oh, a real yeah. role. He's also in Find Me Guilty. You ever so seen what? that? Oh, yeah. Boiler Room. What is that? You've never seen him in Find Me Guilty? Boiler Room I've definitely seen. No, I don't even know what Find Me Guilty is. Oh, Vin Diesel's got hair. It's great. It's great. He represents himself in court in a, um, a Rico case. He is a... He's an Italian man who goes down with the mob, but he's a lower level Italian. He decides to represent himself and thing. It's pretty good. Hmm. And the thing is, like, if hanging out with my friends is wrong, find me guilty is the entire speech. But it's a big mafia conversation. Yeah, and he has hair. Oh, goodness. What yeah. a weapon. I, I was is he playing a character? Is he playing like a real person? Yes, I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think it is based on a true story. Jeez. It was probably 2, 3 a.m. I was bouncing around in, uh, the TV, channel surfing. On Snoopiter, couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I saw Vin Diesel. I was like, is Vin Diesel have fucking hair? And then I watched it and it was like, oh, it's a it's a gobble ghoul movie. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Let's, let's. Right up, you're out. You're people. It's yeah, you. yeah exactly. Looks awesome. It's AJ, fun. declare your allegiance right now. Vin or Dwayne? That's a tough one, man. It's not. It's, it's tough to choose. Go ahead. Is it? Who am I supposed to choose? It's up to I you. I mean, you know. if I got to pick, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Dwayne Johnson. Thank Hell you. yeah. Thank you. Everybody is. Yeah, but that guy like puts Vin his Diesel. dick in glory holes, so I don't want him on Vin Diesel's <laughs> team anyways. Oh, you're on Team Vin Diesel? Oh, yeah. What? Hell yeah. yeah. Isn't the entire fight between The Rock and Vin Diesel, and this is me, not a Fast and Furious fan, outside spectator looking in. The Rock works hard and treats people nice. Vin yep. Diesel does it. Correct. Right? Isn't that the, that's the entire thing? Yeah. yeah but it. Vin beats him and has a chance to bash his head in with a wrench, and he chooses not to. Yep. In real life? In the movie. <laughs> All right. So he lost the fight. But who wins the fight in real life? <laughs> <laughs> is he serious? Well, isn't Vin Diesel like 6'6"? Six, six? Vin's no. an Italian Vin's five, eight, man. Vin's 5'8", isn't he? Yeah, he's 5'8". He's, he's an Italian, six, man. <laughs> His name's Mark Sinclair, so I don't know yeah. if he actually Mark, is yeah. Italian. Mark, I know so many Italians <laughs> named Mark. You don't need to do what you're doing right there. His name's Vin fucking Vin's Diesel. listed at 6 foot, so he's probably 5'8". Unfortunately, Scrappy. we have to do what we're doing right now, Pat, because Connor, Gumpy, and Mitt, and I don't know who else, have aligned themselves with Vin and have started no. trashing That's the rock. The only people who've watched the franchise from start to finish, my friend. Oh, okay. That's true. All right. Listen, I would like to let everybody know Vin Diesel has done incredible work to build up a franchise, a bunch of loyal, loyal fans. Yep. And the fact that you guys got all bought in on the fact that DVDs potentially being sold, you know, DVD underground. Play, uh, DVD that's fast one. Yeah, whatever. DVD. But that's what kind of launched this entire thing. I appreciate and respect <laughs> that you guys have bought all the way you in there. You guys didn't do that here? Did not, I did not. A lot of people did. Fast and Furious was huge. Nick did it. I mean, car clubs were birthed because of Fast and That's Furious. Right. Let's not get it twisted. I never got into it, obviously, because I mean, I, I never really got into anything. Because what's once the Nick Cage car movie? Gone in Probably. sixty seconds. That that got a lot of people into cars. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Eleanor. Angelina, Angelina, Angelina Jolie, there's a bunch of stars yeah. in that. John yeah. Voight. I don't know anything. I know it hasn't caused a Just riff like that. Vin Diesel no, and Dwayne Johnson. What was their issue? Honestly, why did they, what happened? Literally what I just said. I think from my understanding, and I, this is knowing nothing about it, but this is, I think, a lot of people's potential understanding of it. The Rock didn't appreciate the way Vin Diesel operates on set. The Rock is a guy who handles his business in one particular way. Vin does it a much different way. And every time I've seen The Rock speak about it, it seems like The Rock's way is, you know, 
I like to treat people with respect. I like to work hard. Mm-hmm. I'm on time. We make the most of everything. So it's basically painting a picture that Vin D- I don't know if Vin knows this. This is just like old Joe Donnelly. I don't know if Joe Donnelly <laughs> yeah. knew in Indiana yeah. that all the reports and things that were being said about him were terrible and I didn't hear his side. Maybe I just didn't opt to hear Vin Diesel's side, but that is the initial argument, I do believe. Yeah. And then it grew into something much, much bigger uh, because The Rock basically went on Saturday Night Live and said, if you need a franchise that's dying, put a little boost in it. You put The Rock in it. Mm-hmm. Vin Diesel took that as a personal shot, and then there was even more. Elect- this is outside looking in, never seen a Fast and Furious. Vin Don't- took a shot, too, where he was like, I have a real person on set, and it was John Cena. Oh. Remember that was Cena big? Here's also- Mitt. Mitt just got back. This from is Snoop. all a lie. The Rock actually just wanted more money and was asking for more money from the franchise, from the family, and then the family couldn't afford to give him more money, so he turned his back on the family, left the family. They had to make nine by themselves, and then Vin so graciously oh. asked The Rock, little pebble, little brother, wow. if he would come back to finish <laughs> what they started as a family. They didn't start it. Yeah. The Rock came in late. He came in yeah, in he also left one. the family. Well, he, he came in. Saved, no, I think Rock you hit the nail on the saved. head. It was like, hey, Vin, we're not making you know Casablanca here, okay? Dipshit. <laughs> like, the, we're driving cars through you know the Burj Khalifa in Abu Dhabi, all right? Let's maybe cool it on set, all right? We're not winning an Oscar here. It's a fucking popcorn they movie. Might. Oh, classic. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a fan of, you know, I'm a fan of Young Rock. I'm a fan of Amazing Show. Old Rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a fan of Fast and Furious Hell Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Young Rock. I'm a fan Whoa. of Hobbs and Shaw Rock. Jungle When's Cruise. Baby Rock coming back? Consi- oh, come Young on, Rock, dude. It's, it's been signed to 10 seasons already. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to have enough time, but I like everything Rock. The only thing I like of Vin is Find Me Guilty, but that was an absolutely amazing movie. Boiler Room? Boiler Rooms, yeah. Boiler never Rooms awesome. Obviously never seen it's it. It's the original Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. I, I mean, saw the one with Leo. Let's be honest. Yeah. He's, just, he's just a piece of the puzzle there. Well, yeah. That's what what are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Uh, team. Team. Yeah. Team. Family. Team. Speaking of team, Justin Jefferson has come out and said that he has pleaded with Odell Beckham Jr. to oh, not sign oh. with the Green Bay Packers. This is via a Mike Florio report at Pro Football Talk. Everybody's reading out, or reaching out to OBJ now. Star fans, players, coaches, front office personnel, and now even other members of other teams saying, please don't come into our division. I love you too much. Justin Jefferson, obviously, LSU legend. He's also on the receiving end of a high five, I think, from Odell Beckham yeah. Jr. That led to a lot of different problems. They are tight. Yeah. They mm-hmm. are friends. He says, please don't go to Green Bay. Go somewhere else. But if you listen to Rappaport talk earlier on this show, it sounded like Green Bay was already out of it, AJ. It does seem to feel that way. Is is it? Do you think he's out on Green Bay because he's not sure on the future of Green Bay with Aaron and Devontae, or are they when they offer him like league men? Is he like offended by that? Well, I don't know what it initially is, and, and we got to think about Schultz's report. And Schultz's been right. Yeah, Schultz's yeah. been right. Schultz's been reporting, but his reports have changed, as I assume time has changed. I think o- OBJ. Now, this is strictly from a Schultz report, and I might be proven wrong, and Schultz might be proven wrong. I think his initial gut reaction was, all right, I'll go to Green Bay and do this thing. And then somebody was like, whoa, 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 let's think about this. Let's let's have a real conversation. Maybe OBJ even got to the point where he was like, I should, am I going to pack up and move to Green I mean, this is a big decision, so they kind of backed off a little bit, and now he's weighing all the things. And now, if you're a Green Bay Packers fan who would still like to see OBJ go to Green Bay, you got to hope that he's not looking for reasons not to go. Like Justin mm-hmm. Jefferson texting him, telling him, you got to hope he's looking for reasons to go. And that is kind of the game being played right now behind the scenes, I'd assume. Yeah, hopefully Raj, you know, maybe reaches out and says something to him. But you know what? I hope OBJ, if he has any balls whatsoever, he'll Whoa. text Justin Jefferson back and back. You know what? Because you said this, I am going to go in Green Bay. Whoa. And we'll see you two times, you know, throughout the next however many months of the season. You just made a big fucking mistake, pal. Oh, you think OBJ's putting him on the list? He should. I think they're very tight. I don't know if JJ's yeah. on OBJ or OB- OBS's list. I, I think this is potential something that could sway his feelings. But Sunday's the big day. Where will OBJ end up? We will keep a ear to the ground in our eyes. Hey, who has a Monday night game this week? It's um, it's Monday night Manning back. Rams, Man- Niners. Rams, Niners, yeah. Oh, there we okay, go. Okay, so neither of those teams are in on OBJ, so he doesn't need to wait for that. So we'll know on Monday, hopefully. Maybe Tuesday. Why? Wednesday. Well, All right. Maybe playoffs. All Who right. knows? We'll, we'll, we'll continue to keep an eye on the situation. Uh, and something we do like to talk about a lot, obviously because we're a big sports show, is the sport of uh, soccer. Oh, That's right. Oh, yeah. 
The United States yeah, men's yeah. national <laughs> team is currently entrenched with training to take on Mexico in a World Cup qualifying match. Mm -hmm. yep. Christian Pulisic is on the field. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he won't start. Doug Mack. Oh, you hate America? AJ? I don't. Well, you sack of shit. You hate. What is this? So this is like uh, the 75th qualifier for a tournament that no. takes place in two years. There's Fuck 13 off, dude. games, dude. Who the fuck's Greg Burhalter, and how long has this guy been the coach? <laughs> and why is who is Greg Burhalter? Yeah. He's been the coach for a few years now, and the real issue here is that those scumbags in Europe at Chelsea are getting in Burhalter's ear and saying, "Hey, if he gets hurt, you're done." Oh, because they don't want Christian Pulisic potentially getting injured in yeah. uh, international play. Because it happened last time. Because he'll have to come back to Chelsea where they're paying him his actual money. And I'd like to let Christian Pulisic know that I appreciate everything he has done for United States soccer. Mm -hmm. yep. Sacrificing his teenage years and childhood, dedicated to the game, going over to Germany, learning how to play in the European style and becoming an absolute superstar. He's not the only one. Oh, Gio Reyna and a couple yep. others are the same exact thing. He has sacrificed a lot of his life so that he could become the best player on the planet at this current moment. Oh, yeah. But he needs to understand that if he brings that World Cup trophy back home to the United States, oh. mm. Chelsea money ain't a fucking thing, Christian. No. Parade. The parade, the feeling, the fulfillment, the cash flow that'll be coming in in endorsements uh -huh. for making soccer the world's game, now America's game, so it can actually be taken seriously in the in the country that stirs the drink of sport. Come on, Christian. Let's go, Christian. Get your ass out there and play the fucking game. They're going to sub him in just like they do with Chelsea. He'll come in, score three goals. Yeah. We'll end up tying with Mexico somehow, and we'll be on the other side because it's soccer, and we'll be on the other side saying, you know, 10 more minutes, Christian Pulisic, we probably win that game. Are we not trying to win the World Cup or not, Burhalter? Get that guy the fuck out of there. Hire Steve Gutenberg. Bring him in. He's got championship pedigree. Mm -hmm. I mean, this the is actor? horse shit. What about yeah, Lane fucking Donovan. Big Green, dude. You ever seen it? Uh -oh. That team had no business beating the Knights, and they did. Bring and they had Landon. one player, yeah. like Christian Pulisic. <laughs> right. Is he from Weekend at Bernie's? Bring in Clint Dempsey. Police Academy. Police Academy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Why? What about Tim Howard? That's bullshit. All right. Why is Landon not coaching? He's not Hope playing. Solo. AJ. Okay. All right. AJ. Conversation. She's a goalie, right? If you have a good goalie, you can win. I know okay. that. Yeah, so yeah, Tim Howard. We're talking about coaching. Coach Tim, Tim Howard. Oh, then Hope Landon. can coach too, then. Well, Tim Howard, Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey. Not uh -huh. the guy that said he was going to strangle somebody. Though. Oh, no, yeah. That guy. That, guy. that guy gets a little bit too worked up. We need a little bit cooler heads. <laughs> uh, we need a little bit cooler heads. Get Tim Howard. I think he might actually have been a correspondent for the uh, Mexico team. Really? During that broadcast, I think. I'm not her since short. I mean, Taylor Twellerman, he's good. He can coach him. Twellerman? <laughs> Are you shitting me? We're it's a New England that. Revs legend. You better watch your mouth, pal. What's I'm Kobe a big Jones Revs fan, Connor. Watch it. Well, we know what Alexi okay. Lawless is doing. Ooh. He yeah. can coach. Alexi Lawless has been doing the same thing yeah. since they had that glorious run with Tony Miola. What about Tony Miola? Tony Miola. Oh, Tony Miola. Tony Miola. Tony Miola had Christian out there. He told Chelsea, hey, fuck off. <laughs> right away. Yeah. Hey, fuck off. We're playing him. We got to win a World Cup, dude. <laughs> That's fucking Tony Miola. Mm -hmm. Give us Miola. We want Miola until Burhalter proves he's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think playing, not playing our best player, the best player in the world is the way to do it. But, hey, burhalter has got a plan. Yep. We just got to see if it fails yet again for United States men's national team soccer. Probably Better put not. Miola in the goal. Huh? Probably put him in the goal. Who, Who, Miola? Yeah, player, player coach. Let's see, if he wants to jack the moon this thing, you do what you got to do. Tony Miola is a different specimen when you're talking about in between the pipes. But I will say, <laughs> when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. at a Cons hot dog soccer camp, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I fucking... I smoked me all dude. <laughs> I thought we got a good keep. We got a good guy between the pipes, right? Didn't yeah, the young guy. Yeah. He looks like he's they got twelve. A bunch of them. Send all the yeah, people. Yeah, Brad Guzman. Hey, we got good. We got a good team. <laughs> yeah, we got. We're, we're ready to at go now. At least Berhalter this time. At least he is an American. I mean, last time they outsourced or outsourced it to Germany. Well, and then he yeah. was like, "Oh yeah, hey, we got all these German citizens that want to become American citizens and play for the United States team." And it was like. All right, you better win then. And then, yeah. he, and then he did. It was like, okay, we can lose with our own people. Get him out. Burhalter better fucking deliver. I'm not ready for another losing season. For uh, how the about US. this? How about this? AJ? I'm waiting. 
We won't ever talk about soccer again if Burhalter loses. Boom. There we go. There it is. Gone with the throw. What's a loss? Like not qualifying for the World Cup? Oh, that's yeah, that is would be. That is definitely a loss. Eight steps past. Uh, we better beat, okay, when Landon Donovan scored that goal in the... Uh, Algeria. Uh, yeah, against that and that whole thing. We better get at least two steps past that. Yes. I'd like to at least be in the Frozen Four. Yeah, semis. That's right, I'd semis. Like, I'd at least like to be in the semis. When does that happen, though? It, it, does it that is happen? pretty cold in Qatar. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to ice them out, dude. Yeah. They're putting air conditioning in there. That's why. That helps us. It's actually coming up very soon, right? 2022. So it was next fall. Next, yeah, next winter. November 22nd, 2022. Boom. A year from now. Hell yeah. And now we got guys not even playing. Are we even, is Burhalter? is he on the take, dude? I'm sick of this guy already. Is this guy on the hype? <laughs> Wait, when do we know if they qualify or not? Uh, a couple months. Yeah. yeah. This is a big game, though. Mexico's a big game. Huge. It's also a huge rivalry. Like, I'm not saying I was anywhere near potentially being you know, on the U.S. men's national team. But in the conversations, Mexico is the rivalry, right? Like, it's yep. for the – it is It is always chippy. It is always chippy. It is always that thing. And now we're just – oh, maybe they want a Mexico to come out, foul, United States foul. Yeah. And then we'll bring in the best soccer player on earth 20 yep. minutes in, Christian Pulisic. You guys, you guys settled in? All right, here we go. Now I'm going to do my thing. That's they are smart. dogs because they are at Estadio Azteca. And Mexico is going to be chippy because we just beat the hell out of them in the Concafa. Hey, you better have a fucking plan, pal. You won the Concafa. You won the Gold Cup. We need a World Cup victory or we're saying you're fucking out. Is that fucking Burhalter? Mm-hmm. Are I mean, you that's what we did. Me? We went out and got a, you know, dime store version of Casey Keller. What the hell's going on? Why don't we just hire that guy? He looks exactly the same. By the way, Casey Keller, incredible goalie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Maybe get Casey Keller in there. Whatever the case. Where's Tim Hard? Tim Howard's calling games. God damn it. We'll, go, we'll be all right. All right. Was, Hammer, Hammer. was this guy a player? Bull Hall? No. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, not he like Tim Howard. <laughs> he was. Yeah. He was not like Tim Howard. Tim no, Howard's no, like no, one no. of the only yeah, in the history of the United saves. States. Well, he also went over and played in uh, Europe. Everton. That's right. No, no Man U first. Uh-huh. Right? Wasn't it Man U first? No. Tim Howard? Yeah. Yeah, he went to Man U. and Got then he ran out of time. Yeah, they, the, when they signed him, the papers were brutal in England on him. Yeah. Then he went to Everton and was very good for a very long time. And then he went back league. to Man U or no? No. No, he left. Went he, to Colorado Rapids? Ooh. And then he went to a hotel room in Los Angeles to do an interview with me, and he was the only person that I spoke to the entire day that spoke English. He's good on that morning show. I loved him. He's really good. He said he would have given. Me, there's Casey Kelly. <laughs> this guy's rocking Xbox. I, well, it's not his choice. Hold oh, the phone. I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, Casey Keller said, That's "You know two what? Different people give me the Xbox, the Xbox. What a jersey. Put the Xbox logo on my jersey." <laughs> <laughs> Casey Keller negotiated. I like this guy. Hold on. Coming Ber- around. Berhalter did make 50 appearances for Team USA. Did he? Mm-hmm. What position? Defender. He's not so even a goalie. So boring. <laughs> Got to be a goal. I would like. I want a striker like Clint Dempsey or a goalie. Mm-hmm. Get hired in there right now. Tim mm-hmm. Hired needs a whistle stat. But Burhalter might win us the goddamn World Cup. He won Concafa. Yep, he won true. the Gold Cup. We should have faith in his plan until he proves otherwise. If he doesn't, seat's getting hot quick. Real hot. Real quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of hot seat, all eyes look to the hammered Don Cowboys now. That's right. Oh, yeah. What will the bets be for this evening's Thursday night football matchup that we will all ride alongside and somehow continue yeah. to win like we have for the last six or seven months? Boom. Ravens, Dolphins, we'll see you tomorrow for your feel-good Friday. Can't thank you all enough for rocking with us today. Shams, Ian, on this Insider Thursday. I can't wait to enjoy tonight's game. Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah. Me too. I might put out a hypothetical. <laughs> parlay so that maybe I can experience just a little bit of the happiness tomorrow mm-hmm. morning. But I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the Lamar Jackson show, and I can't wait to see it. AJ, any final thoughts as we get the hell out of here? If you put out a hypothetical and it hits, are you going to be happy tomorrow or are you going to be oh, upset? Yeah. yeah, not going to put it out. I would be pissed. Because you know if you put a hypothetical out that you don't bet on, it's probably going to hit. Well, it's probably accurate. So I ain't going to put myself in that position because the reason why I'm getting out of this is because I don't want to be put in a position to have high blood pressure and hate my life. Just exactly. enjoy the game. Just going to enjoy my game. Kick my feet up with the wife, Valerie, Chuck, the kitty cats. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Just watch the show. Raccoons, right. enjoy the game. Everything. We do have a dog-sized raccoon in the backyard running around. Me? Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's big. Well, good news is uh, I probably won't try to come inside this winter. 
Well, bad news for said raccoon that has eaten very well. There are German shepherd-sized coyotes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good luck out that there. That is a big issue on the neighborhood app right now. They are really? These things are fucking large. Massive. They're I killing shoot dogs. Them. They're killing dogs. Yeah, really? they, they're hard. They're elusive. These yeah, are, they are. You're right. They, I have cameras, though, set up around the property, you know? And we got this one picture of this one. It was like... You got trail cam? That thing's... Got trail cams. I got the uh, Bluetooth oh. Simply Safe. Oh, nice. Smart. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, that thing's out there is doing good. Yeah, I got the house, you know, pretty much a lot of the property on camera. Can you trap them? Can you trap coyotes and then relocate yeah. them? You can't trap these. The coyotes are such a conniving animal. I mean, they're very clever. Yeah. They, they know how to survive. It, I've seen them just jogging down, like, highways, too. Yeah. Like, oh, they, yeah. they know they how to care. get A to B, too. They don't give a shit, dude. I never see them get hit by a car, either. Nah, I never no, see a coyote, elusive. like, hit by a car. Because well, only dumb deer do that. Oh, come on. That's good to know, though. If it's a problem, I'll try to fucking hit one of these things next time I'm going home. <laughs> dun, dun. Okay. A couple things before we get out of here. Definitely try to hit them if you see them. Mm -hmm. Yep. The coyote's not a pet. No. no. Savage animal. Make sure you're, you're watching your dogs when they're outside. Okay, everybody? Yeah, you need to go out there so you can give a ha mm -hmm. when that. Well, any decent-sized dog should be okay. I don't know. You'd be surprised. These yeah. coyotes are big, dude. I, I don't think I've ever seen a coyote as big the as the photos one. you have. Are they in packs too, or no? Are they just by themselves? All by themselves. Oh, so oh. they're around. It's even scary. Lone coyotes are yeah. savage animals. Well, they know that my property potential good spot to come to. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, the raccoons probably told them. But I, I do have to get a fresh bowl of Fruit Loops every night. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you How guys want cereal? <laughs> what if that coyote comes up? And Oh, this is really nice. <laughs> Holy shit. Honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> this is great here. Is I'll cake? take more. Oh, these Lucky Charms? What are these? Oh, this is a good marshmallow. <laughs> and then like nudging the raccoon and the opossum out of the way. Come on. Let me get the peanut butter <laughs> yeah. sandwich. This be a good cartoon to make. By the way, Sam probably thinks that is happening, by the way. My wife, because she does feel as if, you know, the animal kingdom does all get along. And I do dread the day where we wake up and there's coyotes sitting there with a lot of blood on her face. Yeah. Yep. And that opossum. That is not a pet. He's just hanging out. And then you see one little peanut butter sandwich still in the possum. Yeah. yeah. Raccoon head. And then Sam goes, oh, no. Oh, no. All that work for nothing for this big bad wolf to come in here and huff and puff and kill these motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Man. They do eat things. Oh, yeah. They don't care. Yeah. Those raccoons. That's what happens out there. All right. Let's cover a couple things and we get out of here. Dan Campbell's running the offense for the Lions. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. About time. He's calling plays. Well, he's having a little bit bigger impact in how the offense will be run. This goes against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers this week. And I assume Tomlin heard that Motor City Dan, Cam uh, Dan Campbell was going to have a little bit more say in what they do on the offensive side of the ball. And Mike Tomlin said, okay, good. We'll put nine in the box. Easy. <laughs> I think we all pretty much know what MCDC <laughs> is going to do to the offense. But I'm excited to hear that he is going to the point where he's like, enough with this. All right, I'm going to try to come in here, invest my time, invest uh, my motivation, and get us back on a page where maybe we can win a game because we cannot be the only team in the history of the league yep. to lose 16 games in one season. And then in the first available option, we also lose 17 games in one season, AJ. I like the Motor City. Dan Campbell is going into the weeds and going in and starting to work a little bit. It it'll be interesting to see how their game plan uh, may change, but just imagine how frustrated and pissed off Dan Campbell is the majority of most days. Oh. I'll tell you what, man. Well, he did. He came in that, I mean, no one else is really reporting it, but right after the last game, he came into the locker room and said, you guys fucking suck, man. I'm no. done with it. No, was that before the media got in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then when the media came on, he these was, guys fight, man. They work oh. so hard. I mean, we're getting there. We're close, man. We are. We love MCDC. Yeah. Tomlin was already oh, self-handicapping, which I love. Well, the Steelers fans have been self-handicapping this Steelers-Lions game for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. As, as we should. You'll see. Really. Looking they, forward. They, they, ju they just won a game in the fourth quarter against the Chicago Bears on uh, Monday Night Football. And it was an incredible performance by Chris Boswell. Hits a 54, 52, and a 40-yarder in the fourth quarter and has a fumble recovery, and they walk out of there stealing a win almost. Yeah. But that is not a, even a thought for the Steelers fans the last three weeks. The last three weeks has been, we got the Lions coming up. Lions yeah. uh, we cannot. And that is a tough – because imagine if Foxy's Lions – do beat the Steelers, oh, man. and that's Oof. our only win. What life will be like for like four or five days? Now the Steelers will go on to win more games and probably make the playoffs, but Foxy will have a little moment of happiness for about a day or two over you. Ah, for the rest of the season. Varian, I will never be forgotten. I'm never talking to him again. That. 
I've already imagined it. I've re- resigned myself to that's what's going to happen. Yep. So it's already. I've what already you guys do? You don't like your team? You guys don't like the Steelers? Are good? Love faith team. in Tom. Yeah. Well, I'll handicap in the Steelers every goddamn game. No, we've been fans <laughs> for thirty years. We know what's going to happen someday. Maybe Foxy roots for the Steelers this coming game. Oh, Ooh. what's yeah, the line on this one? Eight and a half. And it should be. <laughs> Ooh, okay. You would think that's a good an number. 0-8 team against uh, a winning record team at home that the line would be more than that. So it makes it even worse. Well, hold on, though. The line, though, there's only one game, I think, that's under two this well, weekend. It's there's a, t- it's a bad weekend. It's a, It's been, by the way, a couple times now we've had a couple bad slates. There's a lot of big spreads this weekend, too. Mm-hmm. There's only one one-and-a-half spread in the entire weekend, and that's Bronze Patriots. And we don't know if Chubb's playing in that game, exactly. right? Exactly. And that's the, that's the best player in that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Go on. Mac Jones, obviously. On the offensive side, definitely. I thought we were a no-bull show, dude. This is no-bull. He's the best player on the field when he's on the field. Well, yeah, because Chubb doesn't play defense, but I'm talking about the entire game. Miles Garrett might Math rip Judon. Mac Jones' head off. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Kalani on No, we got our tackle back finally. Trent Brown, he's like 450 right no, now. No, but for what he did to Brian, <laughs> Brian Burns, the defensive end community is a yeah, community that they stick up for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Trent hunting, Brown. right? Yeah, he's, happy hunting. He's big. He's says, massive. Yeah, how about Brian Burns say happy hunting? And then I saw Robert Mathis, by the way, quote tweet that and say, these boys go a hunt or whatever, which is exactly what we said whenever we saw the video of Mac Jones twisting. It's like, he might have got out of that game. I mean, he might not have to play him again. But there are people in that community, I assume, that are a little bit pissed off about him potentially trying to take out one of their brothers. When Mac Jones said, I thought he had the ball. I just panicked. I did what I had to do. Yeah, and that means quick game city. I mean, he's going to have the ball out of his hand in two seconds. Hey, everybody's going to be trying to kill you. Hey, I, <laughs> I got a chance to coach LT back whenever I was with the Giants. And if anybody would have done what you did, he would have tried to actually murder you on a football field. So we got to get the ball out of your hands quick this week. Bingo. And you don't think Miles Garrett just jumps over the 450 Trent Brown and says, give me that fucking ball? You can't jump over a mountain. This guy is huge. <laughs> Zion Williamson in a football pass. Other news, uh, Carson Wentz will be playing this weekend no matter what. Carson Wentz, I guess, is staring down a potential new baby being added to his family. If it comes down to the game, I told my wife, I'm playing. And then I'll come see you at the hospital afterwards. This would be the birth of his second child, I guess, that is due any time. And this is not surprising at all because Carson Wentz has broken both of his legs and said, I'm going to go play. That's right. Carson Wentz has sprained both of his ankles and said, I'm going to go play. Carson Wentz has almost thrown five, six interceptions. He says, I'm going to go play. I'm going to throw seven, eight more. Hell yeah. Carson Wentz is a football player. Carson Wentz loves the game. I don't know how his wife will feel about this. I assume they very much understand that if he was he, if he wanted to play when he had to have two walking boots, we assume he's going to want to play when a baby is potentially being born and he's going to go get a win for that baby. But you got to love this type of commitment, even though his wife, I assume, has a little bit of drawback in this entire thing. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm a little surprised. I know what a lot of coaches do if they, well, first off, they try to have kids in the offseason, but they want it, They try to have their wife scheduled to be induced on a Tuesday, usually, so coaches don't miss anything. Really? That's, yeah. that's football coaches? That's yeah. real. Smart. Guys, like, coaches take pride in that, too. I had five kids, all of them on Tuesday. <laughs> I was only gone. I only left the facility for 22 minutes. 22 minutes. Right. It was quick, quick labor, too. I mean, I, I think Crown, then all of a sudden, was out of there. Like, hey. hey, good to see you. I'll go prepare for the Chiefs. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Football is week. a crazy thing. Congrats to them, though. Second yeah. child. Yeah. yeah. Can we put the doctor's room, like, in, like, the sideline, on the sideline, so, like, he just the during blue, snaps. The yeah. blue tent. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to have a third blue tent. This is a uh, for a baby being burst. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder it's what they're possible. naming it. Football. Colt. Yeah. Colt. Fumble. <laughs> Colt. Colt. Oh, Colt. Uh, Interception wins. Colt oh, wins. come on. What are you talking about? He's been fucking balling, dude. Yes. Bob oh, Cat. absolutely. Don't look now. Bobcat. That'd be his nickname. Bobcat, Bobcat Wentz. <laughs> Bob Wentz. <laughs> Colt Bobcat Wentz. That's a pretty good name. You're hey, welcome, Carson. That is a deer assassin. Hey. Mm-hmm. That yeah. thing will kill deer. Yeah. Get a pace kid in that kid's hands. Carson will. <laughs> hey, Carson loves football. Like, Carson is football, football, football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if he goes on to make the Hall of Fame, okay, obviously the Hall of Fame is a long shot for him. AJ, you should get, start getting conversations about that, by the way. I don't necessarily okay. have that. Packers okay. Hall of Fame for sure. Yeah, at least. something You deserve something out there. Maybe you can go shotgun a beer out on the field like TJ and uh, – Sitting. And sitting. Yeah, I was there for that. I watched that. But if Carson – why didn't you shotgun with him? Yeah. I was upstairs watching. 
Oh, uh, you're drinking in the AC because so, you're uh, soft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Foxy's it was got, December, but yeah. Foxy's got a hand warmer <laughs> on his computer. Foxy's got a hand warmer that goes underneath his uh, keyboard. his keyboard. And a lot of people are calling him soft or whatever. Like a hand warmer? What do you mean? How's it? Wow. It's like a pad. And it warms up so that my fingers don't get cold when I'm editing. It's, hey, it's like a it's, heated blanket. I'll tell you what, it was quite a debate this one. I mean, it got Good for wild. you, Abby. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> That's how he operates best. You want him to do his best work, right? We absolutely do. Thank oh, you. Yeah. We absolutely do. There's just some questions being, hurt. not from me, obviously, but when I got here, there were some whispers about, <laughs> have you heard about Foxy? And whispers. I, and I said, no. Uh, it actually was. Yeah. It actually was whispers. Yeah. And I said, no. Was he the one that ordered all the water in the back? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, no, no. He got a, a hand warmer. And I had never heard of this. So I walked over to his station, and he has an entire mat that his computer sits on that is heating up his computer and his hands in the meantime. So he'll go here, and then all of a sudden, he's up, blah, 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 and then he's back here, then he's here. And he is just... He's on a, war a heated bench for the entire game, basically, with his hands. And I'll tell you what, the guy's making magic. So I, hey, I don't know what's next, you know? I don't know what he's going to uh, evolutionize into. You know, yeah. this is early. And that's what I think everybody was saying. Is this a little oh, early, early to be yeah. getting the hand warmers? Oh, yeah. Very early. We work on the internet. Need these. Need these. <laughs> What'd you call yourself earlier? It is rocket science. Yeah, yeah I mean, content creating is rocket science. I am a scientist, and scientists need to perform at the highest peak of level. My, my only worry <laughs> is, my only worry is compared to what this office does get to in temperature, like this where is we're at this right is, now. This is thirty degrees above yeah. where it's going to be in two so months. Everybody oh, yeah, is no. everybody is in hoodies and jackets right now. Yeah. Okay, except for me, it's sixty degrees in here. Fifty degrees, whatever it is, fifty-five, sixty. This has been the warmest it's been all week. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not about. I only right have this now. on because go beast. I just know I've been in this office for four years now. It, gets... it will get cold, and my fingers have bad circulation. And we got to keep these things. You got rain odds for the good of the show. <laughs> what? I got the same thing. Yeah, your feet get cold too. It's rain yeah. odds. Yeah, you got to get up and walk around, <laughs> move around. What is that? What does that mean? I, sure. Hey, I, I do as well. I don't know why you guys are laughing. It's a real well, affliction we suffer from. All right, well, I, have it too. I hope everybody, me too. I mean, my, nah, never me. But I, I understand there's probably a lot of people that potentially have rain odds and never AJ heard AJ has it too. He has to stick his penis in that hole to keep it warm. All right. <laughs> well, that takes me back to what I've been saying this entire time. I mean, what about somebody that just just tuned in? What do they think right now? Well, listen, if they're just tuning in, I'm You're sorry. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, come on. <laughs> but, You're right. But to bring this all back home, a lot of Hall of Fame speeches. Yeah. Yeah. Or, hey, I'm sorry I wasn't the best dad. If Carson goes on to make the Hall of Fame and he's playing in a game and uh, his second child is now probably, what, 13, 14, 15 years old. Sure. Yep. Hey, I'm sorry I missed, actually, your birth because I was committed to this, which is this whole thing. We hear this all the time. Like, being an elite football player in the NFL, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. And normally, the family is on the receiving end of it. That's why you got to have a badass group behind you, I think. And more so for coaches, but for players as well. That is, a, that is a tough thing to balance, I think. Absolutely. I mean, to be an elite anything, there's going to be – you're going to have to make sacrifices, and some of that will be time away from family and all that. But people make it work. People find the right balance, I think. There's people out there that can do it. What did Triple H say? Work-life balance is all bullshit. Mm -hmm. He said there isn't. He said there isn't a work-life balance. You just got to yeah. be as present as you can in the moment that you are, and you hope that you get it right or whatever. And by the way, Triple H is still alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Triple H. Triple H. Last week. You, Paul. Carson better fucking win on Sunday. Then, That's what I'm saying. Can't else, be a loss. Yeah. yeah. I missed your birth, and I threw three interceptions. Well, and they're playing the Jags. against the Jaguars. Jaguars, yeah. Jaguars, yeah. And we lost. Whew. That's tough. I inevitably got cut the next year. <laughs> So kind of I missed your birth, and then life kind of went downhill because I lost the Urban Myers chop house from yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars. So that kid then thinks it's their fault for all of that. Yeah. It's the North Dakota State Hall of Fame in this situation. Because <laughs> he would go in. To and he, there. Would, he would have to give that speech. Yes. Maybe a Bobcat Hall of Fame, too. Mm -hmm. They can fucking have him. They ain't got no Bobcat Hall of Fame. <laughs> I don't know. He can be the fucking inaugural class. That's fine. You, your blind obsession with John Deere. Gotta do it. Is I my have no choice. All right, we're out of it's here. It's like us with Heinz. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's no other option. Exactly. Well Just said. Just like there's no other option besides. <laughs> well no said. other option besides a deer. All right, Hammer Dines in 15 minutes. Can't wait to hear what you guys think. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, now do a giveaway tomorrow. There we go. Hell yeah, Feel Good Friday. Feel Good Friday. We'll do a giveaway tomorrow for Feel Good Friday. Here we go. Gave away 50 grand. I think we, uh, 
uh, Zito's got the winners. We'll announce those this week. That's a lot. That's, That's a right. Lot. Yeah. Hell yeah. That ain't nothing that's what's potentially coming, though. What? Oh. What? Giveaway wise, yeah. What? What? Well, I thought we were potentially at the finish line, but <laughs> yeah. the race got extended, I guess. And this one is a mutter at the end of it. You know? Okay. Uh, it's a sheriff's Spartan race. It sounds like it was originally just a regular old track running circle, you know, long one. And then we got to, I thought the finish line, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now all the confusing shit has to take mm -hmm. place, and there's even more negotiating here, and you're, like, going through the water mm. in the mud, and you're climbing up the barbed wire, and you're jumping over buildings, you're sliding uh, down. A Spartan yeah. race. Yeah, bingo. A mutter, right. tough mutter. Yeah, tough mutter. I thought you were talking about horse race, where the horse you're riding, good thing, because you, the horse's father was a mutter, and his mutter was a mutter, so... <laughs> <laughs> Loves the slot, born to slot. Loves the slot, born to slot. Uh, well, I, I'd like to let everybody know that I do feel like I did put a saddle on a horse that is a mutter. Oh, yeah. There you go. And we're getting in the mud. And by now the way, go. I am that horse right now. That's right. Yes. Oh, fuck. I have no idea what just happened. Good luck, horse. Hey, me neither, by the way. After yesterday, I thought we were in the clear, and then all of a sudden, just, whoa, whole new race is about to happen. I thought, uh -huh. what are we doing? Hey, hey, you're one of the best to throw a saddle over a horse. True. Well, my barn is filled with fucking good runners, too. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the that's the thing that I know and that I have in my potential back saddle, <laughs> my back pocket. I mean, I don't know anything else about horse racing. I wish I could have continued the uh, the racing puns in this conversation mm -hmm. to elaborate a little bit more, but we'll get there. We'll get there. That's right. Got to be a little rubbing. You're grabbing the reins, steering it. Right now, I think I'm standing on top of it, actually. Hell yeah. I'm sitting on top of the horse, and we don't know where it's going. <laughs> You know, and I, it's, we're kind of going too fast. I don't know where how to get down either. I'm trying to do the hop, boom, down on that thing. But I think I'm still just staying on top of that, trying to guide the horse. That's better than underneath the horse, like Mr. Hands. Jesus. I assume that is a reference to somebody that died violently underneath of a horse. <laughs> I Google it. I don't know. Oh, don't, Google it. don't Google <laughs> it. Don't Google it. <laughs> I don't think we can Google anything with AJ. Hunt I've mentioned it like 30 times on this show. I'm... You know what, you're, what I'm talking about. I do not know what you're talking All about. All right, wait. When you, tonight, when you and Sam are having dinner, pull up. Don't like do that. Or something, <laughs> watch <it. laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow, AJ. Thanks for being toxic, bud. Good luck in the basketball coaching. I'm sure everybody yeah, yeah. Thank you, boys, for all your effort. Thank you for watching. Hammer Don's in 15 minutes. Probably 20 minutes now, 4 o'clock. YouTube.com forward slash Hammer. Don. Don. We appreciate you all so much. See you.